Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play Legends of Sleepy Hollow, published by Greater Than Games. Or possibly Dice Hate Me Games, based on who ran the Kickstarter. I, I don't really know, but we got this from the Greater Than Games booth at Gen Con. Uh, thank you to the folks over at Greater Than Games uh, for providing us this copy to play. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. Please, please, please. I'm going to be upfront and honest. Oh, definitely some bluntness. That's what I do here. Um, let's give you a little history of this game. Okay. A little history. We've not played this. Okay. Full disclosure. Today is our first time playing the game. Okay. But I've spent many hours looking into rules, BGG forums, old rule books, new rule books, errata files. We'll see. We'll see. But you must understand. I know when people see us play a game on the channel, they're like, oh my God, Rob researched this thing. He bought it. Must be awesome. I'm buying it right now. Got it in my cart. It's, it's purchased. I don't know. Please don't do that right now uh, because I'm going to tell you what I learned. Learn from my mistakes too. Uh, this game, at the time we got it, you guys can go back and see the history of this. We were looking at the BGG hotness list. We were looking through it. We added a few games we're interested in. We had a live stream. You guys were telling us, oh, this game looks cool. That game looks cool. This game was in that list. A few people mentioned, yeah, that game looks cool. I, it, it's pretty good, you know? And I thought, okay, cool. I read about it. It's campaign, horror-themed. It's got that Legend of Sleepy Hollow theme to it. That's awesome to me. Um, it has some hidden, uh, lots of hidden information as you go through the chapters. It's a 10-chapter campaign. All right, awesome. Uh, there's stuff hidden in boxes. There's stuff hidden in card packs uh, that you're not allowed to look at, and it kind of reveals itself as you go. Awesome. Okay, all awesome. Then I got the game. Okay, I was like, okay, no problem. It's from Greater Than Games. The only game I've played from them is Spirit Island. Pure quality there. Pure quality. All around. Awesome stuff. Great production. Great game. Top of the line game. Okay. This game, when I read the rule book and I started looking at components and I started trying to understand how the game works a couple of weeks, no, a couple of months ago. Maybe a couple of months ago, I started opening it, looking at it, reading it. I was like, I was going through the rule book and I'm like, man. I have a lot of questions after reading through the rule book I had in the box. Okay. So then I went on BGG and I went, oh, there's like not really much activity in the forums. Okay, this game's probably not that popular or no one has it yet. No. At the time I had it, people have had it for like six months. Then I looked back at the Kickstarter and I realized, oh no. So the Kickstarter, which again, I did not look at before, uh, just so you guys know, it was from Dice Hate Me Games. I don't remember this on Kickstarter at the time, but only had 1,318 backers, only raised $94,000. Again, back in, I don't know when this was, 2017-ish or something. But then I learned this game was supposed to be delivered in 2018. I don't think people on Kickstarter saw it until early 2022. So this game was like very low funded, because you know, like, that's a fake funding goal. They didn't really make double their goal. Like, it's, we all know this, right? It's got miniatures. They didn't make a lot of money on the game. They probably lost money. Uh, and then it took five years. It took five years for people to get this game. Then I was like, whoa, I'm not usually, like, about supporting this kind of stuff. But the game looked cool. So I'm like, all right, let's give it a chance. But there are a lot of pissed off backers. Out of this 1,200 whatever, there's a lot of people complaining in the comments. There are a lot of people saying the game is unplayable. There's mistyped cards, poorly uh, printed boards uh, that make the game like kind of unplayable. There's bad rule book, bad storybook, lots of errata, lots of issues. They've released fixed PDFs, but it took months. They're reprinting an update pack. They are reprinting an update pack, finally. Uh, like six plus months after fans have been complaining since they got the game. So a lot of people literally got this game, played one or two scenarios from what I've read, and put it back on the shelf. It was so frustrating. Things didn't make sense. The rules aren't clear. A lot of assumptions have to be made. House rules have to be made. So I'm trying to be upfront here. Don't make the same mistake. If this scares you away from a game, there are a thousand other games like this out there that maybe are a little more clear, a little more quality, better rule books, better tutorials. <laughs> Not as much FAQ and questions, but we expect this. It's a Kickstarter game, right? That didn't make a lot of money, so it's going to be kind of half-assed in some aspects. This is just how it is. Like, you run a project, money just doesn't come out of nowhere, right? I love the way I'm, I'm, I'm ranting with this on. Um, but yeah. <laughs> no one's really making any comments about the theory, it. Really. <laughs> take me super serious, everybody. Thank you, Jamal. But yeah, just keep that in mind. 
So I just want you to know that going in, if you buy this game at the store right now, or you buy a secondhand copy off, off the used market, uh, it's because somebody didn't want to play it and they were frustrated with it, but I decided to still stream it for this reason. In the last two updates, they did say that they, they have an errata PDF, supposedly, most of the errata is for later scenarios, which just tells you they didn't play test them all enough. Obviously, they, they just play test the first couple scenarios just because they demoed at Gen Con. It's like so obvious that they just like didn't make enough money to put the effort into the game. I don't know why it took five years then to make a game that's not complete. I don't know. Very frustrating. Usually when I read any of this kind of stuff, it just scares me away because there's so many games out there to choose from. But if this kind of stuff bugs you, run. If it doesn't and you're willing to work for it, uh, work through it, you will eventually, supposedly in the next couple months, you will be able to buy an errata pack that comes with a new rule book, misprinted tiles will be in there, spinners that don't fit the characters, uh, a whole bunch of cards that are like misprinted. But even from what they've released, people are still saying the rules are not the greatest. We have the latest PDF. We're going to use that. We have the latest storybook. We're going to look at the errata file as we play this game. Supposedly, it's playable according to the publisher. It is in a playable state now according to what they've released digitally online. Supposedly, you can play your game while you wait for an errata pack. But it's a game full of spoilers and surprises. So I don't know how many people want to go back and play it a second time after they've sat there with it on their shelf for a year waiting for fix packs for tiles and stuff. Don't know. But I need to put this out there. I'm not one of those channels that's going to just smile and be like, this is a great game because the publisher gave it to me. You guys should buy it. That's great. This is not a commercial for that. This is us. Thank you for giving it to us greater than games to play it. We're going to play it. We're going to give honest opinions. We're going to go through it as we do. Hopefully it'll be fun. We're going to approach this kind of like we did with like any Jerry Hawthorne game where the rule books are kind of like very crap and not full and complete. They feel like kind of just cut and paste and they don't really care about fixing them and improving them. This is kind of that same idea, which is weird because it was five years in development. But what that tells me, 100% this is what happened. You know it did. You know it did. They didn't make enough money. They started working on it. They were about to ship it. COVID happened. Okay. It got, definitely got delayed from 2018 delivery, probably through 2019. And they were like, Oh no, shipping container prices got expensive. Well, if we ship it right now to our 1,200 backers, we're going broke. So they probably purposely just put it on the shelf. I didn't read all the updates, I don't know. Maybe there were real things they were working on, but I highly doubt it. I bet they put it on the shelf and waited for shipping costs to drop and then shipped it out to everybody in the same state the game was pretty much when it was on Kickstarter because it, it wasn't finished, obviously, and wasn't extensively playtest. Okay? So keep that in mind. We're still going to have fun with it. We're still going to play it. Just know that this is involved. This is what's going on. You can read the updates. You can find more information. Don't listen to me secondhand playing the game of telephone. You can go read backers, people who have the game, people who have played it already. Go on BGG. Go in the updates. Go in the comments of the Kickstarter and read. I just need to put that out there because I would want someone to tell me this stuff before I bought the game. But nobody did. I didn't look into it deep enough. That is my bad. Or I probably would have never even touched the game. I'll be honest. Okay. Just because there's so many other great games and I could spend my time on so many other games. Okay. But I love the damn theme. I love campaign games. I love story games. This looks like a lighter dungeon crawl. We love dungeon crawls. It's Halloween time. I want to play a game with this theme. I want it to work. And I'm going to give the publishers the benefit of the doubt that they fixed it with errata and new rule books. And we're going to use those new rule books and story books. And we're going to try to play it. I don't know how far we'll get, but we're going to try, okay? Just so you know. All right, back to our regular scheduled programming. All right, with that full disclosure out of the way, hey, everybody, welcome. We're going to play this game today. This game looks great. We should all have fun. Yeah, so we're going to just have fun. We're going to go through the story. We're going to explore stuff and have a good time. One thing I want to say, so Sajat has a comment here, and I kind of want to address it. It says, you got through Mage Knight and Robinson Crusoe rulebook. How bad could this be? I think the difference... Go ahead. go ahead. No, no you go ahead. Well, I think I simple gonna, answer. Simple go ahead. answer is there is things missing from this rule book. Bingo. That we Bingo. don't know how it works. You, my friend, hit the nail right on the head. So that's what I want to make sure you know. Like, so Sajat, Mage Knight is a big rule book, has everything there. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of information and it takes a while to get through and make sure you understand it all. This, for example, there is things we had to Google or look up on BGG. It's like, can we do this? We don't know. And yeah. maybe that's us. We yeah. play too many games and maybe we, 
I don't know, but mm -hmm. if you have to Google, how do I move? Yeah. Can I move diagonal or orthogonal only? Yeah. Or like it fully describes line of sight. It can only be orthogonal, this mm -hmm. many spaces, yada, yada. But then it talks about movement. It's like, yeah, you can just move based on your ac your movement points. And that's right. like a one line or one sentence, seven words, whatever it is. Yeah. It's like, what does that mean exactly? Uh, but, 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 but what? Because we play lots of games, so we yeah. want to know, we, can no, we no. do this? We don't just play lots of games. We play lots of campaign, dungeon true, crawler, true. light and heavy, medium weight. We play games in this category on like a weekly basis, sometimes in the same week, three different ones. Yeah. So we very much know what to expect. We very much go through that same process of research, buy, open, learn, play, film, stream, and discuss. Okay. When you go through that process a thousand times, things, you will hit those speed bumps. You will go through those bottlenecks and you will get stuck and you'll go, oh, wow, this is weird. Okay. Just understand that that's where we're coming from. Okay. You might not have a ton of games. You might not play these games. You might buy this and play with your family and be like, it's perfect because you house rule. Okay. Apples and oranges, Sajat. Mage Knight, Robinson Crusoe are very complex game systems with very bad rule books. It's widely known, but it's because of how those rule books are organized, how they teach you the rules. They're basically, you fall asleep halfway through them because it's just dumping information in no good organized manner. And it's a lot to understand. And because it's such a big, those are big epic games that have tons and tons and tons of systems and rules. And it's a very like dry and complex game. You, it, it, it highlights and comes out even more, even more. You feel the bad rule book as you're trying to figure out the game. But at least you can mostly like 99% in both those games find the rule you need because the rule book's huge. But because it's huge and bloated, it then it, like, how do you tame that beast? Right? Right. So I'm not a rule book writer. I don't, I don't know how to do it. Everyone learns different. There's no perfect way. But the reason why those rule books are called bad are for completely different reasons than a Jerry Hawthorne game or Sleepy Hollow. Legend of Sleepy Hollow would be called bad. These are super simple games. These are very low complexity games. These systems, you could, you could write a rule book to jot for this game and cover every single rule in it, every single weird situation in probably an afternoon. But here, I don't know who, I, okay, I did see the guy who edited this in one of the greater than games playthroughs. Some guy in the background is like, I'm the editor. I went through the rule book. I'm the guy who puts all the post-it notes and scribbles out all the rules and adds in extra stuff. And I'm like, that guy should be fired. That guy right there should not have a job doing that. But supposedly that's what he does. I don't know who he is. That's who he was. Okay. But when I saw that guy, I just wanted to reach through the screen and be like, you suck. You suck. You suck. But uh, that's the difference. So when you're just trying to get the game to the table and it's an accessible game targeted at the family friendly audience, not Sajat, like the scientist Sajat, you know, like the, I love dissecting a game and spending half my life learning a game system and mastering it and learning the rules and tattooing them everywhere on the inside of my eyelids. So I know them all, all the time. That's a whole different audience, right? So I'm going to be much harder on a game that's like targeted at family than a gateway game, the game that might introduce someone into the hobby. And they just don't care about how they figure out the game. I think they take inspiration from those crappy games that are on the shelves at like the Walmarts and Targets that those same families are buying. They're like, well, if they can put out like, you know, two page rule books with like missing rules, we can do it too. That's all. I just want you guys to know that's what you're getting into. So I'm consistent here on the channel. So when you see there's a game where I complain about that and a game I don't, you kind of know what Rob's learning style is and what he looks for. But Mel also had issues too. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit issues today, but just know, understand, if anyone here has played this game, we appreciate the help. We tried to look up on BGG and memorize as many answers, official answers as we could, but I'm sure we're going to flip cards and go, how does that work? And then try to look them up and find there might not be answers. And I hate sitting there on a stream that we already take a lot of time because we love interacting with our audience while we play. We love strategizing, discussing every decision out loud. And that's what we will do here. So with all that aside, we are approaching this game knowing we're going to hit roadblocks and, and speed bumps. But hopefully the story and the fun makes up for that. But I don't know that yet. We just haven't played it. But I needed to get that up front. Because sometimes I really research a game and I think it's cool and we're like all in on it. And it looks solid. But this one, there's red flags everywhere. So just keep that in mind. Do your research is all I'm saying. Do your research. Okay. And I'm sorry if this like 
hurt somebody's, you know, oh my, they didn't sell three more copies because Rob said it's had issues. And oh no, these people couldn't feed their families. Like, uh, come on, man. You can't come in this industry. This industry is so crowded, full of products every single day. If we're not calling a pig a pig, like, we're never going to get better than that. We're never going to get the great games, right? I want every game to be great, and I'm going to call it out when there's issues. Because I want to I want to make this industry grow up and get serious, right? So that's all. Keep that in mind. And that I, I wasn't... Jaw, you just made the comment so it was easy to talk about at that moment but like mm. edward is saying the same thing it's a huge difference between a rule book that doesn't explain themselves well mm -hmm. and those that are missing rules yeah straight up missing rules just, like so so Jaw, you just kind of said it and made me think like we should probably address that mm -hmm. so like we're not yeah. calling you you just were the one that brought it up yeah i know so. well, it, it's good reason <laughs> no it's, it's good to understand because then if you understand why i complain and say when i say the word this is a bad rule book i try to go into more detail because a bad is very general, right? It's like, they're all bad for different reasons. Sometimes it's not organized well. Sometimes it's missing a tutorial. Sometimes it's not written very properly. Sometimes it's bad translation. Sometimes there's no examples, like zero examples. Sometimes the examples are just literally lines of text repeating the rule right above it. And, and that's it. So for example, when you roll a die and it shows a one on it, that's one damage. Yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> what happens if I have an ability with that? Do they add together? You know, stuff like that. Like, just show an example with some weird situations in it, and people usually can use those examples to decipher what you were trying to explain in, in as little text as possible. And sometimes it just seems like these games that don't make a lot of money, literally saving a handful of pages of paper in a rulebook probably is big when you're printing a bunch of games, right? Or a low print run. Everything is more expensive, it's more amplified. So if you can shorten down your rulebook and not have your graphic designer spend time making pretty full page examples, you're going to save money in the long run, right? So it's like, but when you're printing, you know, you're trying to get 10,000 Kickstarter copies out there. Yeah, add some extra pages in. Yeah, spend some more time playtesting. Yeah, hire a better graphic designer. Yeah, let him work this weekend on it and get overtime money to try to get it to that high level of production so we'll, we can come up with a second Kickstarter and really blow people's socks off, you know? But this kind of game feels like a game they just didn't get the interest on. They had to get it done and get it out. And then uh, you'll probably never see this game again once it's... First print run's gone and people just don't discuss it anymore. I don't know if they're going to do a second edition. Maybe because they're doing the errata pack. Maybe on the next print run, if there is one, they actually include all that updated stuff in there. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. We'll play it and we'll find out, right? We're going we're gonna to use the newest stuff and we'll see. Think of this as an experiment. And to see how playable the game is, how fun it is. But just at this point, I just need you guys to know, do your freaking research. Understand that you may buy the game right now and you'll need to buy an errata pack in two months. When it, when it officially is printed and for sale on their website, assuming they make enough copies. Supposedly it's got free shipping everywhere. I do want to point that out, actually. It seems like they're trying to make it right, they're just taking forever. And, and the reason why I'm also addressing this up front of the video is because a lot of people don't watch till the end, where I would normally talk about our thoughts at the end and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they just need to say this stuff up front because not everyone will watch it later. And, and it could help somebody out because somebody might even own the game and come in to watch us play it to see if they're doing it right. And then they'll learn about this errata pack, you know, which is awesome. I, so this is going to help people out, okay? So I know some people will come in here and are fanboys of the company, fanboys of the designers, the designer's sister and mom will come in here in the comments telling me I'm an ass because I'm too blunt and I don't care about people's feelings. Come on, man. Like any, any job. It's like, it's like I shouldn't. I shouldn't rip on a surgeon who screws up surgery and kills somebody. Like, I shouldn't because they have to feed their family. But I, I tell people not to go to that surgeon anymore because he, he screws up a lot. You know? Like, I, I gotta say that stuff, right? I know that's like a whole different life or death thing. This is just the fun hobby entertainment stuff. But like, any kind of job, do it right. Do it serious. Like, don't do that job then if you suck. Go do something else. Like, life is short. Do something else, okay? I do want to love this game though. So yeah, I, I do too. Play. That's why I'm playing it. I, I it checked all the boxes. I don't care that they gave us it. I could say sorry, greater than games. We got it. I looked into it. There's so much issues with this game. I don't want to deal with that on stream. I'm sorry. I can't spread the word of this game if it just sucks. But what it looks like, it is fun. They just cut costs and cut corners, and hopefully it's fun. But I didn't want to play it ahead of time because there's lots of new spoilers, new surprises, discovery and stuff. It's kind of like a legacy game, but not legacy like you can reset it uh, but yeah there you go boom 
<laughs> All right. Uh, oh, yeah. What I wanted to point out on here was this. So read the latest update. If you own this game or you're thinking about buying this game, read the last couple updates because there's a new rule book. They talk about the errata pack. And the errata pack they're giving it to all people who backed it on Kickstarter, which is cool of them. They're going to get it officially printed. It's just going to take a couple months because it's got to go through the whole China production process. But I am pressed by that. There are some Kickstarters out there that will not fix their issues. They just come out with a second edition and tell you, it's too bad first round backers. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get you an update pack later. Okay. But it sounds like they're never going to do another Kickstarter for this game. They might not do a second print run, but they're at least trying to take care of the people that backed it and the people who bought a copy later because they did say they'll have it on their web store and shipping will be free to US, Canada, EU, and the UK. But I'm assuming people who bought the game later have to pay for the update pack probably. Yeah, I don't think it was specific. But Kickstarter, I think, get it for free. But it, oh no, it does oh, stay. It, it does stay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It says right here. We will also list this on our website for free for those who purchase the game at a later date. Shipping will be free for US, Canada, and the EU and UK. If they deliver on this, that is awesome. That is awesome. But it's still a pain in the ass because not everyone will know about this. If you bought this at your local retailer, you're not going to get a follow-up email or anything. I'm sure your local retailer is not going to find you and go, by the way, you bought a game that has like not finished and has bugs, you know? Like, we'll get you the update pack. No. You have to know about this. So hopefully me ranting about this helps somebody out there who owns a game, who uh, hasn't even played it yet maybe, learn from our mistakes, and, and we, can all, we can all improve. So hopefully it helps somebody out. Hopefully it helped out a gamer out there. But it's good on them for trying to fix it, even though it's like taking a while. Also, shout out to my daughter for bringing this hat home from school. Uh, she is too cool to wear this hat. Uh, I love the way the top green pumpkin things like see-through. But uh, yeah, this pumpkin hat, she brought home and was like, yeah, I got this from school. And she's like, just gonna throw it away. Cause you know, she's, you know, at the age where this is like, losers wear this stuff, right? Like this is not cool. I don't even so, know why she brought it home. So so Mel Mel sees it and is like, oh honey, bring it down there downstairs to your dad. He'll probably wear it on stream or or like do something stupid with it. So she brings it down to me. I'm like, yeah, give me that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh Yogi, shh. Yogi's saying, yeah, sure, your daughter. You totally bought it yourself. No, no. Honestly, she honestly it was from the school, yes. Yeah, it's straight dollar store. This is like crap quality. It doesn't even fit on my head. It's like made for a kid, but uh, yeah, it's still funny. I'm turning the wrong way. So yeah, this is like we're officially playing our first Halloween themed game a little late in the month, but we're getting it done. Okay, this is this is the official ceremony for kicking off the week and a half or whatever of playing horror themed games officially. Of course, with Arkham Horror Scarlet Keys coming out in November sometime, hopefully, uh, we'll continue playing horror games past. Halloween, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Anyways, all right. Uh, I love ranting about games, and like people are gonna turn this video and they're gonna just say like, "Who's this idiot with the pumpkin hat?" No, there's and he's ripping I... on this game, and they're just gonna close the window and be like, "I can't watch this guy." No, there was an amazing comment. Hold on. <laughs> oh, uh, Florjet says, "Love Rob seriously and passionately discussing a genuine issue while simultane simultaneously wearing a pumpkin on his head." You guys are the best. It weighs nothing, and I forgot <laughs> I still had it on. <laughs> I was gonna Until take you it start off. Start sweating. I was gonna take it off for that rant, but I totally forgot. And then I look at the screen. I'm like, "Oh, I'm wearing it still." Whoops. <laughs> oh man. Why don't people take me serious? Yeah, this is from Greater Than Games, yes, uh, Sean, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, thanks for reminding me, Sajah. Uh, we do have Mansion of the Madness scheduled with Kyle for Tuesday. So we'll be playing a three-player Mansion of the Madness for like the 18th time on the channel or something crazy. We've played a whole bunch of scenarios. You can find the playlist over on the main page or in our playlist section. Uh, or in the description of that video, you can set a reminder. I will be playing Final Girl on Wednesday or Thursday. I scheduled it Thursday. That's probably the day. But again, it might switch dates. But if you set notify me on the stream, you should get a, a notification as soon as I go live. It'll be the same time. It just might be the day before or day after. But uh, I'm playing that game on the channel again. We have a couple playthroughs of that you can find already. Uh, next weekend, we'll be playing Arkham Horror, the living card game. We'll be playing the 
uh, Carnival of Horrors scenario. I just did get a notification that my local retailer did ship us the investigator box. Oh, awesome. For Scarlet Keys. It should arrive Monday, but maybe Tuesday, um, which is awesome. So that officially landed in Canada, as Kate confirmed yesterday or, yeah, day yesterday. Before. Yesterday? I think. Yeah, day before. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. 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 So it's landed. The investigator box for Scarlet Keys, it, it was supposed to come out like a while ago. It got delayed. Um, but it did arrive in Canada, so the rest of my Marvel Champion stuff are on the way. Um, but that means we will be able to play with Scarlet Keys investigators in the Carnival of Horrors. So that should be fun. Assuming Yogi didn't troll us with the decks he put together, but we'll, we'll see. I haven't even looked at the decks Yogi put together yet. We'll see. So we'll look at them on Monday. Um, oh, Yogi doesn't even have his yet. Aww. Oh, no. So I, I got to do an unboxing, like rubbing all the cards all over my body <laughs> just to stick it to him. Just for Yogi. Look at these cards I have. They're so amazing. <laughs> Smell them and just like shower them all over me just to rub it in. Yeah, that's right. That's the decks it. are 100% totally broken. <laughs> like, like broken that they're going to crush the scenario or broken like we're, I'm going to be ranting that none of these cards work together and <laughs> what kind of engine am I trying to build? None of this matters. None of it is what I need right now. Uh, but yeah. Uh, D. Miller asked, have we played all the mansion scenarios? No. No. I, you said we had I have a spreadsheet going. I went back and looked at all the videos we had posted. Some we played off stream. Some we played on stream and lost the streams and we replayed them to have a stream. But um, I looked through the playlist and I had a list of, I think, five scenarios from all the expansions in the base game we've never played on stream. And I remember we did this last year before Halloween and we worked through a couple of them last year. We got it down to five, I think. It was like seven or eight. Um, so playing this one coming on Tuesday, we'll only have four scenarios that we've never even played ever, I don't think. I looked at them. They're mostly from expansions, so that's the way I know we didn't play them off stream. Because most of the ones we played off stream were like um, when we were learning the game or showing other players and stuff. Yeah. Um, we're from the base game. But. Uh, I think they're also the really, really long ones as well. Some of them some are. Of them some are. of them aren't. They're just from expansions. We just haven't got to them yet. But uh, yeah. So we're, we're going to keep playing until we've played every scenario at least once. And then there's that whole fan made app that somebody made that like hacked the other app and made their own scenarios and stuff that like if we really are looking for more content with that game we can mess with that i guess but uh or replay some stuff we just forget how it works and try different investigators i don't know but no it's not still live product no more new releases for mansion madness second edition it is done they've made everything they want for it i wouldn't be surprised if like a third edition ever gets made with like better miniatures and just better quality components and stuff so that game shows its age a little bit um, or just a token version where you don't even need minis. I don't know. And like a best of box or something. I don't know. They could do anything with that, but supposedly they keep printing it because people keep buying it. So it's like uh, Imperial Assault, right? Same idea. They just keep printing it. It's done. But uh, people keep keep looking it up, keep finding it, keep buying it as new people come into the hobby. Still a great game. Um, just need some better balancing at lower player counts. But yeah. Anyways. We are here to play Legend of Sleepy Hollow. At least Scenario 1. I think we'll probably only get through Scenario 1, but we'll see. We'll see. So, it's a game that's 2022 is the official release. Uh, again, it was a Kickstarter back in like 2017, 2018 or some, somewhere around there. I don't, I don't know when. Um, but it's available at retail now. But the retail box has all the issues, like I said before. Just keep that in mind. A Rata Pack is coming. But it is available all digitally, I think. So you can figure out what the cards are that are broken and the and the rule book, the new rule book's available and digitally if you need it. Which we will be using today. Supposedly best of four players, because you do have to play with all four legends in the game. Uh, even if you're playing solo, you have to play with all the characters all the time on the board, no matter what. There's no scaling there. Um, and each scenario, so there's 10 chapters, could be anywhere from 30 to 120 minutes. Which is weird. So it's not scaling based on player count because you still play with all four characters. So there might be some scenarios that maybe just are super fast and some that are just longer. I don't know. But I mean, maybe we do today's in 30 minutes and then we could play a second one. I, I don't know. Um, the weight is only 2.50. So it's not like on the lightest, lightest end, but it is much lighter. But again, like this, only two people have I know this yeah. is the problem. This is why I say this game is not popular at all. Has no interest. Like the Kickstarter didn't do gangbusters, obviously. And I just feel like nobody's even playing it because nobody's or no one's caring to go on here and vote 
or recommend like like this could be just two employees at the company came on here and put this like who knows so uh, keep that in mind like it's maybe not best of four it's just that's what like two people think so yeah so here we go just so you know uh, but yeah well that's not the button that's the button all right uh so this is Legends of Sleepy Hollow. So we have this storybook. In this storybook is your 10 chapters. Uh, this storybook is like 63 pages. This has all the story, the prologue, uh, all the rules that are new for each scenario. Every chapter adds new rules. There are decks of cards for every chapter. Uh, all 10 chapters. Here's all the chapter one cards. Okay, they all warn you. Beware, don't look through this. Just like uh, kind of like a legacy game would do. Um, so just have all your cards faced up this way. So behind here, all your cards you need for the scenario, items, things you'll find, whatever, rules, I don't know. Um, each character has their own deck of cards. As we go through the scenario, everything's like card-based. Um, there you go. So this is one character's deck of cards. As you go through the story, I guess, you make choices, you pick cards. If ever a card tells you to grab a card, you just find the card. These are all EM, which is probably like Emily or something. Yours, I think. Oh, Emily Van Winkle. This is Emily's character deck, EM. Then there's like uh, Elias or something. Elijah? Oh, Eli Elijah. Elijah's deck. Okay. So I have these decks just stacked here, two characters in each pile, but just showing you again, the scenario cards is like, it's like this thick, like tons and tons of cards uh, for every single scenario um, as we go through. We have characters of character boards. We'll explain more how these work. Again, you get these cards to start. We'll, we'll go through the story and how to set this up. I just kind of quickly went through and grabbed all the stuff that I, I could see as I scanned through pages for setup. Just to set it up on the table, kind of show you kind of it spread out. Um, this is the first scenario board, but there is like literally this thick uh, amount of tiles in the game. There's tons and most of them are two-sided, um, I think. Uh, it comes with miniatures. So these are our characters' miniatures. Uh, they have little spinner bases. So the plastic is normally this color. Obviously, uh, they don't come painted. Uh, Mel painted these up quickly for us um, and uh, painted the whole set. There's tons of little enemy miniatures. There's like, uh, we'll see them as we play, but there's a little, um, oh, what are these called? A Shikroot or Shikroot? Shikroot, uh, who has five health. Um, so a little cardboard spinner under there. They're a little loose, which is annoying. Even though Mel painted like one side of it, still wasn't enough friction. So maybe the bottom also needs to have some paint on it. Mm. But I'm assuming paint wears off over time as you keep turning them anyway. So um, they're a little loose. It's a cool solution. It's a cool solution, but man, these are so loose. So loose that you could easily like, and, and because the font is so small, you're going to have to pick them up to change them and read them and stuff. So you're definitely going to put them back and like bump them into other ones, I'm sure. But we'll find out as we play, I guess. I bumped this guy, so, or for example, so he is... Oh, uh, that's... Uh, no, that's your guy. Yeah, so he has uh, actually extra health. We'll find out under here. Oh. So he's uh, 4 plus 8 is 12 he starts on. And they all have dials that are specific to them, so I'm assuming as you go through the campaign. Uh, for example, this guy just starts off with like 12 health at the beginning here, but his dial goes like all the way up to 26. So I'm assuming you evolve your health and stuff as you get more items just based on that. Oh, he was yellow, not green. Oops. No, no, he's green on here. Oh. Okay. This one's saying some of the stuff in this game. Just, I tried to paint the bases the same. Yeah, color. but but I think some things happen. Like I said, the game is kind of not fully run through the QA process, okay. so some things are very weird. Okay. Yeah. See, I put it on twelve, <laughs> and it's already not on twelve. That's kind of thirteen. So but I can't see it from there, anyways. Uh, but we can't see it. Yeah, I can't. How do you play if you never know if your character is alive or dead or needs healing? <laughs> okay, that's kind of important in a dungeon crawler, right? Definitely. Definitely. Okay? So what do we do at Rob's Gaming Table when the game sucks at tracking values? Uh, we use big, pointy, square dice. Yes. And if you're going to leave in the comments, where do I get those dice? You get them wherever you want. They're <laughs> everywhere. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. eBay, Amazon, your local game store, anywhere you buy dice. Uh, uh, table gaming store, whatever. They're, they're everywhere. Okay? You can buy them in bulk, whatever. Um, but these ones don't tip. They're very big. They have the pointy corners, so they're not rounded and roll. Um, we'll probably track our health on our board somewhere. Um, so we don't have to keep playing with spinners that we can't even read at and this very distance. it's obvious for anybody watching, yeah. And you need a big table for this game. Again, you have to play with all four characters. The table board. Uh, you literally have skill cards. There are three slots for skill cards, okay? 
There's also slots for accessories down below, okay? There is slots for abilities on the side. There is item cards and relic cards. So you literally need one card of space, basically around the whole player mat, at least, and some characters have other tokens and stuff they need, like this girl has these tokens. She, what, what did I just do? Uh, yeah, she has like tokens that need to be placed on the board. So like, it takes up a lot of space, and this is just the starting scenario with four tiles, but I literally didn't have enough space to even put the book out, and you need the book open while you play also, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a table hog of a game for sure. For sure. So we are kind of zoomed out a little far because of that, and uh, we don't even have many of our abilities yet. I'm sure it gets worse. Um, but just keep that in mind. From that, the table being full of stuff means the board is not that close to you because, you know, we could have had our two-player mats beside us, but then the board would be even further away. Then I don't know how I'm reading these small little numbers. Um, without streaming, like without streaming of all, just playing the game yourself. Just know it's kind of a table hog. Hopefully you have someone sitting on the opposite side of the table to kind of see values that you need, you know. Um, yeah, but that's a little weird. Anyways, uh, these dice are not in the game. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through the, the prologue and stuff. We'll talk more about our character abilities, but basically you have these action tokens that when it's your turn, you can move and do one action in either order. And this game has that cool, like nice flowing. You can move a couple points, do an action, and then continue the rest of your move, just like Manage the Madness or... I don't know what other games. There's a bunch of games that do that. I love that. I like when they do that. I love that to try to be a, not give you a bunch of actions on your turn. Like it's limited to uh, only one action on your turn. And when you do the action, you literally move uh, your action token. So so this girl, Emily, starts with four. Um, and this is my like preparation area. And oh, dual layer cardboard, by the way. I kept forgetting to mention that. Dual layer cardboard gave me also the vibes that like, wow, this game's like serious business. Nice production. But again, it's just the rule book and stuff was like, oh man, like why? Anyways, um, so yeah, as you do an action, you have every character. So these boards are unique to the character. Obviously they have the character name and that character stats on them. And those characters like starting items basically. And these are, are um, recessed. So you will put new cards in here and obviously they made a the little punch out thing so you can pop the card out. Um, but you will cover up these basic starting skills. So like, man, this screams to me like, this, I remember when looking at the game quickly before we were like, let's uh, let's go get it at Gen Con, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, you can put cards in here. Uh, you have that whole like action economy thing. We see this in like Old Sworn and stuff, right? Like spending your action point. As many as you want, I think, can go in your basic skills and these skills are unique to the character. Uh, then each character will unlock and you can choose and upgrade your character. So they'll get skill cards. And if you notice, I put a little, little token here. That will tell me I can't use that skill anymore. Until, you know, let's say I keep doing my actions like this, you know, let's say I did that. Once this is empty, or at the start of my turn if it's empty, it automatically refreshes. So this is how they kind of balance the, like, best abilities on your turn or whatever. Um, that stops you from spamming the same ability or skill or, or whatever over and over again. Um, because you can only put, you know, one token on this one. Some of them have multiple requirements, so they cost like two points and stuff. Um, but it's kind of a neat mechanic to kind of stop you from just doing this over and over again and being boring. So managing your action points, managing your action economy or whatever it is, uh, is, is a thing. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how that works. That's the basics of it. We'll get items, we'll get relics, we'll have more skills as we level up. This just shows that, uh, we only have two skill slots open to us at the beginning of the campaign. So this locks this skill slot right here. So, uh, obviously, as we get new skills, we'll have to choose which skills. And you can hold a bunch of stuff in your backpack, and you can, at the start of your turn, switch out your items or your relics. And you'll, you can only have one of each over here. And you'll see those will also have spots to put actions on. Um, and we'll get into a little fear mechanic. There's a fear thing to this game and how you can spend fear and stuff. We'll talk about that later. Um, and, yeah. All right. But, yeah, we're basically just moving around the board uh, in spaces on the board. And based on the scenario, they give you different rules, different objectives. Sometimes you don't even need to go know the goal right away, which is very like Arkham kind of theme, uh, you know, Arkham game style, uh, which we'll read about how that is. But again, we have enemies, you know, we're attacking enemies, we're moving around the board. This is like Dungeon Crawler 101 stuff. But we're trying to discover the mystery of like the Legends of Sleepy Hollow or like um, the Headless Horseman or Ichabod Crane or whatever. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> Matthew says, where's Johnny Depp? I was told he was going to be here. He's just running late. It's fine. Oh, yeah. And, and, and here's another thing. Like, how, how do you not want a game that has, uh, you know, custom pumpkin dice, right? I just want these. We'll just take these out after we're done playing it. No, no, these no. These are so cute. We're going to have fun. We'll probably just hit a few roadblocks along the way, just like when we play, like, you No, know. I mean, like, after we're done the campaign or whatever, oh. we do. Like, I want to take these out and have them just off to the side. Oh, I see. I don't know what we would use these for, but they're, they are cute. It's not like, it's not one through six, right? There's blanks no, on it. No, it's stuff. one through three and then some blanks. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what we would use these for, but... And I'll talk about some of the other components when we get to that point. And then uh, one orange die, which is cute as well. Uh, you want to actually hold up your Headless Horseman here, just for fun? Yeah. Uh, that you painted, and he's in the box. Just to show this miniature came with the game, I'm sure this is the reason why a lot of people backed it, maybe because who doesn't want a Headless Horseman miniature? And of course, he has his own big custom ring around him for the health. Okay, I'm sure we're going to find this guy at some point. Just quick and dirty speed paints to get this. Yeah, yeah. Mel went, table, Mel went all, all army all, painter speed paint yeah. to try to get this one done between painting Oathsworn. So those people are complaining why we're not playing Oathsworn is because Mel wanted to finish painting this game and Familiar Tales and also some of Oathsworn in the middle there. Yep. Plus, um, there's a couple other games. Yeah, there's something else I'm working Yeah, on. so we're like, hey, on some of these games, Mel, just do speed paints and see how, how much it speeds it up. So this game should pretty much rip through very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. I mean... Um, yeah. but yeah, definitely better than the brown, uh, the tan plastic everything was, which kind of like blended into the board, kind of worse than gray plastic would. These though, these were, these are my favorite though. These were fun. I don't know, think you showed any of these guys. Those are called gobkins. <laughs> Again, just speed paint, but they're, they're like so cool looking. Pump, pumpkin headed <laughs> skeleton things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just so you guys know. All right. So, uh, I guess I can do a PDF for this stuff. Uh, I will show this in a second. How many hours a week do I spend painting now? You can spend a bunch of time on it. Um, I don't know if well, she I doesn't can sleep. quantify that. She doesn't sleep. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not <laughs> add up that number. Let's let's not. Let's not add up that number. <laughs> All right. I enjoy it though, so it's fine. Okay, we need to bring up where is the storybook? Right here. Storybook. Okay. All right, we have a storybook. Uh, okay, Legends of Sleepy Hollow storybook. This is the latest PDF that we found. Okay, so it might be different than your rule book if you had one of the first printings. It'll be different than the paper book we have at the table. I will go back and forth between both. Hopefully the story stuff is fine. I don't know. But sometimes I'll just want to read out of a paper book. But for this, I'll just read on the screen so you guys can all read along and see how bad I read. Um, Using this book, this book is your guide through the story of Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Using both the story segments and gameplay information, at least one player should have fully read through the how to play guide in order to familiarize themselves with the rules of the game before continuing the storybook. So what we did, again, for those who joined late, I read through the rule book, this one. I read through the paper one a couple months ago, but I read through this one once fully, at least, but I read other sections more. Uh, Mel read through it. There is a 15 minute how to play video that they put out earlier in this year to kind of answer some of the questions that aren't answered in the rulebook in a visual form. I have linked that video down below. If you're watching this later, pause this video, go watch that 15 minute video. It will basically explain how to get set up for the first one, the basics of the gameplay. If you scrubbed past me explaining it or the more I explain it, that'll be official straight from the horse's mouth. Um, eh, horse. Um, that is linked down below. Also, I link down below the uh, latest rule books, the update with the latest rule books and storybook. If you're looking for that, I've linked that down below in the video description. And I also linked uh, a link to the game's website where they should post some of this FAQ stuff and things. Um, that's all linked down below. So if you want to open that right now, look at it, whatever you want to do, it's all there. Okay, it's all there. Um, so hopefully that helps somebody. Okay. Um, so we did read... But again, we've not played. This is, you're going to watch us play blind. I didn't want to know any spoilers. So even for this first scenario, there are going to be spoilers. But you'll definitely have to watch for a few turns to see how the game flows. But I haven't looked at any of the cards that are in this scenario's deck. And that's part of the fun is like you start a new scenario and it's all new deck of cards. So items from the previous scenario get left there. And yes, some relics you find and stuff supposedly get carried forward. And obviously you'll unlock skills and stuff from your character deck. And items and ultimate abilities and stuff. I, I I don't know. New weapons, new armor, all that stuff or clothes. I guess in this game, clothes. 
Um, but uh, you, we're going to play along. So there is a spoiler warning, but like there is no tutorial that's spoiler free to play the game, to learn the game. You literally have to play that first scenario and spoiler stuff to learn it. So I was like, man, this game doesn't seem that complex. So it's like kind of like we did for Familiar Tales. We can just get into it as intended. It's meant to just get your family around the table or your gamers around the table, set it up, have one person just kind of know the rules and you can look up stuff as you play. It's not that long. It's not that complex. So that's the way we're approaching it today. So keep that in mind. Um, but if you're interested in the game, you're like, huh, I want to see how it works. You got to watch some of this playthrough to see the turns, the flow, the actions, the options, the replayability, whatever. It's all there, you know? Um, but yeah, we will be spoiling stuff as we go. So if you want to go in super fresh. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Uh, introduction. Where is my mouse? The old country wives, who are the best judges of these matters, maintain to this day that Ichabod Crane was spirited away by supernatural means. And it is his favorite story often told about the neighborhood round the winter evening fire. Oh, and it is a favorite, sorry. Uh, the schoolhouse, being deserted, soon fell to decay and was reported to be haunted by the ghosts of the unfortunate ped pedagogue? I don't know. And plowboy loitering homeward of a still summer evening as often fancied his voice at a distance chanting a melancholy psalm tune? I, I don't know that word. Yeah, that's right. Psalm, is it? It's peace silent, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, among the tranquil solitudes of Sleepy Hollow. Found in the notes of the late Diedrich Knickerbocker. Okay. This is old, old words, old text. This is like old time slang. But some of these words, I'm like, what the heck? Uh, and so ended the tale of legend of Ichabod Crane and the galloping Hessian of Sleepy Hollow. But what truly happened to Ichabod Crane? What was the, uh, what was that the last that was seen of the Headless Horseman? There is... More to the story, even as story falls to legend and legends are forgotten, yet this, uh, this one has preserved, yet this one has been preserved. Continue, if you dare, discover the truth of the ghastly markings that hung over the Sleepy Hollow and its hairy town that night, but also the four unlikely heroes who gathered to face the darkness that hung over Sleepy Hollow. Can I ask a question? Have you seen Sleepy Hollow the movie? Uh, the Disney one, I think, right? There was a Disney cartoon one. I saw that when I was a little kid. I believe my brother and sister probably had it on VHS because I feel like I've watched it before. I don't think I have. I don't, I don't, I didn't watch. I know there's, the, they were joking in the chat about the Johnny Depp one. I've never watched that. I don't Yeah, know. and MEP says, I randomly watched Sleepy Hollow yesterday. Actually, movie still holds up. I've never seen, so I'm just curious if you had. I hadn't asked you. I, I remember watching an animated one when I was a kid. And I remember, obviously, a headless horseman throwing, you know, carrying a pumpkin around on a horse is like, it is creepy stuff when you're a kid. But I, I think it was Disney, but it was definitely animated. I, I don't know who did it, but okay. yeah. I don't think I have, so this is... I definitely watched one when I was a kid. But no, I've not seen the latest stuff. Um, so okay. we're going to have some fun here, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm just curious if you, like, were familiar with the yeah. story at all. I, I just know it's a, like an open public domain kind of like very classic story. So, like, everyone's done their own iteration kind of thing. Um... But yeah, before the first game, each player picks one of the following legends to play. All four legends are used in every chapter of the game. So if there are fewer than four players, the players must decide how to split up and control the four legends. While decisions about legends can be made jointly, each legends player has the final say about the legend and occasionally receives secrets that only legend knows. Okay, we're going to show these secrets out because you can play this game like two player, three player, one player, whatever, and you control all the characters. So like each character having a secret card, I was like, what the hell are these? So I looked at one. I think they're just literally additional story and flavor for the character. Oh, it's I not like a secret mission or anything. I don't know. I don't know if they, and they're not like a secret objectives or nothing like that. We'll show you one. Uh, well, we'll show you all of them. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't understand. Like, Seems like it's just more story. Yeah, I didn't understand how each character has their own secret card you keep to yourself, but it, you can play controlling multiple of them. So, like, unless you have split personality disorder, like, I, I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> like, anyways, but yeah. What is if they're traitors? I don't think there's traitors in this no, game. Like, it's co-op. I don't know why the cards exist. I don't know why. But I'll show you maybe them. Maybe there'll so you be understand. a reason. Yeah, maybe later in the story, like, you, they, they advance, and it's like, okay, now new secrets handed out. But again, you can play this game fully solo, controlling all four characters. I don't know. 
Well, I'm I'm lost there. I, I'm very curious to know what what the hell is the idea behind that. But Emily Van Winkle. So this is going to give a backstory for each character and get each character set up. So I I picked Emily. I just because she's got the bow and arrow. So that's just how I roll. Uh, and then randomly I just give out the other characters. <laughs> um, but yeah, Emily Van Winkle. Oh, another cool thing in this game uh, that I love when games do is not just the movement and actions breaking up movement. I love that the flexibility. I also love this has the flexibility. So these are the things that I read about when I was like, yeah, we need to try this game because it has little things we love. Not just the dual layer cardboards, okay? Um, but it has the, at the start of every round, even though all four characters are all in play, uh, there's no turn order set. So we can decide who goes first every turn and who goes after each other. And there are abilities that can help other characters out um, so they can do things on their turn. So you might want certain characters to go on a certain turn after other characters. So uh, every it's very dynamic. I love that. It helps with like, the puzzle solving and, and that kind of fun. Not just the boring old like, sorry, it has to go clockwise around the table. And sorry, you have to do movement before you can do any actions and complete all your movement. Like those, those rigid, boring systems, like not a fan of those. I like the flexible, the fun, yep. the, the more open sandboxy kind of feel. I like that. So uh, anyway, Emily Van Winkle is Rip Van Winkle's third and youngest child, conceived only slightly before her now famous father vanished into the Catskills. She was born in 1771. She never quite fit in with her family and learned to hunt at a young age from her father's friends before they, were, they went off to fight in the war. She had a stronger preference for solitude, often slipping away from home for days at a time. As a teenager, she finally decided to move on from the family and begun to hunt up and down the Hudson River, selling meat and skins to residents of the towns she infrequently visited. Eventually, she settled in the woods near Terrytown. That's where this game takes place, is Terrytown, I believe. Uh, she would only occasionally go into town to trade, but she was always refined and pleasant enough when she interacted with others. In recent months, the Van Tassels had been her best customers. Normally, she would just interact with the family's butler, drop off the goods, take her pay, and leave. But today was different. While he paid her like normal, he also offered her a chance for far more pay. Katrina Van Tassel needed help finding the missing Ichabod Crane, and Emily's unique talents might come in handy in finding him. So, it says, the player who is playing Emily takes card EM1 and EM2, from this is the misprint, and this is the latest PDF. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope they fix it. Man, there's still issues in the latest PDF. I'm sure I have the latest PDF. Pretty sure. Uh, hopefully, the one they're actually going to sell people or, or have it as a rata pack to send to people, I should say. Hopefully, they correct this stuff because obviously they were going to include tuck boxes in this game. There are no tuck boxes. Okay, there's no saving tuck boxes. You can tell they were kind of going to do like, uh, kind of like, you know, familiar tales or. Um, What's the other one? Uh, Aftermath and those yeah. that have the nice tuck boxes to save your character's progress. They didn't put tuck boxes in this game. I bet they were a stretch goal they didn't reach. But obviously we're already like in the game's rules and stuff. So ignore that. There are no tuck boxes. Uh, and we're not just missing them. Uh, in the errata it actually says ignore every time it talks about a character's tuck box. <laughs> Five years in development, my friends. Five years. Uh, all right. EM1 is a secret... Uh, is a secret which they should look at privately and not share with the other players. EM2 is their starting skill, which can be placed in front of Emily's legend board as shown on the How to Play Guide. So let's look at those. So EM1, okay, let's, let's, let's look at our secret card, okay? Everyone cover your eyes that don't want to see it and your ears, okay? Earmuffs, earmuffs, spoiler. I know it's so small text, I can barely read it from here. Uh, Emily's secret. It has the traits Emily and Secret. So it, has, it has to connect to something else. I don't know. You are much less chipper and friendly than you let on. This is like a perfect character for me here. Uh, while you put on a nice face, you are not trusting of society or authorities. Yeah, that sounds about right. When I read this, I was like, oh my god. I didn't read any of mine. I read it after I already picked her, I swear. On a few occasions, you have helped outcasts and outsiders to escape civilization. Now this part, I'm not going to talk about. But that's that's what's uh, yeah. Let's all run to let's all run to the farm, boys. So that's a secret. This is what you're supposed to keep from other players that you know about your character that they aren't supposed to know. Don't now, know why. Civilization was in quotes there, so maybe that has something to do with something for you. Because there is no real civilization, I guess. I, I don't know. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what this means. Yeah, I don't know. But yes, I I don't know. 
So Emily's game too. Yes. Mm -hmm. From this point on, I will be referred to as Emily. All right. But I'm also playing as Jeremiah, which we'll see what his secrets are in a sec. Uh, her ability, so this is key to her. This is an Emily skill. It gives her basically an attack, so I can put a token on here. But remember, I don't get to do it again until I've cleared the token off by using all my tokens on my board. Uh, five damage. If this attack is versus your prey, so to make this make sense, you should see her board. She has this whole ability that's unique to her, track. Uh, at the, I have to do this ability to choose that. I don't think I start with one based on what I found on BGG. Uh, so choose a monster type to be your prey. And there are only three monster types in the game besides boss. So they always mention in the new rule books and stuff, there's boss and in the videos. There's boss, then there's uh, goblins, sh shrick roots, and pumplins. Pumplings. So they give you these little standees, okay, these little cardboard standees to show you, I guess, put out on the board or something. You can pick a type of enemy that you're basically, you're, they're your prey and you're good against killing. Uh, then you may stop, swap one unused skill card. So you can swap out a skill. So this obviously having more skill slots, more options. Uh, you may gain one fear, and that's the symbol for fear. Fear are also wooden tokens that work kind of like action tokens. Um, and you may take one to do another action. So you can use an action to switch up who you're targeting. And then you put this out on the board to let everyone know, okay, I'm going after this type of enemy. And those were used. But I'll take off the little bases and we'll just lay them down. Because um, you won't be able to see them if I have them standing up like so. So I'll just remove these and we can follow along like that. Okay, just showing you guys what's in the game. Um, all right. Uh, but now this makes sense, right? If this attack is versus your prey, so if it's Shrick Roots, uh, I can ignore their defense, which they have a defense value. Uh, Gobkins, I deal double damage, which those are, I think, the bigger enemy uh, that have more health. And we can look at the enemies in a bit when we get to the game. Um, pumpling. Or pump, pumpling? Pumpling? Basically baby little pumpkin monsters. Uh, any damage beyond what defeats your target is dealt to all other monsters in that location. So oh, they are... Like spillover. Yeah, and these pumplins are like uh, the swarm enemies. They're like mob enemies. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of them. They attack together. They get worse the more you're in the space. So if you're just killing like a small group of them, they may not have that much health. And at least it lets you spill over onto other enemies, which is cool. So, yeah, that sounds awesome. This is all good stuff I'm liking so far. Okay. You should but, remove that fear so you don't forget and then start. I have no fear, you you're saying? No fear right I have no fear? Okay. At the moment. At, at, oh, I see, I see. Okay. All right, uh, let's get back to the storybook. Yes. So now, okay, Ultra Violetta got it. Now you understand why I'm wearing a pumpkin on my head. We didn't even show the pumplings, did we? No, I That's don't fine. think so. Oh yeah, they're not on the board yet. Not on the board. It's fine. It's fine. We'll show well, them after. Well, we'll get there. Okay, let's not spoil but it. Yeah, then. they do look like the pumpkin the, well, on it, Rob's head. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. Except for they're not. They have an actual. Uh, problem is this green. No, they don't have green on top. Oh, they don't. Okay. No, they don't have green on top, and well, they have a frown. Well, I don't have green on top either. Look, it's gone. <laughs> I know exactly. And they have a frowny face. All right. So do a frowny face, and you're good. So that we did that part. We set up one character. <laughs> okay. And even shows you a little picture of what to do. Okay, put that like that. There's a little lock slot. Okay. All right, let's read about Jeremiah. Oh, that's my other character. Okay, perfect. Jeremiah. How do you say that last name, Mel? What do you think? I don't know. Mm. Jeremiah P. It is. All right. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Jeremiah P. Yeah, I don't know. Is it just pink? Uh. Keith. Keith's saying it's just pink. It's just pink. Oh, okay. Jeremiah Pink. I hate the English language with all the silent letters. Like, just don't put them in there then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is like old old English stuff, though. I know, but... Like, that's how you used to spell pink back in 1767, obviously. <laughs> I don't know. What was it, Pinky? Pinky? I don't know. I don't know. We are not 100% sure. I didn't even want to guess. Yeah, Jeremiah P is good. I know how to rant on this channel. I don't know how to read, though, and, pr and pronounce <laughs> pronounce words. We're not sure when it doesn't tell us if it's silent or not. I suck at things, too. Okay, <laughs> I suck at things, too. I'll, I'm, I'm down. All right. Uh, Jeremiah P. was born in Boston in 1767 to a housekeeper and an English sailor. A sailor. Aboard the merchant brig Lady Washington that traveled to and from the colonies. His parents had... 
Trice while her father's ship was in port at Boston. For years, his father would visit when he was in port, but only for a few days each time. When Jeremiah was 11, in the winter of 1778, and in the middle of the war, his mother succumbed to a terrible illness and died. Her employers were kind to the young lad and kept him on as an errand boy, but the following spring, when Lady Washington came to port, now outfitted as an American privateer vessel, Jeremiah joined the crew to work the rigging. For the next five years, he fought in the Revolution and learned to sail. When the war was over, Jeremiah was left without any parents, and his father died during, as his father died during a particularly rough battle. Jeremiah decided that he had enough of the sailing life and left one fateful day while his ship was docked up in the Hudson River at the small Terry town. He struggled to find work for a time, but was eventually taken in by the local undertaker, learned to dig graves, and ultimately dug the grave of his mentor when he passed away. While the brus brusque Jeremiah is far from the most popular person in the area, he is undoubtedly strong and well-connected, hearing all manner of rumors and tall tales. Thus, it was only a little surprising when Katrina Van Tassel sent him a letter asking him to come to her estate so he could lend his skills to help to try and track down the missing Ichabod Crane. We've got to find what happened to Ichabod Crane here, obviously. Mm -hmm. The player who's playing Jeremiah, that's me! takes cards J1 and J2 from the, the box, uh, the game box. Uh, J1 is a secret which they should look at privately and not share with the other players. J2 is their starting skill, which can be placed upon Jeremiah's legend board, as shown on the How to Play Guide. In addition, the player who's playing Jeremiah takes card JT. This is Jeremiah's talisman. Uh, we get our first relic here. Oh. That is special to him and gives him additional bonuses. That was the one with the extra health on it, because I was like, what's oh, okay. a relic? I remember I was opening everything, I was trying to understand uh, the setup and was like, oh, what's this a relic thing? Uh, all right, so let's do that. You ready? Another secret, Jeremiah's secret. When you arrived at Terrytown, you didn't just help the Undertaker dig graves, you also robbed them. Oh, so you're bad. You only made the decision to stop doing so somewhat recently, and you live in fear that someone will discover your indiscretions. <gasps> Uh -oh, this is you have awesome. Secrets. This is awesome. You have secrets. I'm in. I'm in. This is the kind of stuff that's like, oh, okay, bad rule book, whatever. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, we can figure it out. I want to know where this goes. I wanna, I, that's why I'm saying I want to love this yeah, game. Yeah, so I, I, I know. Me too. I, I, this is where. Uh, like, let's see where this goes. Uh, okay, let's oh, look at this. You're a bad skill. guy. Okay. Yeah. So Jeremiah has um he has a, a eight health, five actions, three move points. Uh, his ability over here is deep breath, refresh all of your skills. Then you may swap one unused skill. So again, you can have as many skills in your backpack, but you can only put as many out, um, in, as many slots you've opened. We only have two to start. Smash is this default like attack ability. I think it's always in the blue spot is your like default basic attack you can do over and over again. Uh, it's just one die of damage. And then the environment action, I forgot to mention before, but that literally changes. Uh, it's just like a variable based on uh, what, this, what it says in that scenario, in that um, chapter. So every chapter, this environment action does different things, and it'll tell you in, when we get there. Um, and then he has, by default, a shovel, which has a damage bonus of zero. He has range zero for all of his stuff, and then heavy coat is defense plus one. I didn't show for Emily. I should have shown that, that stuff. I think I went over it. I just skipped over it, but I scanned it. Uh, Hunter shot is just two damage. If you're targeting prey, plus one die of damage. It has obviously environment thing. Six health, four actions, four move. Uh... Traveling clothes adds no defense, and damage bonus plus one, and just because she got the bow, range of two. And that range applies to like all her skills and stuff. And same with the, the bonuses. Those are bonuses on like all the damage you do, is my understanding. Um, it's just like a blanket bonus. And obviously, as you get new abilities, I will be addicted and wanting to upgrade all my stuff and get better and better as we go. Hopefully, it does it at a nice, good pace. So we're always experiencing new things, and our characters are always evolving. Uh, all right. So his skill uh, for Jeremiah is practice smash, attack, I roll two dice, I get an extra two damage, plus any damage bonus that would be given by whatever's here, right now it's zero. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, just an awesome attack, but again, it, you need to do an action for it, but you can't put another token here until you've used all your action points and refreshed. So this is kind of like a limited action, think of it that way. But in the meantime, I could just do a smash with one die of damage as many times as I want. That's why these spots are like just open, I think. 
Matthew, the holes are there so that, uh, cause you're gonna put a card in here. Yeah, yeah. So then you can pop the card out. Yeah, cause like if you put cards in these slots, sometimes like ha you can't get them out if you don't have nails or whatever. So it's like, that's it's like the quality stuff you, you expect, you know, from these like good production games you expect in like 20.2, you know? It's like this kind of stuff, but it just doesn't align with some of the other stuff in the game. But yeah, you can just push through there to like pop it out to help get you the cards out. Um, especially if it has sleeves on and I'm assuming it then gets stuck in there. Yeah. Um, which would be hard, even harder to get out. Also looking at the die, because I was seeing that you roll two, uh, two die of damage. There's only one blank on the die. There's one three, two twos, and then once. Okay. So, I mean, it's pretty good that and if you enemies, roll a die, you'll at least hit. The enemies use those dice against us. There is a little difference with the dice when we're leaving a space with enemies. Uh, you do get attack, just attack of opportunity kind of idea, just like in any of these games. Uh, you basically roll a die, one die per miniature in the space. And every die that's not blank, you take a damage. So it's not adding up pumpkins like you would normally on a regular attack. You just take a hit for every non-blank die uh, at damage. Uh, and Jeremiah's Talisman is a relic. So these you don't put tokens on. They're just passive effects. And you can only hold one relic. You have one slot for relic right here. And that's it. And you have one slot for an item. So again, at the start of every time it goes to this character's turn, the first thing you do basically is check if you need to refresh. And then the second thing is uh, you can switch out items and relics with what's in your backpack on every turn. Um, and then you go to your move slash action phase and then you're done. And then the next character. Um, so these are flexible. So if like I gain a whole bunch of items, I might need to switch things out based on what's going on. Um, so hopefully there's lots of choice and, and decision points to really make this like, even though it's like simple rules, simple flow to get really like deep and fun and strategic, uh, but we'll see. I do like that you can change out the items and relics. Well, we haven't got that. We haven't, this is all we have. No, I know. I'm I don't know if that like... doesn't happen till the last scenario, then it's like, oh, like we didn't get that many, you know, but there's a ton of cards in the game. So I'm assuming they're gonna start throwing them at us at quite a good clip. That's true. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you these little pump pumplings. Oh, pumplings? Pumplin and dumplin? <laughs> How cute is that thing? Oh, you little sad, you little sad pumpkin baby. Yeah, he's not happy, but yeah, so cute. And there's like a hundred of them in the game. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, yeah. All right. What was next in the book? Okay. Where is it? Okay, Elijah Kappel uh, was originally from Leiden, South Holland. In his late teens, he accepted the calling to train as a Dutch Reformed minister. During his schooling, he fell in love and got married to a young lady named Leek, Leek, the daughter of Representative of the Dutch Republic. In 1748, two notable events happened in Elijah's life. He completed his studies and the Dutch Republic dissolved. As a result, Elijah and his entire family moved to the New World to escape what seemed to be a backsliding country. Elijah's family became part of a small group of Dutch settlers that landed near the Tapan Z portion of the Hudson River. Elijah and a lake started a new life and they were happy there for many years, starting a family together while Elijah led his small flock. When the war started, they were determined to stay out of it. However, in the early winter months of 1777, an illness swept through their community and Elijah was one of the very few survivors and the only surviving member of his family. Heartbroken, lost, and aimless. And this is dark. He joined the Revolution Army as a medic, hoping, 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 <laughs> that healing others could distract him from the hole in his own heart. Aww. After the war settled down uh, with his small pension in Terrytown, determined to live out the last years of his life, uh, last years, sorry, I'm going to live out the last of his years in at least a familiar area. While no longer properly a minister, Elijah's reputation as a sad but kindly old man who is a good listener and full of useful life advice means that he hears a lot of what goes on in Terrytown, in the Terrytown area. So when Ichabod Crane went missing, Elijah heard nothing about it. He felt it was his duty to go to Katrina Van Tassel and offer his services to help find her nigh betrothed after all, perhaps someone would talk to him where they might not open up to anyone else. 
A player is playing Elijah takes cards EL1, EL2 from him, um, okay, and secret, okay, yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's, uh... Here's one. You pass me the board? Yeah. So Elijah here, uh, we see it has uh, seven health, five actions, move three, plain clothes, no defense, no range, no damage bonus from his staff, environment obviously. Oh, he's got two little abilities up here. So you can do bless, three restore to an ally. The restore is healing, and you can do as much uh, health or get rid of fear in any mix you want, is my understanding. And then one restore to yourself, or wrath, three damage to a foe, but you take a fear. Uh, skill card, rest, or sorry, it's not skill card. Uh, the ability is rest, rest, one restore to an ally, four restore to you. Then you may swap one unused skill. Okay. Um, another thing to mention with the fear, uh, how we lose the game, there's two ways. Uh, maybe there's other ways in the, the chapters. Um, you can lose by, if a single character takes up to 10 fear, I believe, yeah. they're eliminated, we lose the scenario, you gotta clean it up and replay it. This does not have fail forward, unfortunately, that sucks. You just have to replay the scenario again, you have to take all the cards out you earned in the scenario, reset it all back up, kinda lame, but that's how it works. Um, so you don't wanna take 10 fear on a character, which is those yellow, uh, these yellow little sun looking tokens. Once one character has 10, so you wanna restore to get rid of them. You can use them as actions, and sometimes you need to use them to do certain abilities. Um, so you can use your fear to help you, but if you get too much fear, you're in trouble. Uh, you kind of push your luck with it with some abilities. And there's another way, if your health goes down to zero, uh, obviously you're, you're out, and if one character's health drops to zero, you're done, you failed the scenario, it's over. Okay, how to win? Depends on the chapter. We don't even know how to win this one yet. We just know we need to gather five keys, It'll and then based on finding those keys, you'll unveil kind of like Arkham Horror, third edition kind of style. Or LCG, I guess, too, where you kind of don't know what you need to do as you start a scenario. Right. You just figure it out as you go, um, which is neat. I like that stuff. Uh, so the cards you have are, here's the secret for Elijah. Your family and community wasn't killed by an illness. Well, that's what you tell others. They were actually killed by a group of looting Hessian soldiers. That's the real reason you joined the Revolutionary Army. Whoa! Whoa, he's lying to everyone. Whoa, he's a liar. Whoa. Big fat liar. Liar. Uh, then this ward skill, oh yeah, there's tokens for this, uh, you need just, I think, one-ish, uh, token. There are many, though, because I bet you level this up. Uh, so you can only do it in your space, these are these oh, yeah, tokens this here. Uh, I just got a couple. So he has these little ward tokens. Um, so you can drop these in a space. These little ward tokens for him. Uh, so you get to restore two to all heroes in target location within range. Remember, his range is zero right now. Yeah, correct. Then place your ward token in that location. All heroes in the location with the ward token get plus one defense. This is like the guy, the paladin or whatever I was using in Ma oh, yeah, Massive Mass Darkness. Darkness. Uh, in Massive Darkness 2, there was a paladin. You could drop these tokens down. Uh, I forget what those are. Consecration tokens mm -hmm. to like basically buff up a space or like harm the enemy, you know? Um, that's what this is. So all heroes in the location with the word token gain plus one defense and plus two damage. At the start of your turn, you may gain two fear to keep the ward in place, otherwise remove it. So again, he, he has restore built in, so he can restore himself while he keeps the ward on the board. He's a very supporty character, um, which is cool. cool. Very cool. Uh, all right, let's go back to the book. Can I reserve the washroom while you read it? No! I have this is your character. I know. You have to hold... No, I'm joking. All right, Mel needs to go to the washroom. Uh, so I'll, I guess we'll be right back.
you're back. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Matthias Giroux grew up in Toulouse, France from a young age. He was always fascinated by war and glory, constantly pushing the other children to play war games and reenact the famous battles they learned about at school. When Matthias was old enough, he joined the French military and within a few years was shipped out to the American colonies. In 1779, Matthias participated in the Siege of Savannah, where he was badly wounded during the assault. By the time Matthias had recovered from his wound, the war was mostly over. However, when given the chance to return home to France, he decided to stay in the new America instead. France had too many painful memories for him, and it was easier to start a new life there. Hey, Dimitri. Um, for a time, he was a vagabond, making his way slowly up the coast until eventually he settled in a small abode on the outskirts of Terrytown, the town's folk were wary of him at first, but he minded his own business and on one occasion hunted down some wolves that had been harrying the local livestock. When Ichabod Crane went missing, Matthias paid it no mind, figuring it was just another bit of local drama. But then a messenger from Katrina Van Tassel approached Matthias. Something more was going on here, and Katrina thought it was uh, thought it just might be something that required Matthias's unique skills. This guy looks badass. Mm -hmm. All right. The player who is playing takes cards M1, M2, yada, yada. So, Matthias, uh, a war veteran, health 8, actions 5, move 3. Look at that, some defense, actually. Sturdy, good clothes. Yeah. Yeah, and a flintlock pistol. So it has, actually, damage bonus of 1 die plus an extra damage. So anytime you do damage, you roll a die and add a free plus 1 damage, and okay. you get to do it at range 1. Guy's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, his basic attack up there in the middle is hip shot, one damage. So when you do that, it's automatically one damage. Plus you're doing it with the pistol, you get automatically one damage. Plus you roll a die. Okay, that's just your basic ability. And then it says, if your attack priority is high, so he has this whole thing right here. It's actually, I should read this one first, change tactics. So normally there's an attack priority in the storybook for the scenario. It tells you who's the highest priority to all the way to the lowest. So ever if there's a tie for the monsters, they will choose the highest priority. Um, but this guy actually can mess with that. So he can change tactics. You can switch between high and low. And there's a little bullet here, bullet token for him. He starts at low, uh, which is not in the rule book, but I found answered officially online in the forums. Um, so he starts on low. And you can basically go up to high. So you can be the, you know, come and get me. Basically a taunt, right? But then you may swap one on your skill and you may take uh, one fear to take another action. Uh, so this shot here, if your attack priority is high, you may gain a fear for plus three damage. So he's the one who can take down the big guys. If you want to take the fear and push your luck. But then you need your other guy to be restoring him or something. Because once he gets a 10, you're in trouble. Yeah. If you're low, you can gain one for plus one target in range. So you can play this range character a little further back. Stay out of harm's way. Or you can get right up in the mix one range away. And get extra damage if your attack priority is high. So it, it gets you risky. You're now, most enemies are going after you. But it's, it's neat. Uh, I like that. That's very cool. So good luck with that. <laughs> I just after you read that, I have a quick. No, you not no. This game is so straightforward. There should be well, no questions after this reading is this. Not stuff. necessarily clarified. So I just want to have you. What? Tell Say. Through, like so. Where was I going with this? Uh, these have to be done before or after I roll my dice. So where it says, if the attack priority is high, I may gain a fear to add plus three damage. But maybe I don't want to do that until I see what I roll. So I yeah. It's not yeah, after you after? roll. Okay. I would say after you roll. Okay, I just want to make a because make kind how of the, we were playing I, I, it. I would go based on the way it's worded. So you're just doing like the one damage you have this, you do that. Then after, based on this, you can do that. Okay. Like, then like way, I, I wouldn't want to necessarily do that every time. No, I would do it after. Okay. And if Perfect. that's not the way it's intended, uh, that's too bad. Okay. That's what I just wanted to set the standard from the beginning. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. But I I couldn't tell you. I never saw. I'm sure yeah, that was not. Asked. It's not in. I didn't see it. I read a whole bunch of things on BG over the last couple of days, so I, I probably was mentioned there. But I didn't know his ability at the time when I really read it, so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." But no, but as long as we have a it, standard, it, that it's we're fine. Play, yeah, we're yeah, whatever. Play. If anyone watching this later is like, "You guys are doing this wrong," timestamp if you can, drop it in the comments down below. Help someone else learn from our mistakes, or if we're still playing this game through the campaign, hopefully we'll see it for a future episode and can correct as we go. Um, but yeah, if if you know better or or whatever, or if you design this game, I'm I'm sorry, sorry about that. But uh, you stink and. Um, 
No, we'll see. But uh, feel free to point out uh, anything we're doing wrong here. It helps other people who come to this video looking to see how the hell does this game work. Um, so yeah, we can all learn. Your best friend was killed during the Siege of Savannah. You had grown up together in Toulouse, or Talaus, I don't know, uh, and had joined the army together, staying together all the way until he died in Savannah. Okay. Edgar says, if you don't see the rule, make one yourself. Exactly. No, no, well, but, there, but watch. There is in the newest PDF, I don't know if it's in the original, but there is in the rule book, there is actually a section that clarifies character abilities. I just didn't want to look it up right now, but we can look it up in a second. So let's let's finish going over this, because Mel's trying to interrupt my flow. No, I'm just joking. I'm all over the place. Barrage. So this is Matthias' skill, attack. I figured if we read all this stuff, then we can go look at those and it'll make more sense. Ooh, speaking of speaking of interrupting my flow, <laughs> Keniel, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the channel. You're welcome. Uh, all right, attack area. Oh yeah, so area means it hits every unit or every uh, sorry every enemy in the same space. You just roll once, add up all the damage, whatever, and apply it to all enemies. And yeah, obviously, AOE. Uh, yeah, obviously subtract defense on specific enemies. If your attack priority is high. Once per round, you may gain a fear to repeat this attack. So see the way it's like it goes from top to bottom? That's how I would treat the other okay. abilities too. So it's like, obviously you're going to do this one, finish the whole attack, and then you choose afterwards to repeat. You're not going to have to spend that before you do this first part, right? Yeah. If your attack's low, plus one damage on this attack. After this attack, you may move each monster in that location one space. Okay. That's cool. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah, so that probably just clarifies it right there then. Yeah. Okay. But uh, let's check the rule book. I just wanted to kind of have a standard from the beginning of how yeah, of we course. were going to play it. If Character specific actions. Each legend has a character specific action. Yada, yada, yada. Track. What is this one called? Oh, this is not. Oh, this is not my specific. This is just like a. Oh. This was not in there that I could find. Oh. Never mind. Scratch that. Oh yeah, they did clarify now that it is low priority starts at. Okay, that was not good. when I first was reading it. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right. Okay. Uh, what else do I need to do? Oh yeah, back to the book, I guess. Uh, storybook. <laughs> chapter one. All right, chapter one, class dismissed. Prologue. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matthew, for the two dollars super chat. I just want to see the spooky super chat. <laughs> Matthew, thank you. Thank you. Matthew, we're not around last uh, last Halloween. No, oh, he, said, okay. he said in the, one of the last ones that this is his first Halloween with us. Matthew, I feel like you've been here forever. I know it feels like a long time, Matthew. Maybe it's just because you've overstayed your welcome. <laughs> Maybe that's all. I mean, thank you for the support, Matthew. You're awesome. <laughs> just kidding. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. I am sad we didn't do all of October. I was a little looking forward to it. We had so much fun last year. Every we weekend, every Kyle visit, every Even solo stream, stream yeah. weekend streams. We were doing all horror themed stuff. It's so fun to play like, although again, mixing them up was bad. Well, that was tough, yes. But it would be fun to do one week only focus on Mage Madness, one week focused on like, you know, Arkham Horror the card game, Arkham Horror the board game, whatever, and kind of move through as we go. But uh, yeah. But then this year we get there and with too many games. Um, too many games that aren't Halloween themed, we're, we're in the middle of playing, so I, like, I don't want to just stop them for a month. And then, uh, not all of them. Um, and then also, um, things like Final Girl, like, I ordered from my local game store all the rest of Wave 1, and I was hoping to have that by Halloween, so I could play, like, all October, I could be just playing Final Girl every week, trying different stuff, and then never showed up, and we may get it in Canada soon, but probably not in time, but... Oh! Spooky, uh, Yogi. But yeah, so we'll be playing November horror games too, also, which would be great. Uh, Yogi, thank you for gifting five memberships to Rob's Gaming Table. Oh, Ultra Violetta. Uh, Woohoo. So, Ultra Violetta, Billy, Kat, George, and Jessica are all members now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yogi. 
Thank you, thank you. Yogi, you're too kind. Thank you so much, man. They're just testing out the spooky alert. Yeah, so the members work. <laughs> yep. Because that wasn't the thing we were really getting last year. No. I don't even think I had it enabled last year. But thank you for testing that, Yogi. I appreciate it. I just it. wanted more spooky things, said Yogi. Thank you, Yogi. Right. Thank you, thank you. And you guys can hear that, right? Can you hear the, like, groaning and the weird noises and stuff? I think you... I can hear that here. I just don't know if you guys can hear it on stream. Oh, Matthew says, I think I joined in February. Oh, so you haven't been around for the holiday time either. Yeah, because it was probably February, you know, Valentine's Day. He was looking for love and he came here and saw me on the screen. And, <laughs> and he was addicted. Yeah, just instantly Cupid shot him and he's, he was hooked. <laughs> That's just how it works. Welcome to the new members. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you, Yogi. All right. Prologue. Oh, you can hear it. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Joe, thank you so much. Katrina Van Tassel uh, needs her hands nervously as she looks from one of you to the other, to another. Thank you all for... Dustin! Okay, Dustin. Thank you. Dustin, <laughs> you, you... I know you do many nice things, and you're a very generous fellow. Uh, I appreciate it. You're too awesome. But I'm trying to read, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Dustin, thank you so much. You're awesome. Matthew also does say it was love at first stream. <laughs> <laughs> love at first stream. Oh, I'm blushing. <laughs> oh, Dustin made the switch from Patreon. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Dustin. Thank you. Dustin, that's awesome. You get uh, a shiny die now. Yeah. Now you got to work your way up to getting that gold die. Oh, you specifically waited for it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> for it to distract you. <laughs> like holding it on the button once Rob like starts this, reading this paragraph. morning puts in all his information just sits there with hovering over the button just waiting <laughs> waiting for Rob to go live I'm gonna get him I appreciate it Dustin thank you thank you thank you <laughs> funny Katrina Van Tassel needs her hands nervously as she looks from one of you to the other thank you all for coming on such short notice as I am sure you will have all heard Ichabod Crane is missing after leaving my estate two nights ago he had already been declared a lost cause and people say that he probably just ran off after the ghost stories that were told that night but before he left, he told me something that chilled me to the bone and makes me doubt he is just gone. He told me that he was close to solving the mystery of the hollow. He would not tell me what he meant, but said I would see soon. Please, go find him. I feel like this is my fault. If you go to the schoolhouse, you might be able to find something the others missed. If I know Ichabod, he would be loath to leave his notes in the open where anyone could find them. Your late afternoon trek from Terrytown into Sleepy Hollow is made mostly in silence. Each of you glancing at the others with uncertainty. Emily is the first one to break the silence as the schoolhouse comes into view. Do you think Ichabod's okay? I hear they found a smashed pumpkin by his horse. <gasps> uh oh, the Smashing pumpkins are here? <laughs> Elijah scowls, glancing over at Emily. Believe not everything you hear, child. Both Ichabod and Abraham Van Brunt were vying for the hand of fair Katrina, foul play could have been involved in whatever happened that night. Jeremiah laughs. Abraham Van Brunt? Do you mean Brom Bones? I don't think I've ever heard anyone call him... <laughs> Katrina! Or sorry, <laughs> Cynthia. Wow, what was I reading? Katrina is who you're reading about. Oh my god. I'm I'm like trying to focus and read this font. You They're definitely killing. throwing you off here. I know. Come on, guys. This is a serious stream here. I'm trying to be as professional and do my job here as possible. Stop. But thank oh, you, that Cynthia. Is so funny. Cynthia, thank you. I just yell, Katrina. Like, but I see Katrina. I know, and you're just. <laughs> I know Cynthia. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. No, they're All definitely right. messing Cynthia, with Cynthia, thank you for joining in the fun. I appreciate it. Bob, who is not about fun, says... Bob, thank you. Just wanted to interrupt Rob's flow. On another note, Rob has a flow. Who knew? <laughs> it's a problem I'm dealing with, Bob, is that, that extra flow, you know, at the wrong times. <laughs> you guys are clearly, definitely messing with his flow. <laughs> I will end this stream. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. All right. <laughs> Let's get serious, okay? Let's get serious. Yeah, anybody that comes after now, miss the hat. Yeah. Um, I might put it back on, but yeah, it's definitely uh, bottling in the heat a little bit. Even though it's super thin and light and weighs nothing. It's, and it's just like resting on your head. Yeah, it's just, oh, yeah. All right, I feel like extra air there. All right. Um, Where was I? I don't know. Jeremiah laughs. Uh, yeah. So Jeremiah laughs. Abraham Van Brunt. Don't you mean Brom Bones? Oh, okay. uh, I don't think I've ever heard anyone call him by his given name. He talks big, but he is harmless. 
Weren't we all like that at his age, all full of air and confidence? Matthias grunts his voice gravely. I plan to focus on the task at hand. As you push open the door of the schoolhouse, the fading afternoon sun illuminates a chaotic scene of books and papers strewn about. Whoever had looked for Ichabod previously had decided that the best way to do so was to throw his belongings all over the floor, perhaps hoping to find where he kept his salary. You enter the building and Emily kneels down, reaching for a piece of paper, then stops grabbing her bow. There's something in here with us. Uh -oh. So then what they do, I'll show you this actually in paper form. Dustin. <laughs> Dustin says sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Dustin, thank you. I appreciate it, Dustin. Thank you so much. Uh oh. Brian, Brian says my turn. Okay, thank you. listen. You guys can support together, okay, Brian? <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I prefer to actually have just Cynthia support the channel if we can if we work this out. No. Brian, thank you so much. You're too kind. <laughs> oh my god, my mouse is ready for the last. Guys, there's death, desperation, families dying, people missing. I appreciate the support, but this is the most serious stuff ever. This is deep, dark. <laughs> Ultra Violetta says, this is a super serious stream, guys. Exactly. exactly. Yes. Super serious. The Ultra Violetta understands. Understands the serious business we're dealing with here today. Thank you. Thank you. Dark matters are at hand. All right. You're uh, going to show something. Yes. I'm going to show the book. So again, this might be full of erratas because they're doing a new version. Um, but just so you know, like you read through, I just want to show it for component wise. Um, but everything is in here. And then you get to this page where you're supposed to lay this out. So it walks you through setup. You can see the tiles you need to grab. Super weird. It was super easy because these tiles were on top, but there is a bajillion tiles in this game. They're not labeled with numbers, letters, words, symbols, anything. You just go based on art in the book. So weird. It's like the first game I've seen, I think, that does that. Yeah, that's strange. Where you don't have to file in tile 2B and 6A or whatever. Uh, that was weird. Like, that's like a like one, dungeon crawling 101. I, I thought it was strange. And you think, oh, maybe there's only like four tiles in the game. No, or six, like a zombie side. No, no, there's like a hundred. Maybe not a hundred. There's like 20 to 30, probably. There's a lot. I could be wrong. Actually... Oh, the rule book will tell us right at the beginning, probably. Yeah, a lot. I feel like there's a lot. I remember it was like a lot. It, it felt like, but they're all thin too. Uh, maps. Oh. oh, 16 cardboard maps. Oh, it just feels like. But some are two sided. It feels like 100. It feels like a lot, <laughs> but they're not too thin, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's just like we have to sort through 16 tiles, and some are double sided to find your scenario. Um, but the art's like different on all of them uh, based on the first couple I was looking at. I was like curious like oh how how the same are they though? Um, but the other side you need to keep on the table So this here will give you your mission goal uh, for this mission find all five keys then follow their instructions to discover how to win the chapter Okay, keys are in an item deck. We'll talk about setting up in a second spawn rules So there's different spawn rules I guess based on the scenario So they're like a scenario specific thing because there's like not default spawn rules to the game I don't think so Basically, the first time we're told to spawn in the game, we will spawn three of the little pumpkin babies. Okay, if uh, some rounds you have to do multiple, but for each type, you will roll a d6. There is an orange and black, very good contrasted die in the game. Okay. I love it. Uh, if you're going to use a regular die, color theme it, make it contrast good. I love it. Okay, it just works. Um, you would roll a die for each type. If you roll a six, you don't have to spawn them at all. But it also determines the, determines the spawn point they're at. And if you notice here, there's only five spawn points in the game. One is open at the beginning. The rest are locked. So we'll put them on the board as they open. I'm assuming from going through the deck of mystery cards, we'll open them at certain points during the scenario or something. Um, because I couldn't find it on here. Um, and then it says, if it's currently locked, just spawn them at the next uh, lowest number uh, that's open. So for example, if you roll a four, Four is locked, spawn them at one. So it's the lowest unlocked is where they'll spawn. Not the next numbered one. Yeah, they start from the bottom and then... Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So if like one and three are opened and you rolled a two, you would actually put them at one. The lowest available. Spawn. It's weird, but yeah, yeah. It's just, I've, I've never really seen yeah. it like that before. Usually just go to the next available number. But I think it's because they're placed very strategically to be like pushing you forward in the scenario. 
So number one is right here open where we start. So um, that's probably going to spawn there the most to kind of push us to go and do stuff instead of just staying back in the scenario, right? Yep. Um, then there is, so that's the spawn list. Uh, they give you this token. So this was supposedly a Kickstarter upgrade thing or something, this little token Mel painted. I didn't realize what this was for before you painted it. I had no idea what it was for. Um, but then I realized it's for this. You lay the book out on the table and you move this along, tracking what the current spawn is. And as you cycle through, you eventually wrap back around. So as we go through the game and spawn, I'm assuming sometimes cards will spawn, but there is also an adversary phase that changes and it cycles. So you have this little cardboard token, uh, which tracks this one in the book. So this is why I'm calling also a table hog. You have to have a full book like open and at the table to track this stuff. And you also can see the attack priorities there. Uh, again, you have that this character who's the lowest priority, but you can switch him to be the highest. This is going to be off screen. I'll have the PDF open just to make sure we're using the latest, greatest information. Um, but what I think we're going to do is if this matches, because uh, I, I can't fit this on screen anywhere. I, like, I don't want to zoom out anymore. And you have to play with the full characters. I'm worried we won't even be able to fit their whole boards on screen. Um, so Mel can have this off to the side. And instead of like holding it up to check things, uh, we'll just kind of take a look at it now. But as you can see here in round A, they move an attack. The next time it's an adversary phase, the enemy phase or whatever, they move, attack, and then a spawn happens. And then the next round, they do it again. But then it goes back around to this one, and then they just move and attack. So you get a little breather. But remember, sometimes you'll roll a, a six on the D6 when you're spawning, and nothing spawns based on this little spawn chart here. Obviously, based on the scenario, they're going to start spawning different, and different things will happen here, which I like. It's dynamic. It changes and evolves as the game goes. And again, mission goals will change, spawn rules. So this is your chapter information panel, which I'm assuming is unique to the chapter. You need it out. You need it open. It dictates every round. And the environment action is also on there, which I should point out now. Uh, when you're in the same area as a pumpkin token, use an environment action to remove the pumpkin token and draw a card from the search deck. So this will all make more sense when we read the setup. So uh, I just want to show that it's here, but we're going to use a PDF. But I just want to explain that this is a component that will be on your table and you should keep out like this. And so it's just also taking up more space and, but we're not going to use it. So there are some solutions. Um, I can take those trackers on my side. Just yeah, because. we're not going to use the trackers that come with the game. Just letting you know they're there and that's a thing. Um, we could use dice. So we could just track which position it is along the tracks and change the die as it rolls so we know. Or um, because we have these for pointing out errata and issues in like rules reference guides and stuff, when there's an FAQ, uh, when we're learning games, these things are like lifesavers. Yeah, they're you've, so good. Yeah, you've seen us use these in like Tainted Grail and stuff when we're like, you know, there's a whole bunch of errata stuff coming later in the game. We like to highlight it, which we might do in this game too as we go. But what Mel can do, or we can do to keep it, if this is physically accurate after we check the rule book, uh, we could just like, you know, these are just little sticky post-it things. And you could just like move it along as you go and reapply it. And these they, they stay pretty sticky. Um, you know, we and can we'll have, be able to hold up the book and move yeah, it Yeah, then we can hold up stuff. the book. We can check what's going on quick. You can see where we are. Um, so we could just do that. Uh, when you bring up the PDF, I will check that it's the same. Yeah, so I'm going to bring the PDF up on screen just so we can double. Oh, we're out of blue. Oh, man. I can get some more. We got to buy more. I've been using the yellow. I let my favorite, but oh. Man, I've been using those things for years. They last a long time. So many. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, okay. So let's do this actually. Legend start location. So we start at entrance spawn point one. Done. Uh, which we're all back here. Uh, monsters are level one. So, oh yeah, I'll show that in a sec. Uh, spawn the following. I did this already before the stream. So I put at spawn point two up here, but spawn point two token is not out because it's locked right now. Um, but they do start where spawn point two would be. I was a little confused by that at first. Uh, we have a shick, shrick root uh, over here in this corner and one down here. And we'll look at their stats, which are on those cards you see on the right side. Um, and, and it's kind of neat how those are evolve and change. I'll show those in a sec. Um, then there's spawn points, only one spawn point open at the start of a chapter, the front door, spawn point one, other spawn points unlock over the course of the scenario. Special setup, place a lock token on spawn points two to five. So 
I, sw I swear that's the latest PDF, but there is no such thing as lock tokens. No. Those aren't in the game. There are only skill lock tokens, but there's only four. Yeah, this is not right either. Maybe I'm not using the latest one. I swear, those are the only PDFs I ever downloaded. Hopefully they fix that before they do an errata pack, because that's messy. In my head, I thought when I was reading the rules that it was like the blue is open, the gray is closed. But then on the art, they just show like even on the setup, there's blue, blue, gray, like, you know. Oh, thank you for the super chat. It says, just wanted to reward a good flow, a good flow achieved. <laughs> Love the pumpkin emojis. Yes. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I've already done this. I placed these 12 little pumpkin interaction tokens. Um, these 12 pumpkin interaction tokens are placed on everywhere there's a paper uh, on the board. There's little white papers all hiding under there. So I've covered all those with the little tokens. Then it says take cards 1-1 through 112, which are specific to this scenario. And again, it goes all the way up to 123. Oh. So I'm going to take 1-1 one, one through 112. <laughs> John, thank you so much uh, for the super chat. It says, a little late to the party. I have to turn my VPN to change countries. Do you really have to do that? You have to do that? John, thank yeah, you. Yeah, John, why do you have to use a VPN? Why do you have to do that? Do you not get YouTube oh, where you are? Maybe, though, maybe to donate in a different currency, but... I don't know. Yeah, John, John I'm curious. Like, Thank you. But yeah, why do you have to do that? Yeah, like I use a VPN sometimes to like, you know, access... Unless you just want it to I use like... it to access things that aren't available in our country sometimes, or, you know, buy things and have them shipped to other addresses that aren't in my country and things. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious. Thank why, you. Why, John, thank you so much, though. But yeah, why? I was curious. Why do I have to use a, a VPN? Like, do you not get my YouTube channel where you are? Is that what's happening? I'm curious. Looking forward to hearing that. All right. Uh, so I'm going to take 1-1 one, one through 112. And we're going to shuffle those up. And they're going to be called the search deck and placed next to the board. And then we have the little map set up here. That's just how you tell which tiles to set up. Oh, Sri Lanka is one of the few countries that doesn't allow YouTube payments or memberships. Oh. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, weird. I didn't realize I that. I know YouTube rolls out things like super slow, like Google does in general. Because I remember forever, like, I'd see U.S. content creators, they could, like, access memberships but like i couldn't and uh even like even the youtube music which is not a thing anymore i don't think but i remember signing up for like google, oh, yeah. google play services and youtube services over the years like they roll them out in like the u.s first and like we don't have them in canada for sometimes months or years um but i know they're super slow at like rolling things out like that demo says vtns protect your identity uh generally yeah john thank you for going to that trouble Sorry about that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Generally, Jamalus, but that's not 100% true. But yeah. I didn't even realize there was places that weren't that. Yeah, there's it was a, like yeah, blocked. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Oh, I didn't realize that thing was blocked. Yeah, but once he said that, I was like, oh, yeah. I, I know this, even being Canadian, there's things that provided from Google we don't have access to um, that other countries do. <laughs> Jackpot Man says he used the VPN so the feds don't track him down for donating to the channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's illegal. Don't do it. <laughs> You're watching. <laughs> okay. But John, thank you for the support. Uh, okay, so shuffled up. Was there a search deck? Number nine is on top, which is funny that I'm shuffling a deck that tells you what's on the back, but we've never flipped these to know. So obviously the next time you play through, if you start remembering, oh, certainly you know, yeah. but, but there's like a ton of cards in the game, even for each chapter, they have like 20, 30, you know, or so cards. Um, so yeah, so I'll just make, oh yeah, search deck. I'll put that actually, so I'll put all the chapter one cards are not using right now. And I'll just put that here and make the discard pile here. Okay. So. All these cards, which were 1 to 12, are there 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there was 10, 12. 11, 12. Yep. There are 12 pumpkin tokens on the board. Okay. So each token links up to you drawing that many cards, I guess. So if we want to see every card in that deck, and again, we need to find the keys, and I know the keys are in that deck. I know they are. Because um, you need to search these to find keys. We need to find... Um, 5. 
Was it five? Yep. Uh, yeah, mission goal. Find all five cards with the key symbol on them, then follow their instructions to discover how to win the chapter. Okay? Okay. So right now we don't know how to win, which is cool. This still reminds me of Arkham LCG or Arkham Horror, the board game, you know, where it like, or third edition at least, I, I don't know second does it, but um, where like you start off and you're like, I don't know what to do. You just have some actions and things to do. And then all of a sudden slowly like things happen or choices are made and it kind of leads to a different victory condition. I don't know if it gets that advanced in this game, but I do like this fun stuff of like, it's a mystery. Let's go Scooby-Doo and try to figure it out and find out how to even win, uh, which is neat. I think this is why also there's the variable length of the game, right? If you find the keys fast in your first few uncovers of searches, that will make it a drastically shorter game than if you have to search every single token to find the last key. If that's how they're doing every scenario, though, yeah, where it's like searching through a deck, if that's a common every, in every scenario, that's yeah. a thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I think we can start. Uh, you just wanted to go over these, right? Or did you or Oh, no? yes. Just quickly to say Enemies. what they do. So they say in this video, it says just tuck these under the board. Uh, but you see you have Gobkins here, for example. Enemies act in a specific priority. So it's bosses first, then Gobkins, then Strick Roots, then Pumplings. And it actually, I think, goes from largest mini to smallest mini. Yeah. So I'm also putting them under the board in that order. Um, but right now it tells me in the setup to use level one of all of them. But as you level up throughout the game, they can go up to level oh, four. I didn't know there's a... Pattern. Yeah, and, and you'll just kind of tuck it under the board to show you which uh, version. So this is kind of clever. I like this. I like it. Um, so right now the Gobkins, which we do have one on the board, only moves for one, but has health 10 and has a range one. When it attacks, it rolls one of those pumpkin dice, does damage per pumpkin, plus one damage. So it'll always at least do one damage. But if you have one defense, you can block that. Mm -hmm. Another thing is when you get damage in this game, if you take at least one point of damage, you get a fear. If you get at least three points of damage hit you, uh, you then get two fear. So any more than three will get you two fear. So defending, if you're getting hit for three damage, but you block one with defense, you still only take one fear, which is good. So. We want to start getting defensive or not getting hit or attacked. So we don't build up fear. So you got to be careful in this game managing fear because you can take fear on your turn to do multiple actions and push your damage and all that kind of stuff and be more aggressive. But you also be careful because enemies can start smacking you and giving you fear also. So then you got to restore and all that stuff because again, one of us hits 10 fear or zero health. The whole chapter's failed. Got to redo it. Okay. We got to be careful. So that's a Gobkin level one. I'm going to tuck that under the board here. So we can only see what we need to see. The next one is Trick Roots, level one. They have move one, health five, range of zero. They only roll one die for attack, but they have a defense of one. I'm gonna keep that in mind. But remember, if they're my prey over here, I get to like ignore their defense with this girl. I double damage to a Gobkin, so like... Oh, you're the Gobkin killer then? Well, no, your guy is. I have to make sure I'm lined up on that prey and all that stuff too. Um, but they're 10 health either way, so I don't know how much damage she does on average. She has no damage bonus, so mm. five damage automatically here with no dice rolling. So it's just, yeah, it's just five damage. Oh, yeah, damage. that with the double damage, yeah. But then there's this one. If I'm targeting my prey and I use this one, Hunter Shot, it's two damage. And if they're my prey, I get to roll a die to add possibly an extra two or three to it, one or two, three. Um, then the little Pumplings babies, Pumplings, uh, level one, they move two, have a health of two, but range zero. Their attack is actually X damage. So they don't roll a die for that. Uh, it's just the number of pumplings in your location. Oh, okay. Special. Only one pumpling in each location attacks each round. So it's like they all just attack together once. Like, they're all biting your ankles at the same time. Okay. We don't have any of these on the board right now. Not but... yet. No baby okay. pumpkins yet. No baby pumpkins yet. They're coming. Okay. Okay, so I don't have any prey right now. I'm just going to move these off. Greenish. Or over here somewhere. Uh, and I'll just, when I actually do this ability, I'll, I'll just set the token there. Okay. To show who my... Ray is. Defense one equals all that rotten wood, says Matt. <laughs> hmm. Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Matthew talking about his parole officer in the summary. <laughs> hmm.
Matthew <laughs> says, my teenager can, uh, my teenager self can guarantee that pumpkin has zero health when you smash it on their porch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I can confer. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let's so do this. So I don't know this. who wants to go first. We can go in whatever order we want. Yeah, I don't really know our characters that well, even though that was literally like the first time I've read everything all together. So it's going to take a few turns for it to sink in, like who has defense, who is the offensive person, where, who, which two guys should be close. Like I know the restoring of this guy who probably is, is hurting himself, like them being near each other might be a thing because he has like zero range to do his stuff. Yeah. But again, you play like, play like my massive darkness guy, right? Like go where like you think we need to be attacking from and stuff like that. Um, and then keep in mind the enemy's movements are pretty low, one or two, but like I got move four, move three, move three, move three. So we can move like a little better than them. Oh, here's another thing. On this board, okay, this is another messy thing. I always rant about this. Whenever I see a game on Kickstarter or a game we own or whatever, uh, any of these dungeon crawler games or adventure games, whatever, that use tiles and spaces that like to get cute with the art. And literally the first time you open the box, you're like, uh, what's a space? Like when you have to ask what's a space on a tile, someone failed at their job. Like make it obvious. Yes, you want the art to be looking pretty on your Kickstarter page so people buy it and they don't think about the gameplay at that point. But man, think about the player when they're actually setting up your game and learning how to play and that family was trying to figure it out and get it to the table. Like don't roadblock them from getting to the game. And that's what this game does. So this was a little confusing at first, okay? You see these lines, this is the tile, right? And I join the tile together. Most games that I know of, these would be two separate spaces, you might think. Because you can kind of see the line is divided there, but it's not divided with a thick black line like this. So then I start asking like, is that all one space? Well, the art does connect, which is fine. Some games do that, that's fine. And then you have like this space here in the middle, for example. And we also have these wooden things that uh, are in the setup. They do block line of sight and they do block movement. So this bookcase blocks movement. I didn't talk about line of sight yet. I figure we get to it when we get to our first attack. Um, but this space right here in the middle, even though it's like center of all the tiles, okay? So you might not have it so locked together and perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, that it might look like separate spaces. But this is all one big space. And it's the same space as like this one space here. And these have black lines around them, which are kind of obvious, but also what they've done is they said on the video I watched from the official company is that based on the direction of the wood in this first scenario, they make the wood direction go in a different way to really let you know it's a different space. So that's how you kind of know this one is, is all the same space because the wood goes in the same direction and it's is con in contrast to the direction it goes here and here and up here and here, okay? But then I get to this space and the wood goes in the same direction as this one right beside it. And it doesn't exactly have the most thickest black line as these spaces do. So then I start to ask myself, is this space part of this space? And is this an L? Or is this, did the person who put the black line here just not make it the same kind of black line that's used everywhere else on the board? And they were just trying to be cute with the art or they just ran out of ink on the pen or whatever they were doing. I don't know. So I think we're going to play it that this space is different from this longer space. So we have like a, a one by one, then like a, you know, a one by two or whatever. And then here's a one by two and then a one by one, you know. And like some of them are obvious. They have like oh, a here's the same thing again. Yeah, but this one is like very thick, dark yeah, line breaking it up. Idea of... and, and the art doesn't connect. Even though it's on the same tile. Yeah, but it's still so goes here. I what don't think the art connects, but again, it, it it draws a line that's perpendicular to the actual board. So I don't know. Yeah, so it is a little weird. I'm gonna play this as it's its own space right here, one by one, and this is a two by one. But I could be wrong. Just know that. So the space we're starting in up here. It is separated by a tile, but actually has a black hard line there. But then I watch like their official playthroughs and stuff, and they literally use this all as one space because the boards run in the same direction. So I have no idea. But then again, in the errata pack, they're including tiles from scenario two that were misprinted. So I don't know if this is misprinted stuff. They're just saying, ah, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal because the first scenario, who cares? 
but I'm still not sure. I know this is one space because there's no black line breaking up and the art continues based on the video from the actual publisher. But this space up here, the starting space, is this really two spaces? Or is this all one long space? I don't know. Because when they set up their scenario, they were actually setting up like this, um, you know, all like this. But I think we actually are all in this little space here and there is no limit to the amount of miniatures that can fit in a space, no matter the size. But yeah, just letting you guys know, again, this is where we come into those, eh, let's just play loosey-goosey and house rule, whatever. I'm going to try not to freak out too much. Got it all out of my system, but I'm just letting you guys know, we may play it a little weird, and you might be watching this a year from now, and they've totally, like, corrected it and have official answers and whatever, but this is weird. One other thing that I think is missing from the game is some sort of tracker if you've taken your turn. Because... <laughs> When it's your turn, uh, I'll just do this. You're just going to move something over, right? First turn, it makes sense. Everybody yep. Yep, has yep, yep. nothing on their on their um, yep. mat yet. Like who went in which order? But then after the game starts to go, I mean, maybe it's just us that we get confused on who's taking a turn. Well, it's because we stop, we talk and stuff like that. And like, even so, but even like, if you're playing solo and you're controlling all the characters and you're, yeah, you're, you're like, did you're, I go this round or was that last round? Yeah, you like want to take a break, walk away from the table. You come back, you're like, oh wait, who was going again? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll just use, I have these cubes. I don't, I don't know where they're from, but I just have like random knickknack cube things and, and things off the side to help fill in games that like don't provide that kind of stuff, but also help just so you guys can follow along on, on stream and play along with us easier. So we'll just use these random orange wooden cubes and just kind of like put them on our board or something. Maybe, After like when we take our yeah, turn, like cover yeah. the name of the character, and then we just got to remember in like the before the enemies go, maybe clean them all off. Yeah, as like a little cleanup phase we made up, because you know a game that doesn't have tracker tokens and a cleanup phase is kind of weird. But yeah, uh, I mean it won't. It'll be fine at the beginning, but once you get into it, I think yeah. And spicy rant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now who but, yeah. goes first? Anyways. Uh... Yeah, Yogi says, I never thought I needed those sort of tokens until I played games where you're encouraged to play more than one character. Exactly. It just reminds me, every time I think about uh, action tracking tokens, go I go back to Netrunner. Like Netrunner from Fantasy Flight Games is like those click trackers. I always thought it was weird because I played card games where you just like, you know, you have resources and like you do your actions. It's all good. But even in that game, they use click tokens, click trackers, just to track your actions in a very quick turn usually. Just so you know how many you have and you keep track of things. It's just good, clean game design to just keep track of stuff. But again, like you don't, if you don't have an extra space on a token punch board, that's extra cost, right? Everything costs, especially in a low print run, it's just a higher cost, right? So yeah, they did all this crazy board, but there's no like, uh, how do I track who went? But yeah, in a game that says you have to play all four characters all the time, mm -hmm. this is weird, but all right, we'll just do that. Okay. Hmm. And also we'll track our health with dice on our board, I oh, think. Oh yeah, I'll take uh, that Which, one. again, don't come with the game, but I don't want to mess with these dials. Uh, we'll do them for the enemies, um, but hopefully we don't bump them around too much. We'll see. Oh yeah, uh, so she has six health. Eight. This guy has Seven. 12. Whatever. Okay. Now, I'm thinking he should stay in this space and do his area effect next turn when the pumplings come into play. So he can go first if you want and just change the high priority. But can you actually like, shoot something or whatever? Well, you can move first, right? Yeah, but I'm low. But I would do this. Take a fear. Go shoot this guy before he even acts. Or shoot this guy or something. Let's go, man. Get the enemies before they go. Like, we get first shot, right? Yeah, but I don't have good damage when I'm low. I need to spend a turn to get up. Into no, you don't. Read this. Uh, Change, yeah. Read it out loud. And then you I, I can't read it from here. I'm asking you to read it. Change tactics. Switch your attack priority between high and low. Then you may... Swap one unused skill, you may gain one fear to take... Oh, I see. Take additional action. Yeah. So you could move, get in position, uh, switch this, do this action, 
as long as you take a fear, you're like pushing yourself on a turn, right? Yeah. So you might not want to do this to take fear, but like you have zero right now. We can I go know. Up to the other thing I was thinking is that he is the person that has the area damage. So if he is somewhere around but you here, you don't always need to do that. No, I know, but three pumplings are going to show up here. Yeah, but don't use this ability then. You'd use this at the best possible time between the next five turns, right? Yeah, so I'm saying so I want to set this up this. that I want to be, though, I do want to be on high. Yeah, but you have this. But the pumplings are only two, yeah. Two each. So not trying to alpha game, but my understanding with this kind of character in these kind of games is if you want to push it, your decision if you want to go with this guy first is can you move him in that far? Move three, right? Yeah. He's one range? Yeah. So you could, I mean, it's your option, but you could one, two, and moving his orthogonal, um, one, two. And then from here, you can shoot this guy with this action, uh, which is damage of one automatically. You get plus one, so it's two for sure. Let's it has one roll. defense, and then you roll a die. But based on you first switching this guy's priority, so you move there first, so I would do this priority switch first, to whichever one is going to make sure this guy dies. Or at least close enough to death. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, is he the one that's going to do that? I'm not sure. Yeah, but, but, but it could be here. But that's his thing, right? Is yeah. You're going to mainly most turns be doing this. Or maybe the environment. Maybe he goes and just draws a card. Maybe we find a super item for him or something. I don't know. Yeah. But again, we right he... now have so many decisions you could choose from, right? Choices, I should say. Is you could choose this guy to do whatever on here. This guy or this guy or this guy. And the order will eventually, like as we get more used to the characters... And again, we only have one skill each, but this is like a super skill you only do once per cycle of all your actions. Yeah. So if she only has four actions, she's going to do her skill shot more than anyone else in theory. But once you start adding fear into the game, uh, these also count as your preparation or your yeah preparationary. I think this is called um, has a token in it, so you don't get to refresh. So if I literally start off the game in my first round, I use my kill shot for example. It's now locked. And now I have to find a place to put this, and this, and that's another turn, another round, another round, another round, another round, you know, and maybe a heal. Once this is empty, if it's on my turn, or at the beginning of my turn, uh, or during my turn, I should say, or at the beginning, uh, then you refresh everything back. So after all that's done, so like 100 rounds from now, you know, like 7 or 8 rounds from now, I will finally, on the next round, be able to use that kill shot. So do not use this skill... I know. Willy nilly. Like no, it is meant to be like, do it to the best of your ability, be efficient with it. At least that's my understanding. Because it's like a basically a, it's not a once per turn ability. It's like a once every four to six to eight to ten yes. rounds, you know, depending yeah, on how much fear long. you got, right? Yep. So, I mean, that's my understanding on just reading the rules. We'll see how it actually in practice goes. Because maybe with Mr. Jimmy Restore over here, maybe he's just healing people up and the fear never gets out of control. So we're just like cycling through turns super fast. Plus, there is somebody I thought that could. What is it called? Refreshing? Is there someone that refreshes us? Restore. Oh, this guy refreshes. You oh, heal. Oh, I heal. Oh, he heals. Ooh. This guy actually refreshes all of your skills. Okay. So he can just clear off tokens off this. Oh, okay, okay. So this guy gets to break that system. That's his thing. Oh, and he only restores himself, right? Only his skills and only his own. Mm -hmm. And then it says, then you may swap one unused skill. But obviously I don't have a skills to choose from, so that's not going to happen yet. We'll worry about that in probably like scenario 3, 4, 5 or something, I would assume. But yeah, so he's going to have good attack, because he'll get to roll 2 dice, plus 2 damage, uh, and then literally the next turn. But I, it's every other turn, actually, because this, unlike yours, you can push your luck and take a fear and do that again. I can't take a fear to clear and then do that again. So every other turn, if I literally did that as my action, then that, then that, you know, mm -hmm. I could every other turn do my skills, which is cool. That's his thing. Okay. Um, but I yeah. I can go towards... Yeah, and then this other guy can... So like, this whole managing this actions and stuff, and again, we're eventually going to have like a whole bunch of options around our whole board, and some of those will also have these symbols on them. Some of them will only have fear symbols. I wish I had an example like the rule book, but I'm not going to get that out right now. I'm sure we'll see some, hopefully, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. um, there's some you can only put fear on. Some you can put both. Some you might have to put like two or three fear on to fire off the ability or the item or whatever. So we'll see those as we go. But I love this little management thing, in theory. I hope it's just as fun figuring it out as a team and solving like who should go and who's at what point, and who should refresh or rest or whatever. Yeah, I think 
I yeah, think it's usually cool. the first turns that's the hardest, but then once you get going and you start to know your abilities and stuff. I can go first with this guy then. Uh, that. Yeah, sorry. Surat's here. Says hi, Robin Mill. Finally caught you guys live. Oh, damn. We've been oh, running hey. from you forever. Uh, I was just speeding through uh, your seventh continent three curse run. Oh, my God. I uh, really loved it. So what's the new game? Can I get a quick overview? Of uh, this one? The best way, I'm not going to go overview of this game. Uh, Surat, if you want to get a quick overview of how this game works, uh, down below in the video description, there's a 15 minute video from the company explaining the game, uh, the action systems and stuff uh, to get you set up for your first game. So you probably don't even need to watch the whole thing, but uh, in 15 minutes, you can get a whole idea how this works and then come back. That's probably the fastest way. Um, but I did explain it a lot over the last like hour or two hours of the stream, so I don't want to keep delaying and we'll explain stuff as we go forward, how the systems work. But yeah, if you want a quick overview, best way, 15 minute video, link down below. Go watch that. It'll give you a good overview of, of the game and then you can come back here and watch later or whatever uh, works for you. That's probably the best way. Okay, you're all fine if I go first? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move three. I'm going to go first with Matthias. Uh, but I'm only going to move two. He has range one. And then my action I'm going to do is my switch tactics. I am going to switch to high priority. Okay. And then I may swap one new skill I don't have. And I may take a fear, which I will do. Uh, you may take a fear to take another action, which I will do the hip shot. I have to clear from there first. So let's do a hip shot. If your attack priority is high, which it is, I may gain one fear for plus three damage, which we'll decide after. So I am doing one damage plus one damage, so two plus one die roll. So two plus one. So, so three, three minus one defense. So two is getting through, but if I take a fear, he's dead. Done. Give in fear. to the fear. He's done. So I did three Take the fear. Two. He's dead. Okay. And when he dies, he drops some loot. No, that's oh, a different game. game. Damn it. Okay, I don't like this game anymore. Um, uh, but yeah, we just killed the enemy. Okay. Uh, and that's your turn because you. That's my turn. Again, uh, there is. Oh, on the okay. back. Do you have the rule book? The printed rule book? Just so I can like here. I'll hold it on this side. Um, but here's the awesome reference on the back. Uh, is there's a round summary. Just so you understand, is legend phase, pick a legend to go first. Uh, first legend goes, optionally swap relics, take one action to move, refreshing is eligible, select the next legend, do it again. <laughs> this is just funny. Uh, then the adversary phase, as listed on the scenario's chapter information page, so it changes every chapter. And then there's, oh, there's the symbols I was trying to show you. Um, so some cards and abilities and skills and items and stuff might have you could put either token on, just the red tokens or just the yellow tokens, the fear tokens. Okay, hey, just so you know there. That's can I look good. up one thing before it passes back you? You can look up you whatever you want. I just want to... Yeah, you keep it, whatever. I just want to show that part of it. So yeah, it's as straightforward as that as a turn. Is like, do you want to swap anything, refresh, and then like do your move slash action. And you still have a movement point, I think. Yeah, but I... Uh, you, you can if you uh, want. You don't need to, but you do have a movement point to use. And again, I oh, love it. I you can, can use that. it. Because then I'm one, one range away from that. Where the pumpkins are going to spawn, if they spawn there. Okay. But then they might get you. Oh no, you get to go first. I get to go first. And I have an area I of that, that so I can... Get them. Alright, I like it. I and then you put your cube on your thing? I did, yep. Okay. So he's done. Alright. Yeah, so when I restore, it has to be room... Fear has to be room from here first before anything else. I just wanted to double check. Yes, uh, I didn't know the answer to that. I would. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, Sorry, just wanted yep, to... Yep, yep. Yeah, so you can't cheese it and start... I'm restoring I didn't want to guess, and, and then... taking fear off your skills to refresh them. No, fear has to come from here first. Yeah. But once all the fear is out of there, it's on skills. That means some of the skills you can like, you know, yeah. clear them up and reuse them again. Making sure for this guy. So who do you think should go next? Somebody that can start on that. Um, can we? Yeah, let's get this guy. So who do we say was good at damage? I can make my prey this guy. Oh, how do you pick up the pumpkin tokens? We have to use our environment action. Yeah. So the environment action is specific to the scenario. Which I probably still have available right here. Right here. So in the in the actual scenario book that's off screen, uh, it tells you what the environment action does. So you have to use your action that turn to do it. 
So Mel can't just pick it up while she's in the same space because she already used her action for the turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that makes sense. So we're just kind of thinking enemies right now to clear them out might have a breather or so because we don't spawn enemies in the first round based on this spawn uh, adversary phase. So we're going to be doing the first one, which is just move and attack. So if they're not there to move and attack, we don't have to worry about the enemies yet. And then the next round, they'll move and attack and then spawn. So if we can take out enemies, we can have some breathers and maybe then grab some pumpkin things and search for information or whatever we're doing. Well, yeah, that answers it. All right. Uh, now what? Well, we can I could just go uh, with her just to shoot at this guy. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Uh, so she can move up four. But uh, range, I only need to be uh, within two range. And range is counted orthogonally. Kind of like Mage of Madness. It's funny. So you just like, you know, range like that. Uh, like one, two. I'm in range. And line of sight in this game. Again, this doesn't come with the game, but just to show you guys visually. In this game, to draw a line of sight, you can draw through the miniatures, they don't block anything. The only thing that blocks anything is, is shown in the setup for the scenario is just these kind of like big bookshelves and uh, these large wooden walls uh, or whatever, those block line of sight. So you basically pick any space. So if I move this girl one, two, three of her movement points to here, I'm now within range one, two, but to draw a line of sight, I just have to, to draw a line uninterrupted hitting any of these wall things um, from any point in the space to any point in the other space. Uh, so if I just draw like, you know, even from this corner, okay, of course I can, you know, I got line of sight anywhere like that, right? I guess I can put it closer. Yeah, so, um, but if, if I couldn't draw and it bumped into a wall or, you know, from like the space I'm in right now, uh, I could draw a line of sight actually to that middle space, but I can't draw a line of sight down to this space down here from where I am because I bang into this I bang into this uh this wooden thing here. Gamble, yeah, thank you for the super chat. Says glad I skipped getting this one. Thanks Rob for taking one for the team. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you, thank you. Why are you glad? Well maybe just for all the rule problems and yeah, stuff? Yeah. Like you said, this is not gonna be for everyone because of those rules. I hope they just do a second printing eventually so in a year all my ranting doesn't mean anything because all the new printings come with the good rule book, the fixed tiles, the errated cards. Mm -hmm. Um which you saw listed in that update. But yeah, I don't know how you would be glad yet until you kind of see how at least one chapter goes to know. And again, we're playing simplified right now. So like maybe with all the abilities and skills and everything, this in the story, maybe it, it gets really awesome. Jamal says, I will wait. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't write it off yet, Jamal. But like, I just want to make everyone like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like wait for the errata pack at least if you're like, don't like the idea of interrupting game flow by going, what the hell does this card do? And then find out later it's all misprinted and errated and stuff like that. Like That's coming eventually. Hopefully they make a new print run with all that in there. But yeah, just want to give that warning out now. At the, and anyone watching this now, it's like October 2022, if you're just curious. Uh, which you can probably see on the YouTube thing anyway. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jamos. Thank you. Jamos, understood. But thank you for the support. Much appreciated. Yeah, I feel like we haven't even got like started yet to see like. Oh, yeah, I did one action. I, I still haven't, I couldn't write this game off, but I just wanted that was a disclaimer not to say the game is bad, just all the issues, the red flags, just that might turn some people off, just to know that what they're getting into. But again, when a game does stuff really well, I like to highlight that too. So, so far, there's some really cool things here so far, but we will see where it goes. And again, this stuff is just the first chapter. We played so many story games, campaign games, legacy games, and stuff. Usually the first chapter is like, Easy mode, you're barely doing anything, there's not much choice, it's super obvious what to do. Yeah. And they don't really challenge you and push you and, and make the game get to that like kind of meaty complexity, fun, craziness, until you, the, for the rewarding the people who actually stick with the game, you know? Yeah. So we will play like at least the first couple scenarios, I think. Nothing yet is making me say, screw this, I don't want to play this game at all. Because again, I wouldn't have streamed it. I was like, when I found all that stuff out, I was like, ooh, do I even still stream this game? But then I was like, man, there could be some good stuff here. Because I remember people telling me the game was pretty cool. So, like, they probably just go through that stuff and don't even care about that kind of thing. It's just house rule, right? Yeah. But I just want to let some people know. Because I know some people are really rule sticklers, like I get sometimes. And uh, they just need to know. Okay. But, yeah. Anyways, all right. You were going to shoot? I guess I'm shooting, right? Yep. So, I could do one more movement. Uh, it get, depends, I guess, on where you want to be. If you want to be closer to that token up in the top corner. But I don't need to be. I'd rather be further from him. He moves for one, but he does have a range of one. 
So what I could do is shoot and then just move back, which yeah. I'd probably do, or move one away or something. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. So I think just to, I'm like I'm playing super aggressive. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. Um, but I'm going to use my track ability, which says choose a monster type to be your prey. I'll choose uh, Gobkins. I'll just put this here uh, to show that it's my prey so I know. Uh, it just has anyone who's joining late. This just has like the outline. And again, normally it's a standee that just stands up, but I just pulled the standee part out just to lay it down so you guys can see it. Um, and then it says, then you may swap one unused skill. Uh, I only have one skill, so we're not, but I do have two skill slots, but you know, eventually we'll have multiple skills. So that's also cool, like on the fly to be changing out skills and items and stuff, which is a part of this game. Yes. We won't even see for a while, I don't think, um, which could be really cool. So well, it depends on how long it takes to unlock that third slot. I no, even with two slots. Like, yeah, when will we get to have three skills that I want to be switching them out on the fly? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like excited to see that if that's that cool. I like, I like that choice every turn of like switching like even more decision points. Like it just that makes it more interesting to me. Yep. Uh, you may gain one uh, fear to take another action, which again, being aggressive, sure, let's take another fear. Um, and the other action I'm going to take is a k -k -k kill shot. So uh, I'm going to do five damage. If this attacks versus my prey, well, it is. It's against this Gagabukin. It's going to deal double the damage. And how much damage is this guy? Ten. What? He's ten? Okay. Yeah. Wait, are you saying double five equals ten? <laughs> we got there. Math for the win. So he's dead. Kill him. But I got to cover this. So this is now fired. And... I didn't even realize, I, honestly, I didn't remember what his health was. Oh, okay. Or I would have not gone through all that song and dance, but, and would just spent. I move here, I do double damage, we kill him. But for the first one, it makes sense to go through that process, so I'm not doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And we understand. So, I do have one point of movement left. And now, of course, things have changed. Information states, game state has changed. So, maybe I do move to that corner to try to get that token. Maybe we don't need to flip that many tokens. I know, it's... it's... Maybe I don't want to get far up in that corner because that is a spawn point. I don't remember which spawn point that was. Two. Oh. But again, I don't know which order we're going to find spawn points. Like, I don't know if it's going to... Yeah, if like... those well, cards are going to say spawn yeah. point four or if they're going to say add the next huh. spawn point. We're not sure yet. Yeah, I wish... I wish kind of like you can tell, I wish they did add those lock spawn tokens in or at least the other side was a lock. We could make them that, actually. Uh, Yeah, like, why can't... Like, uh, let's see. So one side of a spawn, like they say don't put them on the board, but then in the rule book it says there was spawn lock tokens were supposed to be a thing. Um, oh, they so, are the same color. Yeah, some of them are the same color on both sides, and they're the same. So what so we could put do... put an X on it? Yeah, just get a permanent marker. Oh, you have that. Yeah. yeah. Just put an X or marker. just a line, like one line even or something, and that's like the lock side, you know? But do that to all the other five or four tokens or six or whatever, how many there are. Yeah. Maybe just like well, maybe, yeah, you make maybe. it a little thicker than that, because that's oh, kind of, like, not obvious. My fine point one. Well, we'll just do it later. Okay. But it would be nice to know where spawn points are going to be when you're moving around the board and where you're ending your turn, so yeah. you don't get jumped on. But we still activate before the monsters, which is kind of cool. So we, it shouldn't be an issue. But usually I like to know all, as much information as I can to be, like, with my weakest characters, not leave them in harm's way, right? True. But I will... Yeah, I'll move up. Let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. All right. Uh, she's finished. Okay. Well, I think for um, Elijah, I'm just going to maybe go get one of these pumpkin tokens if you're fine mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to go next. He's going to move. This is this character. One, two. How much move does he have? Three? Three, yeah. So let's just move there okay. for now. He'll go that way. Then, yeah, because I want to clear some fear from this guy maybe next turn, but. So you're doing environment action? Environment action. We get our first environment action. So I will remove this pumpkin token. Okay, and we'll draw the top card of the shuffled up scenario one cards, which you're getting one nine. We're looking for five keys. We found a key. It, is it a key? Oh yeah, it is a key. Yeah, yeah, poetry. So what you do is when you flip cards in this game, according to the rule book, you read what they say and just follow the instructions. Um, a partially burnt page rests on the floor here. As if someone had attempted to burn it, but hadn't finished the job. The page is covered in mediocre poetry. Much of it is scratched out and rewritten. One line, 
is of particular interest. Holding my nurse's, or sorry, holding my muse's letter in the secret place, near to me as my heart. And then it says on here, when five keys have been found, any hero, oh, and I did read in the FAQ, eh, we don't, one character doesn't have to have all the keys. Oh, okay. So I guess that was a, a thing. Uh, when five keys have been found, any hero may take an environment action at the desk to draw card 113. Oh, okay. So here you go. Do we want to just like put them all together? Yeah, here whatever. Or something? It doesn't so matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't then... think, but there might be something that takes key, steals keys away. Oh, or okay. something. I, right. I don't know. You're right. But every character has their like unlimited storage backpack where you just store all the skills and things you don't have equipped and items you find and stuff. Yeah, you're right. So you just keep it near that character. That's fine. Okay. He has one more point of movement. Maybe I do start going towards some of these actually and not worry so much about his fire. His. Uh, no. He'll stop there because he'll do a restore next time, I think. Oh, I, Edgar, yeah. Edgar's saying I probably could have aimed at this spot, right? From here to here, maybe. But I was just trying to show an example, like just break up the line with big stuff. And it shows you it in the book. It was a bad example. I'm bad at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just, just a quick example. But yeah, don't take me as gospel. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, where are we? Now at? you have your last character. Oh, actually. Jeremiah. Now I don't know if he wants to go the other way or if he wants to go the same way. This guy here is only move one, so he's only going to get to here. So we're not worried about this guy yet. So instead of Jeremiah Pinky or Pink, we'll just call him Jesse Pinkman. Does that work? <laughs> Jesse Pinkman, JP. Yep. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so he's basically a, a smashy, smashy boy at melee fighter, is what I'm seeing. Right? Oh yeah, he does have his talisman. I forgot this part on it. Plus one die damage to everything he does. Oh well, he's yeah, got equipped. he's a big hitter. So he, and he has an extra four health. So he's like your frontline melee tanky fighter guy. Right? That's yeah. what I'm seeing. So maybe having him collect one of the tokens like in this area, because I don't know how long it's going to Yeah, but we don't know where they're going to spawn next. Well, right now they're only going to spawn here. So he moves for three. As long as he stays kind of close. One, two, three. I can go get this one, and maybe he's just down in this area. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to do that. And then I'll do the action of environment. And we'll draw a token, or get a card, I should say. 112. Room 112? 112. The group? Whoa! What is that? Oh, Get look over at here! Did I just turn him into a scorpion? Loose chain. A rusted chain sits here. Was it used to haul something to the schoolhouse? It could be used as a weapon if needed. I, I don't know if you can trade in this game. I forget. Uh, I think there was trading. And I think you just use the yeah, environment Yeah, there action. is trade, but you cannot give in a trade. You, like you no, can, you, you can, can only, only give. give. You can take. Yes, but you use environment action to trade also. Yes. There are some built-in default environment actions, I believe, in, in every scenario. I'm pretty sure, now that I'm reading this. Because I was like, what if I don't want to use this weapon? And if you notice, this doesn't mean I have to use a fear and a red. This means and or. Or, or sorry, or. So I can use fear to use this weapon. It's three damage. Uh, I'm assuming this is an item because it's sideways. No trait on it. Is there a trait on your relic? To say it's a relic? No, the relic, yes. Relics actually have like graphics on them, I think. They're all this yellow border and they actually say relic okay. on them. So we'll say this is. But this one doesn't. I think I did read that was items are like the more common thing and relics, they just, to differentiate, they just made the relics special. Okay. Yeah, it does say legends may give items and relics to another legend in the same location by using environment action, but cannot take cards this way only given yeah and Edgar is saying this weapon is awesome for him yeah it's just funny he's the one who found it but I was just thinking like what if the character who finds this doesn't want it I, I and then I thought oh yeah trade actions I forgot about that yeah. but it's just using the environment action but this is cool yeah you, you just load uh, it up. and it says move the target into your location you may take another action after using this action yeah oh. so it helps him with a, like less movement he needs to use melee but it's a range too so I could just attack them like that, but then if I pull them in, I can do my melee attack on them, which is cool. That is cool. If they're not dead, yeah, if they're a bigger enemy. There is 10 sessions in this game, or 10... 10 chapters. 10 chapters. 
10 chapters. I think you always play the same 10. I don't think there's branching optional ones like when you get to, you know, session eight. I don't know if there's multiple choice of what. I don't know if there's variable setups for them based on what happened in previous. I don't know how linear the game is. But my understanding is each session, each chapter has a ton of cards with it. I don't think you see every card every time. And um, maybe, maybe there's stuff that branches based on what you find and what you do. Um, but there are tuck boxes uh, with stuff hidden in them also. So I don't know when those happen and, and that kind of thing. Um, but we'll see. That stuff I don't think happens in this scenario. But again, we don't know. Because I've not looked at all these cards. And there's all these cards from this scenario set aside. So uh, do we see all these in every scenario? Or is it replayable? I don't know. And, and do future chapters say if, if a character has this card, you get to actually, the start of the scenario is different based on this. I don't know how detailed the game gets. Um, but we've seen that in some games. I don't expect that kind of stuff in this game, but maybe it's there. So I don't know. But I'm assuming it's just the same 10 chapters in a row every time. But they might change up based on things. I don't know. We're playing it blind. Um, all right. Did he have any more move up available? Uh, no. Okay. Done. So now adversary phase, so we'll just clear these away. So we know all our characters are ready to go. So in the adversary phase, after all the legends are done, um, the adversaries go. And again, normally we have the token on here. We just look the first round. We are doing a move and attack. So you'd go in order. There are no gobkins on the board. There's no shrick roots on the board. There's no, uh, there uh, are, sorry, there are shrick roots, but there's no pumplins. Shrick roots would go because there's only that. That's easy. Um, they will move. So you move all the shrick roots on the board at this point. They just move one. And it's going after the closest enemy. But if there was a tie, we would go based on attack priority order, which if you can just quickly show um, the little attack priority if there was a choice. Whoever's higher in the priority, it goes after first. Which by default is Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Pinkman, Jesse, Jesse McPink, Jimmy, Jeremiah Pink. But I've switched to high, so it's now him. Yes. So he's really second priority now, and third is um, uh, this, this your guy. guy. Yeah, this guy. And then the final is the our ranged, weaker kind of character. Okay. Which makes sense. Okay, um, so that was super easy um, because they have zero range, so it's not going to attack at all. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, I didn't... Oh, I see, I see. But I'm assuming as it levels up, so when eventually we'll set up a scenario where these guys are level two... They have more health, still the same move, but no range. Let's see, level three, two health, or sorry, 11 health, two move, no range. I guess it makes sense that trees don't have range. Yeah, they, they never have range, but they eventually get like special defense when they're spamming together in mobs. Mm. Okay, okay, good to know, good to know. So the enemies will level up as we level up. There also could be scenario rules, because every scenario throws different rules and goals and stuff at you, so they could buff up a single enemy, you never know, even in the special rules and stuff. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Uh, so it's back to us, right? That's it. Yeah. That was a super easy adversary phase. When you kill all the enemies before they get to go, it just becomes mm -hmm. easy to run them. I can go <laughs> next with this guy, because I'm just going to restore, I think, this guy that I'm with here. Uh, oh, I need to... What happens if you find an item that you get to use fear on? No, I'm not going to do that, actually, yet. He's yeah, fine. you can go up to 10. You're fine. I'm just thinking. Okay, so I think then this character's plan is kind of coming down here. This character, one, two, three, you can only move for three. So maybe he goes like and does some of these up there with you. So I can go first if you want here. Uh, full co-op, fully co-op. This game is full co-op. No semi-co-op stuff that I know of. Again, we have these secret cards you're not supposed to show the other players. But again, you're supposed to always have four players on the board. So... We're playing two players, so how do I keep this character's card secret from this character? I don't even remember 100% what my secrets were, so... They're just a little story fluff. Yeah. I think it might advance or matter later. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Again, yeah, we're, we don't know if we're there's not like sure. decisions or anything, so... But yeah, fully co-op. Full. We're all working together. There's nobody trying to get the most points or backstab or be the final kill on the boss or anything like that. That I know of. But again, I don't know how to win this scenario yet, so we'll find out. Yeah, he's going to go next. Who's this again? Elijah. He's going to go next. He's going to move for three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do an environment action to pick up this token. Let's see the draw card. One, seven. Dried flowers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Oh. Uh, I'm going to read this up close because that font and the italicized font and the gray on the black background is really not the greatest. Oh, it's still not the greatest. A book on its side, too perfectly placed to have been thrown here. Examining it, you discover a number of dried bloodroot flowers between the pages. Before you can examine them further, there is a noise of scraping wood on metal. Looking up, a new hole has been revealed in the wall. Unlock spawn two. I like this little hand down here. <laughs> Unlock spawn point two. So wherever that is. Which we know is up by you in that oh. corner. Uh oh. Oh no. Yeah. In that space up there where that pumpkin token is. Oh no. Okay. Well, he's done. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just go there and go search tokens, uh, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. I'll, one movement point, environment, uh, environment action. Uh, we'll get rid of this one. We'll draw. Hey. Smudge chalk. Smudge chalk remains of something that had been intricately drawn on the floor here. It's hard to make out now, but it seems to have been a compass and a star shape. Possibly a hex symbol? Damn cultists in every horror game <laughs> sneaking out of Arkham Horror Lovecraft stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. well, I guess it would have to be a star, but these guys are weird. They use hex symbols. I don't know. But it's definitely cultists. I smell it already. They were just starting the outline and then put the star in somehow. Or... Uh, okay. Uh, when five keys, the same thing, right? When yep. five keys have been found, uh, any hero may use the environment action at the desk. So we're basically trying to find the keys to unlock the desk, right? Makes is sense. what's happening. Yep. That's and we I... have two out of five keys. Okay. Uh, and then she's going to move. She has four move. But one, two, three, four. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, she's finished. Okay, I can go yeah, here whatever. for uh, one. And maybe I'll just pick that one. Yeah, let's do that. So I'll spend an environment. And pick up this token, and I can still move after. Whoa! Oh. You found a sturdy board item. A board left over from repairing a nearby wall leans against a corner. You might be able to use it to patch up a hole. Oh, you can oh. lock spawn points! That is cool. That's clever. I like that idea. Man, not many games let you just, like, cut off spawn points. Oh, that's cool. And it says, lock a spawn point in your location cannot be used on spawn point one. So they're always Oh, so one. there's always a way enemies... That makes okay. sense. That is cool. Yeah, that's clever. So then you can like um, strategize with your team to like, you know. Funnel. Yeah, exactly. To funnel enemies, keep the spawns open near enemies that are good fighters or defenders, you know. Yeah. Ah. But keep in mind, these items are tied to this chapter. We can't carry them forward. So obviously something in this chapter, like uh, maybe they're just giving this to help us as new players learning the game. Maybe this later locking spawn points is like never going to happen. But these items, we don't carry these forward in the campaign. The relics we do. Items not. They're tied. It's kind of like, it uh, reminds me exactly of um, Cthulhu Death May Die from Simon, where based on the scenario you're setting up, you shuffle in specific items and character things that are just for that scenario, yeah. which help you in puzzling out. And also your bosses and characters bring items and stuff too, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. But anyways, you build a, a deck that's specific for the scenario. It's similar in this game. Like we're playing from a scenario specific deck and the items, you have to get rid of them all at the end. And they all go back in the box, put away, and then you get round two or uh, scenario chapter two cards, which will bring all new items hidden in the deck. But any of these relics we find, so you might want to drill through this whole deck because there might be something in there we can carry forward that we could miss out on if we don't. If we don't, maybe I don't know. I'm just saying. I have no idea. But cool. There's your sturdy board. Sweet. And you can place a fear on there or an action. Yes, I can, which I do have some fear here. But, mm -hmm. uh, he only moved one, so I can still move for two, but I'll just move one more to start my turn there, I think. Okay. Unless you want to... Yeah, no, no, no. And then I can come back around. Uh, so uh, Mr. Pinkman here is going to go, and he's just going to move one, two. And then I'm just going to use my... Oh, no, I don't need to move. <laughs> Wait, actually, I, I, got, two. I got my chain thing. Let's just do that first, right? Yep. Um, so he's going to attack at range 2 with 3 damage. I have no damage bonus on that. No range here. Um, and it moves the target into your location. Get over here. Okay. 
Uh, and then I do three damage. I don't roll any dice, no bonuses. So he blocks one because he's got a defense. Takes two damage. I know it's weird, right? No, I was I was looking for like dice, but I don't know for yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate this down. Three damage left. I'm gonna try to put it back on the board very carefully so I don't knock the dial. Yeah, like that sucks, right? When we don't one shot them. Have <laughs> the dial. Damn dials. <laughs> I love the idea of it, though. When yeah. I saw that, I was like, that is freaking genius. Like, when you see it on the Kickstarter page or marketing images, you're like, oh, dials on units? How many times do we play Imperial Assault? Oh we had, like, a hundred little red dice all over the board, and we're knocking them around, so we're removing minis. Yeah, I hate that. I love the idea. It's just they're not, they don't, they, they're too loose. You I need, thought I painted very, them, but. Yeah, maybe we paint the bottom, like yeah, I said. Yeah, maybe I need to paint the bottom, but, but I don't, I don't, I don't care that much, so. It's fine. Um, but no, not Fatality yet. We'll get there. Uh, so far, it's just friendship. Uh, okay, we are. Oh, sorry. But then you get to do. Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. I have this. I have this. Oh. I forgot about this modifier. So this on my, any damage I do, I get plus one in, in damage. I uh, die worth of damage. Oh, he had a defense. I know. That's why I only you took were... two away out of the. Oh yeah. Three I did. Just checking. Okay. I forgot he has this talisman. So if you roll three here. I rolled oh. only two, so he's down to one. He's down to one. That's okay though. That's okay. One. Uh, so then, remember, now I have this, move it to your, and then I take another action after using this action. So, why don't I just do uh, my smash, which is just one die of damage, plus one die of damage, because my talisman. You need to put a token on the one that you use as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Getting used to the system. We'll get it. We'll do it all together. How many people does it take to run one character? Uh, many. Two yeah, extra damage. To kill him. So, he's, he's dead. Gone. Take that, you shh. Rick Root. Rick Root. No enemies on the board. Love it. Feel good, man. It does. All right, we're we're kicking the intro scenario to pieces. You can still move. Hardcore gamers over here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, know, I know. That's just, that's why I said I didn't want to move. I was like, wait, I can choose all my movement after. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yes, I'll just go to like this area. He's got three movement. One, two, three. Okay. I was hiding the corner. Uh, okay, we're done. Clear our cubes. Uh, adversary phase. So now we're in the second one. So we're going to move. No one to move. We're going to attack in this order. No one to attack. Then we'll spawn. So if we look at the first spawn point, then you're going to move this sticker over. And you would normally move the token over that's laying on the board. Um, but we're going to spawn three pumplings. So before we spawn, we have to roll a d6. Yep. For the, one time for the whole group of monsters. Three. It's a three. Spawn point three is not unlocked. So we go to the lowest numbered unlock spawn, which is number one. So three little pump, pumplings who yeah. all... Did you set their health? Uh, no. I just... You just put these just out put randomly? Yep. I, that's exactly what I did. Oh my gosh. Okay, two health. Two health each. If we had... If I had rolled a six... On that roll, we would not have to spawn at all. So just a refresher, they move for two each, health of two, range of zero, their attack is X, damage, X is the number of them in the same space, and then a special, only one of them in each location attacks each round. So they do like a mob attack, basically. That's okay. This guy's got him. He's got an area of attack. So You can do it! He'll go get him. So maybe I just go and do that first. Okay. Go nuts. I have range one. I need to do actually one, two. So this is that space there. <laughs> and then we're going to use this area. One die in damage. Matthew, you're horrible. Plus I have one damage die here. Plus it's plus one. Okay. Uh, if your attack priority is high, once per round you may gain one fear to repeat the attack, which I don't think I'll have to do. Okay, so rolling two die. Plus I have plus one. I just need to roll one. They don't have any defense, right? No. I just need to roll a one. No, you can just smash them on the front porch. Oh, and I rolled a three, so they're all dead. <laughs> like, crushing it. It's just the first scenario. I know, okay? I'm just joking. This it's is like funny. a family-ish game. We're I'm playing with kids at the table. We're having a good time, you know? I'm just joking. I do have one more point of movement. It's designed for gamers, but like definitely a first scenario. It's good to be like gentle, right? Yeah. But again, maybe some players will play and not realize like, oh, I, I can kill the enemies before they even go. Like some people not, might not click in right away. All right. Then I'm going to use my last minute to move here. We've been trained in the art of dungeon crawlers. Much more complex ones than this is like, don't ignore those enemies. I know, right? They will overwhelm you very fast. 
So applying that to this game is maybe not the right thing yet, but we're doing it anyway. Making it look to too easy. Alrighty. I don't know if there's higher difficulties in the game, though. I don't remember that in the rule book, but maybe there is. Well, don't think so. I don't so. remember anything about difficulty, though. Eh, I don't think so. Anyways, all right. Okay, he's done. Um, I mean, this guy's just going to go get a token. Go ahead, then. Just do it. Oh, he can move for three, so this is one space. So, one. Unless you want... Two. Yeah, whatever. There might be a play where, like, sometimes you want someone else to search to know where you should move, because based on spawn point opening and stuff like that, but... yeah. Again, I think we're the first scenario we can be okay, but I bet there will be scenarios where that matters, like which yeah, order, definitely. get that known information right before you make your, your decisions. Yeah. Uh, token. Another card? Yep. Card one, two. Ooh, oh, just chair. what you needed. A good old chair. Dirty old chair sits nearby. It would make a decent improvised weapon in a pinch. Ten, Ten damage. damage. Just smash someone like in uh, wrestling with a chair and take them out. Damage. But, okay, hold on. I have a question. What's that? Is there a limit to items built in? Limit to items built in? One item. Just no, but like, is it like one use? I don't think I understand your question. Sorry. Like these items stay equipped for the whole scenario? Like you smashing a chair? Yeah. It can be used multiple times in the scenario? Or do you think you get to use it once and it's broken and goes away? I don't remember, oh, is I what see. I'm asking. I get it. I know I there's a, a storage limit. I've discussed that 65 times in the video. I get it. But is there a limit to items? Are they one use or something weird? Like, just seeing some of these items, it's like, it could be used as a weapon if needed. Like, kind of the way it words it, it's like, in a pinch. Like, why wouldn't you just use that all the time, you know? But obviously it's limited to at least one use per cycle. This is what it says under action items. Items with available action slot can be used like a skill. Okay, and okay. basic action. Okay. Uh, any items with two or three slots require two or three actions or fear tokens to activate. The tokens must be used all at once to activate that item. Okay. Maybe it was just something I was reading on BGG about, like, probably... But you're right, like, how do probably I... Probably in a rat or something. No, I probably did read something about items. I'm just... I feel like I read something about items that get discarded after use. But it's probably... Like it doesn't would say thing I know, but it probably would say on the item. I just remember reading... I read so many rules clarifications on BGG. I was probably just getting messed up in my head. But I, I felt like I've read that somewhere. But it's not a thing. We'll well, that's know. a great question. It, no, we'll know. We'll know. We'll I know? was just asking because maybe you remembered in the rules. No. But whatever. Okay. Again, it's very limited. You can only use it once every cycle, right? Yeah. As you refresh. Exactly. So that's why I guess it says in a pinch. You know, that kind of thing. It's a sturdy chair. Yeah. yeah, because this guy's got sturdy clothes and a sturdy board. Yeah, yeah. But that's old chair. But that's old chair, so it's it not does a sturdy 10 chair. damage. I mean, that's pretty oh. epic, I think. How much is the definitely not, how much is the metal chair? It's do? definitely not a WWE chair though, because if you can use it multiple times and like those... But can't you use that? No, times? once they bend, they're like the the you know the fake oh. the the durability of the prop, you know, is kind of weak and then it becomes actually dangerous to use it. So they gotta they gotta smash them and then throw them to the side so no one reuses them. Yeah, throw them under the ring. But sometimes they do the multiple smashes, but mm. those are different ones. Okay. Do you think the metal chair though does more damage than the wooden one? Uh, yeah, if we can find it. Okay, let's look for the yeah. metal chair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I still love it though. I still love it. I will not knock anyone who watches wrestling. I have fun watching that growing up, knowing what I know about it. I'm still interested in it all the same. It's still great entertainment. It is fun male soap opera goodness. <laughs> I love it. I already got one more movement. I'm sure I don't watch it anymore, but I mean, I, I had some good times with that though. My brothers liked it. Yeah, I've been, I, yeah, I went with your brother back in the day to see live wrestling. I remember yeah. that trip. Yep, yep. That was good times. Good times. Live WWE. Good stuff. All right. All righty. My two characters have activated. I think you have yours. Yeah. Probably just flipping tokens. All right. So let's do another environment. What Emily can get. Oh no. Journal fragment. You notice a piece of paper half covered by a book. Pulling it out, it seems like it was torn out of a journal. On the paper is the image of some sort of twisted plant creature similar to what you've seen tonight. Suddenly, the boards in the corner of the schoolhouse give way with a sharp, splintering sound as roots burst up through the ground. Unlock spawn point five. Okay, good to know. I wasn't sure if it was going to tell us specifically spawn point X or if it would just say unlock the next. 
One. So five goes here. She'll just end there. Okay. okay FYI. Yep. That's where five goes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then this guy's just going to move. Nope, he'll do environment first. And we'll just draw this one. Ichabod's coat. Another key. Ichabod's coat lies here. The sleeve is shredded as if some beast had torn at it. But there is no blood. Examining it further, you find a small brass key in the pocket. Do we have five yet? Three. Okay. He can still move though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I'll just go one, two, three down to this one. Awesome. Okay, okay. so refresh our token. Yeah, we're all done. Okay, so now we're doing another move attack spawn. So nothing to move or attack. So we're just going to spawn. We're going to spawn one Shrick Root. Okay. Potentially. And we'll roll it up. Hopefully roll a six. We don't even see any. No, five. it's a five. Okay. So it's going to spawn right here. And new, new unlock spot number five. Okay. And Mel doesn't set the dial oh, properly. Oh, sorry. I'm not used to Stop that Stop cheating at and all. putting them out at one health when they should be at five, Mel. <laughs> I'm not used to that. Holy cheater. Next, we'll spawn another three little pumplings. <laughs> Brian says, wrestling fake. Next, you'll tell me there's no Santa Claus. Uh, no, Santa Claus is 100% real. Yeah. The Easter Bunny, though, that's a sham. Sorry, kids. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, Yogi says, luckily I'm wearing my sturdy pants, so all these truth bombs are ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> sturdy pants, defense 10. <laughs> defense plus 10. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> they're definitely made out of corduroy, right? Uh, move green one. Did we move the wrong character? Oh, you didn't move green one. Move green one. You, this one, we did. You moved. Yeah, I was here. I drew, and then I went one, two, three, and moved him in there. I think. I don't know if that's what you mean, Edgar. Let me know. We probably probably did mess something else. No, up. I think you're right. That was right. But I don't know. It could be delayed. He he might be commenting about something from before. I don't know. Anyways. He'll clarify. All right. Then who leaves the raisins in my cereal bowl? Keith, those aren't raisins. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Green arrow. <laughs> oh, these ones, the, oh, I see, because it says you're on 12. Oh, you do have 12. Green arrow. Is this what you mean? Because uh, I know mine are not. No, I think Edgar might be watching uh, a DC stream in another YouTube tab of someone <laughs> playing, uh, you know, a DC Comics game and might be commenting about oh, Green Arrow. Oh, nope, I get it, I get it. Green Arrow. Thank it's you. Like, on the book, on got the it. book. I got there eventually. Like, it's where is off the green screen. Arrow? I'm looking at the screen, I'm like, I'll see Green Arrow. <laughs> I moved this one, but not this one. Yes. Got it. Thank, thank you so much, Edgar. Thank Edgar, you, thank, you. I, thank you for yelling at your screen at us and helping us out. We appreciate it. Like, I'm sorry we frustrated you. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot Green Arrow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. So no spawn next. That's good. Okay. All right. So my plan, I think, is this guy is going to just maybe do some attack here while we collect some more pumpkins. Yep. Go get him. So that's him. He's going to move. If you need help, I can range attack follow up, but I can do plus uh, if damage. not, I'll just search. I think I think I'm good. Uh, one, two. I have range one. Let's put, <laughs> let's put that there. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Yeah, let's put that there. Uh, then I get one die plus one. Uh, if your attack is high priority, you may gain a fear to do plus three damage. So right now I'm doing two damage plus a die. I'm doing three damage. I will take a fear. To do another three, which is six. He blocks one defensive or uh, health of five, so he's dead. Murdered him. Okay, and then I move one. Throw him in the two. fire. I could go here and seal up that. Oh yeah. Next round. Next action, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So That's I'll stop fun. there. Okay, he is done. Uh. And then maybe I use him actually to get some of this fear gone. Okay, but she doesn't now need to attack anything, so she'll just search here. I think is a good play. We'll take that off. Uh, I'll move this. Oh, and during my turn, I cleared out my little board for the first time. I'm the first person, right? Yeah. So automatically a refresh happens. Jealous. And uh, everything's cleared out. Um, and then, yeah, that was me going to my environment action, which was here. 
I don't know if you do it like afterwards or before. One, one. Scattered tests. Looking through the papers on the floor, they seem to be a recently graded mathematics exam. Ichabod was an incredibly harsh grader, counting an entire answer wrong for missing a decimal point. As you're looking at the papers, a boarded uh, window creaks and then splinters as vines wrap around the slots. Unlock spawn three. Spawn three is going to be... No! Down here with you. Whoa, oh. Matthew with another super chat. Thank you so much, Matthew. Says, all hail the great pumpkin. Put your hat on. <laughs> Whoa, I did. The hat is on. I had the hat on before we saw that at all. I've had, uh, yeah. I know. Oh, I wonder how long that had been sitting there. Oh, yeah, because you just put that on. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I didn't see that for real. I just did it because I was like, man, I just feel like putting it on. I saw it sitting there. Was like, let's oh, get... type this too late. Oh, I see. That's okay. That's so funny. I gotcha. But great minds, Matthew. <laughs> great minds think alike, my friend. And Janet with the super chat says, for the return of the pumpkin hat. Love it. Oh my gosh. You guys <laughs> Janet, are thank too you so funny. much. Janet, thank Listen, you. Not reward this kind of behavior, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is just me being silly, having fun. Uh, but I appreciate it. Janet, thank Janet, you so much. Thank you so much. I think Matthew had a comment like at the very beginning of the stream saying something along the lines of like only here is like funny hats and are expected. No, not. no, I but it's just <laughs> maybe in board gaming. I don't know, but I feel like being silly on stream is like something you see. You just go on to Twitch. You'll see something on the front page. Every time I log into Twitch, there's some kind of front page thing where someone's wearing a costume, painting their face, just basically trying to get you to click on their stream. It's like a big thing there. Um, on YouTube, it's thumbnails, right? Yeah, yeah, because so, people have to click in before they so see you wearing the thumbnail. What I need to do is before we stream and I do the thumbnail, I need to put. You got to be doing like this. Yeah, I got to be like, you know, <laughs> like in my thumbnail with a dumb hat on. <laughs> um, but yeah, doing it in the stream, it's like does nothing there. But yeah, uh, people have to come in. Janet's basically just trying to say that she doesn't like my hair, and she's like, oh, oh put it back on. She's Loves like, the hat. She's like, put that hat back on, Rob. Come on, you got to do that. Like, you look, you look silly. The hair is, you know. There you go. <laughs> I would say you can leave your hat on, but this is a YouTube stream. Better than better hats than Tom Vassell. I don't know. The guy's got some cool hats, I believe. I don't know. He always has something colorful on his head. Yeah. Or sp suspenders. I love or the suspenders. Ties. Oh yeah, the ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember those? Like always a thing. Mm -hmm. It's just like I can't do that because. Like, even even when it comes down to costumes and stuff on the stream or funny hats and things, even when I see stuff at stores, I'm like, oh, I want to buy that. That'd be fun for this upcoming holiday to wear on stream and be cool. But I'm like, but then I'm spending that on stupid stuff and not games. Like, I there's, know, there's, I know. there's Kickstarter some months I don't back because I'm like, oh, I, I can't pick them all. And then there's some expansions I don't buy or games that just aren't getting the play. So it's like, oh, I shouldn't buy another game like that. But it's like. I can't be out buying stupid hats. Like, at least this one was free. Yeah, that was free. This one's free. So, I mean, I, I can't say no to that, right? Yeah. But let's try to be smart with my money, you know? And, like, we're, yeah, here for, we're, we're here for the games, guys. We're here for the games, right? Right? That's why I do this. I don't know. Oh, Matthew's comments. Sorry, I, I couldn't remember exactly what it was. Uh, I love your silly hats and are no longer surprised, but expected. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Now they're not special. Yeah, they're anymore. not special no. anymore. No. I, okay, I'll build a collection. We'll do it. Oh, no blue shirt today. No, I can't. Now listen, if I wear a blue shirt every day, it's not as special. But I mainly wear them. But I'm going to start only buying shirts that are blue going forward. Yeah. If that's my stupid thing, that's my thing then. Yeah. So hopefully companies keep, keep making shirts in blue. Imagine we could get sponsored. By a by company that sells of... blue shirts. <laughs> Today's blue shirts brought to you by blueshirts.com. <laughs> Are you tall, big, small? We have blue shirts for all. <laughs> oh my god. Now we need a Batman game stream. Oh, oh, I wish I owned a Batman costume. Oh my god. There's there a couple costumes he wishes he owned. Yes, there are a few. I'm working on it. Eventually I'll buy them and <laughs> we'll wear them. But yeah, there's a few costumes I'd love to have. Just to be funny, like going to conventions or Halloween time, you know, but then my daughter's old enough now. We don't trick or treat. Right. We have a niece, but I think we're not going to trick or treat this year with them. And it's like, uh, yeah. And just answering my door to hand out candy to like the two kids that show up. It's like, that's not a justified reason to buy a costume. But anyways. All right. Yeah. Back to the game that we're here to play. I know I know why I get those comments later like, yeah, if you just stop talking to your chat and like get to the game, like uh, the game wouldn't take so long and blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's the, but that's the 
reason we did I know. it live. If you want to see the game played shorter, play it on your own table and turn my stream off. Or there's likely... STFU. There's likely a video of somebody playing in 30 minutes. Yeah. You know? But then that video sucked because that, that's why they're here. Because the quality and, you know, the information and the, the hosts, you know, the entertainment. No, we're so entertaining. Yeah. The, the, just the level of stream. They're like, man, that 30-minute that, that stream just wasn't... I needed more. It just didn't 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 scratch that itch, you know. <laughs> just Anyways, all right, carry on. Let's go. Oh, Joseph says when I tell my friends I watch eight hours of game stream, I have to preface with six hours of that was about hats and costumes. <laughs> you don't get one without the other, but Keith's saying you press L to skip forward ten seconds. Yeah, I yeah. know, right? Except for when it's live. So what you do when you're watching live? Scrub back like a few seconds so you can skip forward and you don't want to watch them. Then eventually it'll run out of out of time. All right. Uh, where were we? Where were we? I doing? don't know. That's I'm why we have these to... tokens. I went. I put my token here. You just picked up a card. We were reading a card. Oh, she. Spawn she, point. She did it. Yeah, it was from her, right? And yeah. then she refreshed. Okay, so this guy. So she can move. She doesn't move because that's oh, where yeah. she was. One, two, three, four. I don't know. We'll come down here with everybody. Oh, I guess we got to eventually go to the desk, right? We got to eventually uh, go yeah, to the desk. We do. We have one, two, three keys. We got to find two more. Okay. Well, I wonder if they're right here. Oh, no, you got one there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that well, was only two I'll, I'll just go with him. He'll do environment action. Uh, so I'll get to refresh in a sec. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Speaking of comments on YouTube videos, <laughs> here's an angry letter. Tack to the side of a desk addressed to Mr. Crane. The letter is from a student claiming Mr. Crane has no right to take the student's lucky rabbit foot and lock it away under his desk. This, why would he take away a rabbit foot? A slingshot, I understand, and whatnot. A whoopee cushion. There's a fingerprint on the side of this, right? Yeah. That's not from me, right? No. No, there's one on all of them. Oh, okay. Wow. I just, no I just noticed. I was like, my hand's dirty? What? What's going on here? <laughs> The student threatens to get his papa to make Mr. Crane give it back. I'll get my daddy after you. Uh, all right. So that is a uh, second key here for Jesse Pinkman. And he gets to refresh because his little, little uh, spot here, his sunken little middle preparation area is empty. So refresh. And he can move still. Um, so yeah, he'll just move to the next one, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this character is last, so he will move one or two. You can't see the name because you covered it, right? I try to put my health like in other places. Oh, I can't. Yeah, yeah I put apologize. It, like, over there. Yeah, that's probably better. It's Elijah. Elijah, Elijah. Cattle is going to. He moves. He still has one more movement point, but I'm going to do an environment actions. All I've been doing is environment actions. And I will draw a card. Maybe this is the last key that we need. Maybe. Maybe, uh, so there's some comments in the chat, maybe the student was throwing the rabbit's foot at other students, it can happen. Or maybe that foot was attached to a rabbit during class, and by the end of class it wasn't, so he took away the foot. I, I, I don't know. Brian is a teacher, I'm sure he has uh, many, many weird stories. Yeah, I don't know. Let us know. Maybe it was a fresh rabbit foot? I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> who, who, like, who knows what's going on in this classroom? I don't know. Kids are psychos. You got me a card? Uh, yeah. 110. Yes, final key. You found a bookmark. A note stuck in a book seems to have been passed between two students. The note mentions Brom Bones showing up at the schoolhouse. Well, we've heard that name mentioned already. Mm -hmm. The students saw Ichabod hide something in his desk as Brom arrived. Okay, so we have five keys that have now been found. So any hero may take an environment action at the desk. We'll draw 113 and see what it does. Okay, well, I only have one. Doesn't mean we can't search this other card, though. I don't see anything stopping us. Yeah. I only have one more movement, so let's go there. And done. That's everyone. Yep. Okay, let's remove these. Clear. Adversary. So they're only going to move and attack. There is no enemies to move, so we'll move that over. So no yeah, this is, like, easy. Yeah, this it's is like easy. It feels like a first scenario in a game. It's so easy. This is very easy. All right. So did you want to search that before, yes. and then we can have yes. her? Yes. Uh, so he will just do uh, environment action. Might as well, right? Crumpled paper. Oh, oh, we should have known. Oh, yeah. Duh. Oh, well. Yeah, it could have been a relic. <laughs> uh, you oh, never Edgar's know. got us. Yeah, we should have known. The ones you turned it over, is like, obviously, Edgar, that's the only Yeah, <laughs> I, we're not being smart. Oh, Keith, same thing. Probably, yeah. We're not being smart. We sh I should have read the chat. Um, yeah. 
But I, I'm just like, you guys know me. I'm looking for that loot, right? I'm looking for that yeah. relic we can carry forward. Because <laughs> when I read that in the rules, it's like, yes, we want to find all the relics. Anything I can carry forward in a campaign game, I'm like all about. Um, so let us read it, though. Uh, crumpled paper. You find a balled up piece of paper. Flattening it out, you read, is Mr. Crane humming again? I think he is more cheerful on exam days. Finished reading, you glance up to see the, uh, something skitter across the floor and out of sight. Mr. Marbles? <laughs> Unlock spawn point four. Done. Spawn point four. Okay. So if ever we need to draw uh, another one, even though the tokens match, but it does say if you ever need to draw from an item deck and it's empty, you just shuffle back up and draw again. So don't see that re happening because we ran out of tokens. I'm pretty sure I had all the papers lined up, but... Um, and he will move... One, two... I don't know. I don't know what spawn point. And as you're saying, I'm sure you'll get punished based on the amount of spawn points open. I can start closing some of them. Oh, true, actually. But I don't, yeah. It might be bad that we have them all open. But hey. Yeah, go ahead. Do whatever. Well, do, is just, that where you want to be? Yeah. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but he has that hook thing. So I'm thinking if an enemy spawns here, I, I don't know. I can still deal with it. Yeah. But more likely it's going to spawn up here or here unless we roll. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just doing that. Done. All right. So he can trigger this if you want. No, if you want. He's not a good attacker. I don't so care. if something comes up, yeah. So let me. He's I mean, if we, spend, it, we, he's if we get the known information before everyone else goes, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and then spend an environment, then bring all these back. And I'll spend the environment action to. At the desk, though. This is the desk. Oh, sorry, then I'll move here. Yeah, because remember, the yeah, floorboards I, go a different way. So that's definitely, there's all one space, and it's not the same space as those ones. Uh, so I so need sorry. 113. Yes. Right? Um, you did environment action? Yep. And then I restored all of them back. All right. Ichabod's desk. Ichabod's desk is made of solid oak. But from the clues that you found, you locate the secret compartment and unlock it with a key from his jacket. Inside, you find a handful of letters, a small leather-bound book with Cotton Mather on witchcraft. Written on the spine and a rabbit's foot on a chain. Okay, now we draw 114, give it to the hero who performed the environment action, then we read 115. Okay, 114 is this one. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's creepy as Oh, reroll. I've never seen a rabbit foot look like that, but that is creepy. That's a, I don't know, it looks like a hand. <laughs> long, long rabbit's foot. Um, definitely not a bunny. You may reroll one die each time you make an attack. Love it. And that's this is a relic. He doesn't. So here, here's the thing. This is why now I know in the errata, it's like anything with this border on it is a relic because they forgot to put relic oh, on I some see. of the cards. I see. Oh, I see. He's not the attacker, so I'm definitely going to have to swap this to somebody else. Maybe this guy or something. He might still attack, though. Yeah, he might, but I'd rather give it to someone that's attacking more. Oh, does he even have an attack? Uh, oh, yeah, the wraith. This is his attack. Oh, yeah, but it's just, yeah. But you don't roll dice on it yet. No. So that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably I just see, swap it to someone here or something, so. From a rabbit called the Grinch. Yeah, that's what it kind of looks like, Yeah. Right? yeah. It's the Easter Bunny's paw. <laughs> 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 Would you want some candy? <laughs> Anyways, I, I gonna... won't do that ever again. All right. Now you're going to read 15. Uh, 115. Horseman's arrival. The schoolhouse door bursts open. Outlined in the pale moonlight is a black horse. Its rider clothed in black and atop his shoulders, nothing. With a guttural noise, the mounted rider enters the schoolhouse and draws his saber. Place the headless... We're already dealing with this wow, guy? Wow, I didn't think that would be so I thought bad. we wouldn't see this mini till the end. Uh, place the headless horseman on the center location in the schoolhouse. How much health does he have? Do we have a card for him? Just drop him. Drop him. I don't think so. I just maybe the health changes based on you seeing him multiple times. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Okay. Well, let's keep reading and find out. So uh, we read one sixteen. Place it face up next to the board, which is probably the oh, what probably. you're asking about. So well, you know why? Because every other one I put there it is. Oh. So if you just let me keep going. I know, but I stop you, interrupting me. I thought you were stop. gonna get mad. Stop interrupting. Stop. stop. Because stop. all the other stop ones I just put down. Stop. Stop. Okay. I know. I know what you're trying to do this because of the dial. I'm trolling you. All right. Uh, moves to health of thirty. Its range varies. Oh, wow. After the horseman moves, move all monsters from the horseman's location to an adjacent location. 
Attack. Draw a card from the Horseman action deck and perform the action described. Special. Plus two damage against legends, and we're legends, are the basically heroes, in the Horseman's location. So if you're in his space, the horsey steps on you. Do we have this deck of cards somewhere? Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep reading, Mel, so stop asking questions. Sorry. Wait till I'm done the lesson before you put up your hand. That'd be great. Uh, the card is the Horseman's stat card. Shuffle cards 117 to 123 and place them next to the board. Face down to make the Horseman action deck. The Legends win this chapter when they defeat the Horseman. Yay, oh, we know how to win now. Okay. Uh, I bet it's all the rest of the cards. Yep, so I'll just put this Beware card out of the way. So I'm going to shuffle this up. Okay. Boss fight in Scenario 1. That's cool. Like a mini boss, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to make it so he, Stop. Didn't, he didn't say. I know. Mel, you didn't do this. It's all good. All right. So 30 <laughs> health on the boss, which. Yeah, I'm not trusting that dial. So if you'll bear with me. Oh, we'll boss. bear with you. Oh, I don't have it on this one. All right. Hold on. Uh. Okay, well, luckily, just looking while you're doing that, we still have two characters that can still attack this turn before he even gets to go. Which is great, since we don't know what he's going to do. And then we're just going to spawn three pumplings. Which hopefully we don't even have to worry about them. We just kill Headless Horseman. And we win. Jackpot Man says a boss fight in scenario one. What is this, Osworn? I know, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I did right? not expect that at all. <laughs> and that boss, I, I didn't expect to see this boss. I thought maybe like there'd be like mini bosses where we'd fight like, uh, you know, they put a, a group of enemies out or something. Or like his, spawn a whole bunch at once. His health dial goes up to 50. I don't know if this is like a mini. Okay, let's see, huh? Oh, yeah, I know, Keith, the chair is looking mighty sweet now, eh? Except he's already gone, so I gotta use a chair next turn. And he is pretty close, depending on where this guy goes. Uh, yeah, just to be able to do straight up 10 damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're gonna crush this fool then, right? Yeah, except he, he's already gone, but next turn. That is true. Well, it wouldn't be Sleepy Hollow without the main character. I know, but right true. away. But right away, I didn't think we like, could get him. Like right in the away. rule book, it's like there's ten chapters you'll play to un un discover the mystery. So this guy's like already. <laughs> Imagine we have to fight him at the end of each chapter like this. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. Alrighty. Think that's good, right? Looks great. There. Now we don't have to worry about the dial getting bumped or anything. We can all count down the boss health. Also having this just in the scenes when we play future scenarios and the boss is already ready. Mm -hmm. I just forgot to set it up on this one because I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, because I'm sure all of you can see what this says, right? <laughs> I can't even see what it says from here. I can't either. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely, that's the cool part. Now that we know, like, uh, the enemy behavior cards uh, change, uh, that's part of also what gets revealed. That's really neat. So you never know, like, even though they've given us these enemy cards, it's like, they might say, don't use those ones. Boom. Here's a card that that enemy works completely different. Yeah. Using the same models, which is kind of cool. Exactly. Uh, 50 is the highest on the dial. Ah, uh, that kind of gives away some of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, sorry. So Who's then... Who's left to go? That was all you had to read, right? Before I interrupt again? He, he yeah, just gets to move... Uh, he can move one more. Because I think he started here, and then one, two, and then one. So just don't let him upgrade his pumpkin head. He'll face down. Okay. He's done. I wish I could have used the chair real bad, but hey. 
All right, I still have... Oh, because you did the environment action. Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, we didn't know we, we didn't were going to fight I didn't know he was going to just jump in the center of the room. I thought he would... Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's fine. Well, I can go here or you can go. What would you like to do? Is this the big hitter? Uh, if you're going to pull him away, then I'll was go... Who it? Uh, no, uh, he already went. Oh, he already went. He's oh, the one who searched that last token, which we d didn't need to do. Oh, yeah. So it would have been nice. I could have okay. used that. I could have fought him right now and, and, and wrecked him, but... Okay, we'll do as much damage as we can with the other two. I guess you do you want to attack with your bow? Yeah. All right. So Emily is going to... Uh, I can't switch to that type of prey, so she can never do the double damage on a boss. At least oh. not. There might be skills later where she upgrades her kill shot, but right now, like, I don't have a token for that for the headless horseman for my prey. Um, so I, I feel like that's not a thing. But at least it does five damage straight up. But I can only do it once. I have to get through all these tokens. So uh this could do two damage if you're targeting prey plus one die. No, she has no weapons. I guess just five damage. I mean, yeah, I'll minutes. just do that, I guess. You're not to roll or anything. Yep, five damage. Um, five damage mill on the dial. <laughs> okay. And then she can move if you want. I don't yeah, know what yeah. he's going to do to know. I know. know. Uh, plus die. This one doesn't give him a die, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, there's no damage bonus here. Uh, she has no weapons that modify this. I should have probably not used this because what if enemies do spawn and I want to... I wanna... They will, but it'll be three pumplings, but we don't need to kill the pumplings. And they could spawn like When's the next there. Shikroot showing? Or, uh, no, not Shikroot. Gobkin that I could double damage. Uh, next round's Pumplings, then two Shikroots, and then a Gobkin. Yeah, because see, I could save this for that guy in one shot, one of those. But or... I don't even think we'll make it that far. We just have to kill him and we win. Okay. We I, I still don't think that's the right play, but I'll do it anyway. It's fine. So hopefully I can get through these tokens quick and clear that off. So I can hit him again. Anyways, uh, she's done. All right. Uh, this... Actually, she'll. Oh, yeah, if you want to move. Uh, yeah, she'll just move back here. All right. He's going to move. I have range one. So let's go one, two. And let's do. Have to do this one. We'll just use a fear in there. That's fine. Um, okay, so this is plus one damage. Plus one damage, plus a die. And I can take a fear. Uh, does he have any defense? No. No. Okay. So that's three. I will take a. Oh, he might if when he flips a behavior card or something. I don't know, but okay. probably not. Oops. I will take a fear to add three more to do six damage total. Okay. One, two, three, four. I have to be careful. I have four fear out of ten. But I think we're fine. 19 out of 30, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Then I can move one more. I want to move just in case. I counted the one pumpkin. One, two, three, and then I had added three more for six. Okay. Uh, so we're all done? Yep. So let's Adversary. Move these. Okay, so move and attack. He's only, yeah, I guess. So he's the only enemy, so I'm assuming we draw this now. Each legend within the line of sight of the horseman rolls the die. Oh, so oh. this is an attack. So, okay, so then the move. On. Do, do I move, move first? Hold on. But it's called the Horseman's Action Deck. Yeah, I feel like maybe he doesn't move. He just stays right there and does that. Oh, no. And then it says here, it's uh, if we follow this, after the Horseman moves, then it has an attack, which is draw a card from the deck. Okay, so that answers it. So he does move. Uh, who, uh, these two are the closest, right? Mm -hmm. Who's higher on the priority? Uh, this guy, right? Yep. So he goes here after Jeremiah. 
Okay, then we would draw this for his attack. Each legend within line of sight. So that's literally all three of these guys. Um, rolls a die on a two or three. They gain two fear, which is the those those the sun tokens that Jackpot means asking about. They're called fear tokens. Okay. We get to ten on a character. The character's dead. We fill the scenario. All right, I'm rolling with Elijah five, so I take nothing. Right? It was on two and three. Uh, yep. I take nothing. New subscriber, Bear Torch. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome, Welcome. to the channel. Um, also, Jackpot Man to know is um, they slow down. This counts as like an action. We need to empty this space to cycle through to be able to clear and refresh all our token action tokens or whatever. So having fear also slows you down from getting to use your awesome skills because you won't pull tokens off to refresh them as fast. So they're kind of like a push your luck mechanic. But they slow you down and they could end up to your death if you go too far. Uh, sure. And then this guy. Two. Uh -oh. oh no. He takes two. Two fear. He doesn't have any, so I guess that's not the worst. Okay, then. Uh, what else was the thing with him? Plus two damage against legends in the horseman's location. I'm assuming he takes two damage from this attack. Yes. I would assume. Yeah, because it doesn't have to roll a die, it's just damage. But this doesn't say damage, it just gains fear, you know what I mean? So there's like a weird questions that come up, but I'll just say he takes two. And then he would take another fear. But I'm not sure because he's, he, he's like, you could say he's not technically being attacked, but this is called an attack card, so... And I'm assuming, uh, you know... Uh, what am I doing? Two damage, so he goes on a four on this. And a health left. And then you take one fear because you took a damage. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, I had one defense, though. Oh, he only took one. Still took, yeah. Still take a fear. But... Yeah, yeah. Thanks to my heavy coat. <laughs> and because I took a damage, I take another fear. Uh-oh! Okay. And then... Sorry, that. So that was this one. I'd already moved this. So we moved, we attack. Now we're going to spawn. So we're going to spawn three pumplings. And I'll roll to find out where they're going. Come on, six. Two. Two. Up here. That's funny, because that's what I said. Oh, yeah, these have two on them. Use the health dial. I almost did it again. Use the health dial. Okay. Alrighty, and then we're going to move that over there. So Shrick Roots are going to spawn next. Possibly. Possibly. Okay, our turn. Does he want to go? He's in his space? Sure. Uh, 19. I feel like we can do 19. I'm going to use this fear. Um... To do three damage. Okay, at range two, I can move the target into my location. It's already there. Oh, and it has, sorry, plus one die of damage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that one, not that one. One more. Okay, one more. And then... You may take another action after using this action. Uh, we not, I'm not clear these away. I did. I didn't. <laughs> so, um, I guess he'll use his uh, practiced smash, which is two dice, plus two damage, plus another die of damage. Ooh. So three damage, uh, three dice. And it already has two damage? Yeah. Nice. So two damage automatically, but then plus. Whoa! Whoa! We got a three in there. Whoa! <laughs> I, we haven't seen this side yet actually no. get rolled, right? Nope. Pumpkin smash. Six, seven, eight, nine. So you did nine? Nine three, four, damage five, six, seven, eight, nine. with the shovel to the face of my practiced smash. Oh, then this chair is just going to totally kill him. Oh, he's down to six. Correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, red shirts just reduce health. <laughs> uh, that's all they do, Brian. Just reduce health. They also make you perform inefficient actions that put you in harm's way. Uh, yeah, that's also what they do. Yeah, you like run into situations uh, instead of away from And he is going to move here. 
All right. I want to use this chair real bad. So he is going to go in. You're going to finish him with a chair to yep. the head? Then we're gonna this is a wrestling game. Then this one on is the a old wrestling chair, game. which is attack of 10. I'm an undertaker, smash him with the shovels, and you're running up with the chair to, to knock him out. We're yeah. like tag teaming him. Yeah, this is for sure. 10 damage. This is a wrestling game. In, 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 then down to the core. Uh, so 10 damage? Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we win! <laughs> So then, did it say anything on his card? Uh, it just said on here, legends win when they defeat the horsemen. Oh yeah, you have to also tip the mini over like oh, so. Oh yes, yes. That's part. That's a standard on the channel. Uh, all right. Then uh, we need to read the epilogue, which you're not allowed to read until you've uh, won. Epilogue. Uh, oh, spoilers, uh, more spoilers. I mean, this is all spoilers as we revealed every single card that existed in this scenario. But yeah. again, you have to see it to know like what's even possible in the game. Um, but we're about to read the epilogue, which if you want to save that for when you play, supposedly you unlock things. And they're very strict in the rule book. Like, do not read until you've actually won. So that's your warning. Uh, epilogue, after one final blow, lands true on the horseman with a super sturdy chair. He lets out a shout and tumbles from the horse. You all ready your weapons for whatever might come next as the once dark and monstrous horseman struggles to his knees. From beneath the now torn open jacket, you see the sheepish face of none other than Brom Bones. Scooby-Doo! He shakes himself free of the jacket and lets out a loud bark of laughter at your shock. What are you fools expecting? A ghost? He takes advantage of your moment of hesitation to grab the reins, and scrambling back to his horse, rides off into the moonlight. Well, that was unexpected, Matthias growls, holstering his pistol. The man's lucky we let him live. Jeremiah nods, and, uh, Jeremiah nods, his hands in his jacket pocket, absolutely rolling his talisman between his fingers. Like I said, he's harmless. If he's involved in this, then it's all just some prank. We can let Katrina know and clear it up with him in the morning. Elijah shakes his head. That boy is in way over his head. If he does not take care, he could do something that cannot easily be undone. Whatever the reason, he put quite a lot of effort in trying to trick us into thinking something demonic was going on here. Emily frowns, looking back over the carnage in the schoolhouse and pauses to pick up the book, her brow furrowed. She flinches away when Elijah tries to put a hand on her shoulder, slipping the book into her satchel as she makes her way out the door with the others. Leaving the dark schoolhouse behind, you make your way by evening moonlight back towards Terrytown and to the van and to the van or sorry and the Van Tassel Estate. Sorry, right, back towards Terrytown and the Van Tassel Estate. Rewards! Each legend draws the card labeled three from their character deck, which we'll do in a second. This is their second skill. Each legend can have two skills equipped for now. So in chapter two, they will have both skills available to them. Mm. And then chapter two. Okay. Okay. So again, these decks are huge. Um, so Emily gets number three, it was. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's ones like 4A, 4B, 4C. Oh, so maybe dependent on what Yeah, you're there's right? choice or options or what you draw on other cards. Like, I don't know. Who knows how it's going to go? But there's like weird numbers and lettered ones, so I'm assuming it gets more interesting than just... Oh, every... you're Emily. Oh, yep. Uh, no, this is Elijah. Oh! Elijah. Right. E-L. E-L. Then Jeremiah I... gets I J-3. Got it out so fast. And M-3 is uh, your other Matthias. Okay, so let's start with Emily. Emily gets on the prowl. Uh, so it's a skill that needs a red action thing. Uh, move up to three. Each time you move this way, you may, uh, make the following attack. Oh, that's good. Attack. Two damage. If you target your prey with this attack, plus two damage. Wow. So she's like, she's like straight Legolas, like running and like, like just shooting her bow, like all over the place. Thematic. I like it. Okay. She's a badass. Yes. This is what I want. All right. I'm in. I'm in. I like this. See, this game has some good stuff going on here. I'm telling you. Jeremiah, 
uh, I guess, spins like a cyclone with his shovel, kind of like out and he's spinning around, mm -hmm. just whacking everything in one space, so he's melee, but this will hit the, every enemy in the space for one die plus two damage. That's not bad, that kills those pumplings. Plus a die of damage because he has a talisman. Nice. I don't know, whatever. You okay. Elijah? <laughs> Vengeance. Uh, attack. Two dice, plus two damage. So now he's got now a fear attack. attack. Okay. You, you may gain one fear before rolling. So this tells you before rolling. So now you know okay, the other I ones know. are definitely after, right? Okay. Good you know. may gain one fear before rolling to make this an area attack. Love that. Okay. I like that. All right. I, I like where this is going. This is it's like, yeah, these guys are turning into warriors. Uh, charge, Matthias. Oh. Uh, one ally within your range may move up to two and then make the following attack. This is very supporty. Matthias, the gun guy? Yeah. Oh, weird. Okay. Action. One die plus one damage. They use their range and get their bonuses for this attack. That's not bad. If your attack priority is high, you may gain one fear for that ally to restore two, which restores to heal two or heal two health. Or remove two fear, or a mix of both, but two points, basically. Uh, if your attack priority is low, you may gain one fear for that ally to set one die on that attack to three. Wow. Wow, okay. So this guy switches between being, like, aggressive or supporty, basically. That's fair. Uh, which is cool. Reminds me of the bear and Osworn kind of idea. Alrighty. Okay. I like it. Now I want to is that all of them? Yep. So, again, just so you understand, so all of okay. these items are going to go back into the deck. They do not carry forward. We'll obviously take the horseman card, so we didn't see, like, well, any. Well, it's one of his cards. Yeah, so I guess if it gets out of control, uh, he will do lots of crazy things, so we barely scratch the surface there. Um, but yeah, so all, all these items and things, these all go back in the box. Only relics. So, I, I, this loose chain, I, I don't think I have this weapon anymore. It's gone. Yeah. Um, so I believe that's how that works. So we got to find new items in the new scenario, new weapons, new things, right? But this relic like carries forward because this was his, but, uh, the rabbit's foot, oh, the rabbit's foot will carry forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the items, they reset back into that and we'll, we'll, in the next scenario, we start with a whole, um, I don't know if you can reach it or visuals, but it's like, they're all there. Here's how many cards are also in the game for just scenarios. So, as you see here, uh, number two, and they have this little card block in the back on them, beware. So, just telling you, like, don't look through the deck, it's a surprise. Um, but yeah, each scenario, or each chapter, sorry, has its own cards all numbered, you know, all the way through to scenario 10. So, new weapons, new boss stuff, new story, new goals, uh, rules and stuff, I, I think are all in there, I would assume. But you just draw the cards, follow the instructions. So I don't know how creative it's going to get and spice up the flow of the game and whatnot, but there you go. I, th I think that's basically the game. So with just minimal spoilers there, you should know now if this kind of game is for you. I definitely want to continue playing. Mel, how do you feel? I definitely am curious to see where this goes. I like it so far, yes. And every play session, it says on BGG, uh, is 30 to 120 minutes. So obviously if we just were playing not on stream and not explaining how the game works and we just read it and followed it, we would have probably crushed that in like 30 minutes. Oh yeah. Like super fast. Maybe 45, maybe. Yeah. Because we went for that. Yeah. We didn't need to. But. Matthew. Matthew, thank you for thank the super chat. Thank you chat. so much. Mm, bubbling cauldron. I know what I'm having for dinner. Pumpkin, <laughs> hashtag pumpkin head. Yeah. Pumpkin soup. What if you got the hand coming out of the thing? Then it wouldn't have matched what you said. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Matthew. So yeah, Cynthia, narrative game story with 10 chapters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we we like, I want to keep playing to see where this goes. Because again, people told me this game's pretty cool. And I remember people all backing in saying it was cool, but um, that I should check it out and stuff. Um, and, and again, it ch checks a lot of boxes we love in games, right? Mm -hmm. Like I love the unknown. I love when you start a scenario and you're like, I, I don't know how to win. I, I, it's going to unravel the story as we go. I love the surprise stuff. I love the spawning is like very... You know, not zombicide boring, like you don't know where the two spawn points are. But even in zombicide, you flip the cards and it's random what spawns there. Yep. I like how this can spawn random spots, spawn enemies, you know what's coming up, but then you could roll a six on the die and they're not spawn at all. That's true. 
So it's still kind of like crazy. Um, also, the way the adversary phase can change, the enemy behaviors change. They level up. I love this upgrading stuff. I love this little system. Yes, I really like that as well. But obviously, we didn't show the system off as well. I can't wait till I have like multiple skills to pick from and my all basic abilities. Plus, I get upgraded items. Oh, like, yeah, we need to wear, have better uh, clothes. Uh, sorry, upgraded techniques or whatever these are called, like um, armor and weapons or whatever. And then uh, items and relics, accessories. Jackpot me with the super chat says, remember to like the video. Yes, yes. please. Uh, liking the video will help other people find this when they're searching. Uh, will help people find the video and maybe can join us on future streams if and when we continue to play the game. I want to continue. We'll, we'll, I, like, we'll try to find a night where we can fit another stream in. Um, but obviously if it's 10 streams, this might take a while and we might have to put it on hold while we're doing other stuff too. So... If you're looking for the next episode, check the video description. There will be a playlist link where you will find the next episodes. And when they're scheduled, you can set reminders. Or if they've already happened, you can just watch them um, all in there. Um, but back to what I was saying. I love the potential here. I want to see it grow. I want to see it where I have items to choose, relics to choose, accessories, ultimate ability, whatever the heck that means. Yeah, what does that mean? What is an ultimate ability? Uh, I don't know. But I, I want to see where I'm choosing at the start of my turn to switch out items with my backpack and switching out my skills and which skill do I fire off now and how do you help me refresh or restore or heal up to get rid of fear and like we're really trying to manage all these resources and systems. I think it could be really interesting. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how fast they'll throw us in the deep end or not or if it's super slow grind to finally get there and then when it gets there it's like, oh, only for the last scenario it was like we had everything all going. I don't know. But... uh no, I'll try to I'll try to play one chapter per year. No, no. Every no. Halloween we do one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Halloween we're back to play Sleeping Hollow, uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, no, we'll see. Probably, um, yeah, I'll say probably the next week or two, at max. Uh, we'll just figure it out. Because again, I didn't want to schedule another one. I wasn't sure how we'd feel about the game. Again, when all those red flags of like. The errata, the update pack, the people complaining how it took five years to get their game and they've now been waiting like eight months to get an errata pack that was discussed when they got their game. Um, I don't like promoting games and playing games on my channel where the company kind of let the customers down and isn't really doing a great job um, with customer support of their game. Like people still paid for that product, even though they paid for it in 2016 where the dollar was way different and obviously COVID happened and shipping costs and paper costs and the cost of paying your employees and all that has gone up. So yes, they probably basically gave this game away for free, but don't half-ass it, you know? Do a little more playtesting, do some proofreading, double check what you send to your printer, you know? And there are some fans in the community that would probably playtest it for free for you and just to help the game be great, you know? Some backers that back the game. Maybe if you just sent them the rulebook ahead of time to proofread or play a game on uh, Tabletop Simulator or send them some print and play materials they can try out at a time. There's ways, it's, it's unacceptable to send out a game full of errata, bad rule book, misprinted tiles and all that stuff. I know it happens. Uh, it's been happening for a, a decade plus in even retail games, not, not to mention it's more likely in Kickstarter games or games from small publishers who are trying to cut costs, cut corners, don't have the time to fix things, and are just trying to meet deadlines to make profit to keep their business afloat. But it's still no excuse. It's no excuse. Like, it's just like, you know, I'd rather just great games be made. And if you don't make enough money to make great games, go work for a company that makes great games. And instead of trying to start your own business, making mediocre, not finished games, like we need less garbage on the shelves at our local board game store. Um, we don't need more games on the shelf. Like we need more quality games on the shelf. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff here. But it still bugs me. Like I'm still. It, some people might say it's nitpicking on the things I'm 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 warning you about and complaining about a little bit. But I don't know. Five years from taking everyone's money to giving them their game, and there's that much errata and this many rules questions still coming up. Just a little weird. But just red flags. Hopefully, in a few months, when that errata packs out, maybe in a second print run, all of that kind of goes away, and there's a community. Maybe will make some files and some easy you know, um, easy reference sheets and stuff like that to really make the game flow. But again, it is a problem too that a lot of the rules and stuff are hidden in the scenario. So they can't just tell you in the rulebook flat out like, oh, when you face the Headless Horseman in the first scenario, um, this is how he behaves, just so you know. 
Because then it's like that spoils. Oh, yeah. now we know the Headless Horseman is showing up, and this is what his card does. So I understand they can't give you all the answers in the rule book because they're giving it to you through cards later. But uh, hopefully it's smooth playing. But I've heard, based on what I've seen on PGG and in the, um, the comments on the Kickstarter, Scenario 2 is like game-breaking, stopped a lot of people from playing the game, sold their copy, put it on the shelf. Game groups that quit playing because of Scenario 2, how bad the rules and the misprinting on the tiles and all that stuff is. Hopefully, when we play Scenario 2, we can figure it out with the new PDFs and the errata pages and all that. We can hopefully get through it without losing our minds um, and seeing where the game goes. But yeah. Other than that, man, lots of cool stuff here. I yeah. like what I see. Like, what I played today is what I expected and what made me interested in the game. The little action selection system, the unlocking stuff for enemies, the dungeon crawly, you know, movement, line of sight, attacking, um, you know, get it, finding new fun, the surprise in the deck from, like, the same stuff I love about Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. It's just a deck of cards, and you're, like, finding things and going through it. Same with uh, Cthulhu Death May Die kind of idea. It's on, like, that kind of level, right? It's, like... You know, the scenario is in the cards and you're finding items and every scenario will change its rules to spice it up. Um, and it's in a story. It's all in a successive story. So you play it like you would on Netflix, binge a Netflix season of a show, see how it goes. And then just kind of, I'll probably give the game away to a friend. Like, here you go. I just hope it's, you know, we have the errata pack in there by then. But um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to a fun, light campaign game. That's worth the hundred dollars to play 10 scenarios like if, if if I have fun through that and we make it through that, that's pretty good value, I think. Uh, but we'll see. But yeah, I can see why fans of the game were pissed getting a game after five years and it had so many issues that they were having trouble even getting it through the first and second scenario. Like, that's kind of rough. That screams, like, not playtested. That's what that does. But anyways, check the files. They're all linked down below if you need. If you're looking to play this game, just make sure you use the latest information. I agree with you, though. What I played today makes me excited to continue. But this is the stuff when I read about the game. I, I watched some quick videos. We saw it at Gen Con. This is what made me go, hey, guys, I want to play this game. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. If they didn't give me a copy to play, I would we would have bought it. I would have still bought it at the yeah, convention. Yeah, interested in it. Yeah, yeah. I would have still bought it. Um, but then what I probably would have done is not played it on the channel when I read all the issues. But then I was like, man, as, as I'm reading the rules and the, the systems, I'm like, no, I want to play this. It's still a cool game. Um, but yeah, it's just like quality is like, you can tell, like they obviously had to cut corners. That's all. But yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, if you want to see more, hit that like button. Like I said, subscribe to find your way back. Uh, feel free to share the video. I posted already on BGG, but you know, whatever, share it, get some more eyes on it. We're more likely to continue playing games that people are watching on the channel too. If we have to decide what campaigns to continue and what ones not to, what ones to put on hold. Um, sometimes we have to decide based on what you guys are interested in. So, I don't know. But it's a cool game to play around Halloween time. I'm excited. I love the theme. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. But again, we barely scratched the surface. Like, this is just tutorial scenario. You can feel it's very, like, the potential here is pretty big. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Brian says, will Rob's hat spawn the Great Pumpkin? Will Mel use a WWE chair on the Headless Horseman's face? Has a student behavior changed in 100 years? These questions and more may or may not be answered if there's another episode. <laughs> now, there'll be another episode. I definitely want to play more of this game. I definitely want to see what's going on. Yeah, I want to see where it goes. Based on the people complaining about Scenario 2 and the uh, update pack containing reprinted tiles for Scenario 2, I kind of want to see what's going on with Scenario 2. Same. But again, also the fact that there is an update pack eventually coming that has fixed cards for later scenarios, has fixed tiles, um, a fixed dial for one of the characters that doesn't fit on them, not that we use them anyway. Um, I kind of, the slower we play this game, the more chance that Errata Pack is actually available for us to get and use. So like, I'd prefer to play a game with the correct cards so I'm not drawing them going, uh, what does this do? Or play it completely wrong because there's a new card. But we'll see. Uh, you barely started carving the pumpkin. <laughs> Mike says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just play them all, man. Jeez, that's your job. There's not enough time. There's not enough time. You know what? 
Let me yeah. say, Mike, partly it's my fault because half of these games he plays with me. So he has to wait for me Listen, to be available too. So my it's job, half my fault. My job is to just play games, cool games on the channel with you guys. That's what it's become. Does it matter which game it is? Maybe. It's got, I think it matters if it's one I'm having fun with. And it's also one my audience is interested in. If I can align those things as best as possible, then it becomes perfect. Then it's all great. Oh, we're all having a good time. Yeah. If I'm playing too many different games, then I start messing up rules. Maybe I'm not having as much fun, just diving down one rabbit hole at a time. If I'm only playing the first of every game, then that's also I'm not having fun because I like to see where these games grow and how they evolve. Um, and if I'm playing crappy games, that I don't like and no one's interested in, then I'm streaming not having a good time and nobody's there to listen to me rant. And if there's no one in the forest to hear Rob rant, is he really ranting? No. That's the saying, right? That's how that goes? Yeah, that is the saying. I think that's how it goes. <laughs> Hunter has a question about playing Gloomhaven solo. A lot of people play it solo and have a great time. Uh, you can play it digitally solo. Um, and you can probably find someone to play with you. We played a lot of it just two player. Yeah, but we played a bunch of so, three player. Yeah. But yes, there's a lot of people that play solo and just run two characters. Absolutely. Yeah. That is a really popular solo game, actually. Yeah. As long as you're okay running two characters. There are solo scenarios available for it, but the problem with those is you need to have your characters, I believe, up to like level five, so you'd have to have played the game already. Then you can take your character in a solo side scenario, which is like a very poor design in my opinion, but... Uh, I'd rather have it than not have the solo scenarios, but it's just weird that you can't do them like right away. I think we did play two of them on stream as well. Like yeah, mine just, I just want to try them. Yeah, but they're available now in the digital version, which I should go and try at some point. But anyways. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Rob's ranting. He's not ranting enough. That's recursive. <laughs> you missed the beginning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't a rant. The it wasn't a rant. The no. beginning about this game was just kind of like a here is my I'm passing on what I've learned that I wish people did to me a little more with this game before I looked in. But I need to just research myself. But I just warning people, I try to give information as I would expect a friend to say, you know, like they went and saw a movie. They let me know, like, is it worth going to or should I wait till later? I don't know that's just their opinion and some people care more about that or not but some people I know want their board game to be like have a complete rule book and not have to spend time on BGG looking up FAQs and erratas and finding answers from designers in the forum in the middle of their game night with their friends who now lose interest start playing on their phones and then don't want to play that game ever again or don't want to come back to game night next week you know. Like, especially when you're the host of a game, which I've been many, many times. In fact, I do that as my job on YouTube, really, is I turned what I did in my hobby life was teaching people all about these new games by bringing them to work, bringing them to people's houses, having people come over for events, scheduling things on social media for people to come over. Like, I remember all, all this kind of stuff. And I, that's why I turned my YouTube channel in was like, let's do it on a larger scale. Yeah. When you're the person like presenting a game and teaching a game, you learn if you can't teach that game easy, and like things you find during the game that are surprises that can just totally make the game grind to a screeching halt because it doesn't make sense. And then you have to look online and find the card is a complete misprint or you're reading in the rule book isn't the correct setup or the correct turn order, whatever it is, you know, it's like, that's rough. You just hurt the hobby. You hurt that person's experience. Maybe they don't want to come back next week. Maybe they don't want you to teach them a game ever again. Maybe they don't want to pay, play a game from that designer ever again or that publisher ever again or... Maybe it just sours them on board games in general and they go back to Monopoly. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, you know, or modern board games, I should say. So these are the kind of things. I, I just look at these things as like, they might be nitpicky. But I want the hobby to grow. And like, if, yeah, these games keep coming out that are just garbage. Like the games that are sitting on the Walmart shelves and stuff, which are pretty much all garbage games. You know, those, those games you played as a kid in the 80s and, and what I played in the 80s that were designed in the 40s, you know, that have so many flaws and holes that somehow are still the most like popular games. Um, I'm trying to show people quality games to show them what cool stuff is in the hobby. And when companies are pushing out unpublished, un-QA'd, 
you know, un, or sorry, unplay tested, no QA, no, um, you know, good editing done in the rule books, no play testing your rule books, no tutorial systems, you know, just hoping people search BG later to make the game playable. It's not helping the hobby. You're not going to sell more games doing that. Because now I look at greater than games and I put them in the category that I put some other publishers in. Even though Spirit Island is so awesome, this is now my second experience with the company. And now I'm like, wow, this company publishes stuff like this? Wow, I feel kind of dirty playing Spirit Island. How, you know, how all those hours I spent on that game, you know, putting it in front of people's eyes. Like, that game is awesome. But it's like, now I just think of them as like, I, I don't want to play their games anymore if this is the kind of business practices they do. That's just how I look at it, right? And it's like, there's a thousand publishers, a new one every week, coming out on Kickstarter, other publishers out there that I could spend my time playing their quality games that put the man hours, the resources, run a, run a proper business, making quality products. I want more people to see and be exposed to quality products and not play the trash. We only have so many hours to play board games. We only have, we only have sometimes one chance to pull someone into the hobby. And if that chance is failed with a bad experience, you, you just lose that person, right? Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, you just can't. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's the mission I'm on now. I don't know. That's the mission I'm on. Hashtag silly hat. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew, thank you. <laughs> D. Miller says that it's still possible to get this game. They just had early copies at Gen Con. Uh, I'm assuming you can find it in retail. I know somebody, I'm so sorry, was saying they were seeing it uh, in the U.S., Yeah, and I know Cynthia and Yogi were talking about having it in the UK and Australia as well, but very expensive in those areas. Yeah, it's just through Greater Than Games, so it should go through normal retail channels because they had a retail edition that we're playing. This is what was available at Gen Con. They had a whole pile of them there for sale, and they weren't like Kickstarter exclusive ones with all a bunch of extra fluff or anything. Um... And it says it's listed as 57 US dollars in miniature market. Oh, there's an expansion too. I didn't know is. about. Yeah. Oh, I did see that in the, the Oh, the how to play video, video, right? He does talk about that. Uh this is Canada. Oh yeah. There's some stores in Canada that have it. But again, the interest behind the game, the game's not very widely known. Like it didn't do gangbusters on Kickstarter. A company took five years to deliver it when people should have been playing it in 2018. You know, so it, it lost a lot of hype and buzz and stuff like that, right? Like, and because it came in like an unfinished state, it soured it. So you don't get that word of mouth to hype it up for like a second Kickstarter or people to buy it like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, keep that in mind. This is one of those games that like people just backed and like kind of forgot about and aren't very happy um, when they get their copy. So you're not hearing the like resounding people playing it going, this is amazing. Everything I'm reading is like, people are just like frustrated as crap. They're happy they got their game, but it's like, it's like, wasn't in a playable state for a few months, supposedly. Um, but yeah, that's Canada. Let's see if I can flip it to the US here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in stores, so around 57 US-ish. Uh, I think 100 is the MSRP on Kickstarter or whatever it was. But that was also on Kickstarter like five plus years ago. So think about, think about the people, this is this Kickstarter tax, side rant. I talked about this recently on stream, and I always say there's a joke when they're always like, you can get it on Kickstarter early and at the best possible price. That's never true. Never, ever true. The MSRP they put on that website is like, there is no retailers that really sell it at that price. So this was $99 on Kickstarter five years ago. Think about the inflation that has happened since... 2017 or whenever this 2018 I don't know when this was on Kickstarter exactly I know it was supposed to deliver late 2018 what the dollar is now so some people paid 99 US dollars then to get the game on crowdfunding plus, plus shipping. shipping and what they paid then is the equivalent now of what like 130 dollars 140 dollars I don't know I don't what know, inflation yeah. is now whatever 99 dollars was in 2017 2018 you know now, the hilarious part is people now are paying 57 US dollars, probably not even paying shipping. $6.99. So, yeah. so this is the stupid thing, like, you're all excited when a game hits Kickstarter, and if you want to support the project, you want to give the company extra money, yes, 
back at then, but you're donating to the company, you are donating money to them, and you're paying more in the end, almost always. Because you're also paying for all those extra, extra stuff in the game. So yes, we don't have the $57 purchase from Ninja Market. You're not getting any of the Kickstarter pre-order bonuses or whatever. I don't know what they are with this game. I don't care. So you just have to value like you are paying more for the game. You're usually getting more. But are you ever using that more that you got? That's the question, right? So it's like you're usually not getting ripped off per se. But in the bottom line, like I'm still playing Sleepy Hollow. You're still playing Sleepy Hollow. If you, I'm playing it now. And let's say I just bought it at Miniature Market. I spent $57. If the game has a bad rule book and a few misprinted tokens for 57 bucks for 10 scenarios that maybe take two hours to play, so 20 hours for two people at the table, maybe even up to four, that's a lot of entertainment for your money. I'm going to be complaining a lot less about errated cards and misprinted tiles and bad rule books, you know, in, incomplete rule books. Yeah, I agree. For 57 bucks. But I can understand where the Kickstarter people came from. You believed in them. You gave them that money at the beginning to make this project the best it can be. You bought into the whole stretch goal thing and whatever. And you paid $99 US back then. which is And, and all that five years, your money lost interest. When if you would have put it into a stock or a savings account, you know, saved it, you know, had it grow and work for you. Uh, you would have had a lot more money now. Um, so you overpaid for the game even more than just what the comparison is because five years have passed in between. So it hurts just that much more. I can see why a Kickstarter backer of this game is not going to spread the good word about this game. I can see that. And I feel for you. And that's why I debated even playing this game on my channel after I learned about that stuff. But I didn't learn about it until after I already got the copy. So I was like, and then Mel is painting it. And I'm like, I felt bad. She's already like painted it. Oh, and I'm like, funny. Mel, there's problems with this game. I'm learning right now. As I'm trying to learn the game to play on the stream, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. But there's some fun in here, for sure. There's some definite fun. But there's, that answers your question. Uh, yes, you can buy the game. And it's at a good price. <laughs> yeah, John, they do say in their... Go read the last Kickstarter update. They said anyone who buys the game later... And even the Kickstarter backers should be able to get the update pack for free and shipped free to the EU. Uh, oh, I have it right here, probably still open. One I think it was... Yeah, I have it still open. Oh. I, have a, I can not regurgitate bad info. So just go to the Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter was from Legends of Sleepy Hollow from Dice Hate Me Games. I, I don't know who that is, but it's now from Greater Than Games. So I don't know if that company went out of business or they bought that company or. I don't know who they are. But if they, Dice Hate Me Games worked on the game, and all, you know, even, even Greater Than Games has their name on the box. So I still have to give them flack for publishing this. Um, but yeah, it says, uh, the past series of updates since sometime in late spring, early summer of this year have been about the creation of a physical errata pack because so many people complained. I guarantee this company wishes they could just sweep it under the rug and move on, but they're, they're people who believed in this project and gave them money five years ago are like pitchforks and torches, angry mob at this game. When they got their game after five years, they were already pissed for taking so long. And then when they got an unfinished game, um, that, that hurts, right? Um, but it says we'll also list this uh, so uh, for free. We'll also list this on our website for free for those who purchase the game at a later date. But again, if you're buying this from retail, you got to keep checking in. Like you're not going to get a random email. I, I wish they put a link here to add yourself to an email list or oh, something. That would be a good idea. Because I won't know when the errata pack's out. And what happens if they don't print enough and then I go to check it later and it's already gone? Oh yeah, that. Yeah. Then I got to wait two months for them to print more. I, I don't know, but hopefully they print an equal amount to the amount they actually printed of the game. And then it says, shipping will be free for US, Canada, EU, and the UK. And Yogi can stuff it. I don't think Yogi's getting it, because Yogi said it was like 130-something plus dollars in... And this is, this is true for both our backers and people who have purchased the game. Yeah, because you have the same issues in all copies right now. And here's what's in the pack. 
a new rule book, new storybook, two misprinted map tiles for chapter two, one HP spinner for Ichabod Crane, which I guess doesn't fit. And then there's cards that have misprints on them starting in, it looks like in chapter six, seven, nine. So obviously like late playtesting was not as good. They, they were tired by the time they got playtesting that point. Um, and then cards for Matthias, um, Elijah, and Emily. Uh, there's seven cards and Elijah's totem, whatever that means. Um, are, Maybe a relic or something? Yeah, they're, they're misprinted. Like, I don't know. But these but misprints are in the errata. Yeah, you don't need to so wait for this. you don't need to. You can still play it. They're right here. There is a card errata PDF that they put in those last few Kickstarter updates that I found uh, by doing some digging. Uh, where um, it clears up some of the stuff. Oh, card 115. Oh, here you go. Look, for extra difficulty, skip immediately to the monster turn after placing the horseman. So the way we were able to attack him a few times before he went, they're saying, you know, just put him out and have him attack the players right away mm. to start, you know, being more hard. That's funny, because we were even thinking it was kind of easy. So they obviously had that complaint. <laughs> I should have read this. Um, then there's chapter three stuff, but I don't want to read some of this because I don't want spoilers, but just so you guys know, there is an errata correcting those cards that they're reprinting. Oh yeah, see, look, it's drawing the wrong card, for example. No, that's a problem. That's like, yeah, that's a big problem. And then here's the cards that it affixes, but I don't want to read them really. Um, but this file exists. So right now you don't have to wait for the printed components, but of course you'd love to just take all the broken cards out of your game and swap in new ones. So when you get down to game night and you sit down to play chapter nine, you don't have to remember, oh, I got to go back to the FAQ when we're playing chapter nine and keep checking to see if I drew that card or not, you know? So um, this exists and the new rule books that they're going to reprint exist, but I think those rule books still have issues. Is this a living document that they're continuously adding to? No, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't know. I think they just want to get the errata pack out to shut everyone up to say we did it, deal with it. But I feel like that rule book they released, the latest one is not good. Uh, not finished. Actually, you know what? I can check. You know what we can tell right away? Is by looking here. We go to updates. This links right here in that same update to rulebook and storybook. Okay, it goes to the previous update. Rulebook. Uh, no, storybook. Let's look for the tuck box thing. This is their latest rulebook. And I hope this is not the one they just sent to printers. If it talks about tuck boxes. Because that's not a thing. Yep. Just that box. Yep. So they didn't even correct this. I don't know what they're reprinting it then. They probably just fixed a couple things, but went really lazy about it. Yeah. You know what's happening here is, like I said, they didn't raise enough money for this game. They're not selling enough copies. They have other stuff to work on that makes them money. So, like, they don't want their people who work on other games to be wasting too much time on this game. So they're trying to cut corners. Like, 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 just spend the time. Like, you could just go through BGG and all the complaints people have, all the questions, and answer them by going and correcting what's in the rulebook. But they really should have someone sit down and go through this, like, word by word, comparing it to the latest state of the game. Because, obviously, they had tuck boxes at some point when they were designing the game. I bet this rulebook was finished before the Kickstarter even closed, and they thought they were going to unlock the tuck box stretch goal, and it never happened. Oh, I see that on their thing. If I know, I don't want to go, I don't want to waste my time more on it, but... The fact that the latest PDF has talks about tuck boxes for your characters that don't exist in the game because they didn't raise enough money to print that component. Come on, man, just edit your PDFs. So if they're just sending this to the printer, it's still more confusing. Why do I want to still not, even though this doesn't stop me, like I still, common sense tells me I'm looking for a tuck box that doesn't exist. I'm good. Yeah, but how many times do you think they got Unless, emails? Uh, tuck boxes are in the list? No? No, uh, right? No. Yeah, it's not like they're giving tuck boxes away here, maybe, and that's why. Maybe they are. Maybe they're secretly including tuck boxes in the errata pack. <gasps> maybe. Maybe. But yeah, it's weird. It's just weird, right? Like, yeah. everything about this feels amateur hour. I don't know. But the game has so much potential. But I bet what happened was they had the game pretty much done. They brought it to Kickstarter. They thought it would do way better. It didn't. So then they said, ah, crap. Okay, we need you to work on other games because other games will make us more money. So quickly finish this thing up. Let's get it out the door. Then COVID happened. And they were like, oh, crap. Getting this thing printed and out the door right now is going to bankrupt our company. So let's not. 
Let's just piss off those thousand plus backers and work on the other stuff, like Spirit Island, for example, or whatever else Greater Than Games does. Let's spend our time pushing out more of those Kickstarters and getting those done on time and getting those in retail, making them pretty, making them properly play tested, properly proofread. It makes sense, right? You're running a business. Put your resources where you're actually going to make money. But the problem was the fake funding goal thing. The, I bet it wasn't like 94,000. Obviously, they made the game, but they cut corners. How, they delayed it for five years on purpose because they didn't want to print it at the highest cost and ship it at the highest cost. It's so obvious. I talked about this before when COVID happened. As soon as it happened and the shipping container thing started happening, I said, watch this. Every Kickstarter pre-COVID is magically going to have random delays happen. And they're going to say it's because they're play testing, or they added a new couple cards to the box, or they're working on new miniature sculpts, or the factory's not sending the production stuff. It's like, no, they just didn't want to pay like a bajillion times the cost to have the game shipped because they were already losing all the profit they made on Kickstarter. It just makes sense. Delay the game till things calm down and then ship it. And that's what they did here. It's for sure that's what they did. But the thing is obvious. They didn't work on the game between then. The game is still in the state it was when the Kickstarter ended. They went, oh, yeah, let's just get this thing out there in the state it's in because we just want to ship it and get it done. They didn't take the extra three-year delay to like really work on the game and get feedback from conventions and make sure everyone's playing the... Like, they could have made this available to playtesters to play it before they, they sent it to print. Because it's, it's literally, it seems like it sat there for three years with no one touching it, right? Oh, John says, from BGG, Greater Than Games, and Dice Hate Me Games merged in 2015. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, with the combined company using three brands, Sentinel Comics, Fable Nexus Games, and Dice Hate Me Games. Oh, it's under that company that we went and talked to. Um, they have a different name. Um, yeah, they're just um, brands underneath um, the something group. Um, uh, what was it called? Oh, did it start with an F? Uh, I forget what the name was. They basically had a bunch of booths at Gen Con under the same name of the over um, the parent company. Uh, I forget what it's called. John will say it in a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a parent company, and that's when we were trying to find Greater Than Games at Gen Con. Yeah. We were like trying to figure out where they were, but they were under a, uh, some group. Like, no. I forget. I want to say like the Pfizer, but it's not like. No, I forget what it was, but they even had signs for that group. No, it's not Dice Hate Me Studio. No, no. I can't remember the name. We'll find it. So if we look up greater than games, uh, no. I think it's how they were also listed on the Gen Con um, thing. I can't remember. Yeah, maybe it's just um, maybe that's just the company that handles them at conventions or something. I don't know. They, they not asthma day. No, it's it. No, 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 no. It's something. It's like something group. Yeah. Flat River Group. Yes, I knew. Flat was River. I knew. Thank you. Keith, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Flat River Group is who. Uh, I don't know. That's who was running the booths and who was dealing with the company at, at Gen Con. But they also had those other. Those other studios were underneath, and they had their own booths. They all were together, and they had a big Flat River Group banners and signs all over everything. And they had one register that if you wanted to try like a greater than games game or a dice hate me game or whatever or a fabled nexus game sentinel comics game whatever you would um try them at the separate booths but they were all beside each other across the aisle and then if you wanted to buy it you had to go to the main flat river booth to, to check out and and pay and whatever like that so yeah i don't know if that company just runs their conventions for them or if that company owns them all, I'm not sure. But we can probably look that up, actually. Uh, um, just for nerdy, useless knowledge, I guess. Uh, nope. Let's see. Yeah, it's this. Uh, this was the logo, yeah. Accelerate your e-commerce success. 
So maybe these guys just handle um, their distribution and stuff or something. But they also ran their booths. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, maybe they just run their, like, um, they don't, like, own them all. If you go back... But if I click on games... Your hobby omni-channel business acceleration partner. Oh, here you go. Flat River Games is the hobby slash games division of Flat River Group with Greater Than Games, Synapses Games, and Impressions Games Distribution Services. There you go. So yeah, I think Flat River Group owns Flat River Games, which owns Greater Than Games. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. If that's not confusing. But they own a few companies, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting, right? Like, it's like, to think about the business behind the scenes, like, you know... Like the person we talked to was maybe just a Flat River marketing person, not really someone at Greater Than Games that designs games, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, true. Um, you know, maybe he doesn't even work in the same country as, as them. So it's just interesting how these companies like expand and buy up other companies and stuff, um, you know, and how disconnected they get. Anyways, that's going to be it today. Uh, no more useless knowledge for you guys. Um, but yeah, that's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, if you played this game, you're a Kickstarter backer. I want to hear your, your, your information in the comments. Let me know. I'm curious. Uh, if you watch this video, what are your thoughts on the game? Have you had experience playing someone else's copy? What do you think? Did you look into this game? Did you, were you there when it was on Kickstarter? Did you back it? Did you not? Why? Do you want to see more of us play this game? You know, anything. Leave it down below. I'm curious. I'm curious. This one's very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I love, I like these little stories of like, you know, you got the successful Kickstarters everyone talks about. Then you have the ones that like, you know, the companies that went out of business and failed and the game died and burned and never happened. And they took everyone's money. But then you have those ones in the middle that just kind of raised some money and they just kind of put them together and delivered them. And they had big promise, but, you know, the interest wasn't there and like, Sometimes you find some hidden gems in that, that little space. So like, I can't comment if this is, you know, like a great game yet. Because those issues I talked about, that doesn't stop it from being a great game. It just makes it a more annoying game to learn and get into, but it doesn't stop it from being a great game. And I think I can't judge that yet, but I am optimistic about it for sure. And we will continue into a future episode and try the next scenario. I want to see how they spice it up through the cards and the surprises and the story. Because they very much warn you, do not look through the cards. There's lots of spoilers. You don't want to be spoiled. And every scenario has their own missions, but don't look ahead in the storybook. So I'm curious how creative, how deep, how fun, how, how cool the story goes. I want to see. And does the game play get more interesting even? Because right now it's fine. Yeah, it was fun. That was fun. Yeah, it's definitely on the accessible so far. But again, this is the first scenario. This is definitely on the more accessible dungeon crawler, kind of like where Familiar Tales kind of falls, Aftermath. Mm -hmm. Those like, you want to play a campaign game with your younger kids, your family, non-game or newer gamers, you know, and not just have one gamer, hardcore gamer at the table, but you, you know, you couldn't get them to play Gloomhaven, you know, but you still want to play a fun thematic story dungeon crawler kind of game. This feels like that void. This is like in that family way, like, you know, ha having some more beer and pretzel, relaxing kind of game so far. But it's just the first scenario. But that's kind of the vibe I'm getting here. And we need games like this. We do need games like this. Because not everyone should be playing Gloomhaven or Sword and Sorcery, you know? I understand those will scare some people away from the hobby. Um, you know, those are like you work your way to those ones, right? But uh, you need these to get them there. And sometimes I, as a hardcore gamer, know I can't just play Gloomhaven every day with people well yes i can but i choose not to um because i have awesome people on the channel but not everyone has people available to play your favorite dungeon crawler with you all the time so sometimes you need a game like this to be able to play with your friends who aren't as hardcore or your kids or whatever and i like that it exists so or like slowly step up on the yeah. scale of difficulty yeah. to gloomhaven yeah or sword and sorcery and like you said, some of the things that you were saying about, you know, the rules may not be all there and there may be some errata and stuff that you need to kind of look, work through. I think if you're, if you can get past that and realize, 
realize that going in, then you can play differently and go, oh, I'm not going to let it bother me. We found something that doesn't really work. Uh, how do you, how do we think it's going to work and move on, mm -hmm. right? And not take it too seriously. Yeah. If you're house ruling and you're yeah. okay, just kind of making calls on the fly. Yeah. It's just those ones that I worry about why why this red flags me. It's just because there was a ratted cards that like make you draw the wrong card. That's different. That that literally people who bought this game who love this game are saying it's unplayable. That's yeah. that's what scares me. Yeah, that's different. That's different. If it's just a, I don't know if I can move diagonal. Like if your group can say, yeah, let's do it. Okay, and everyone's doing it, then it's fine. Yeah. But yeah. We'll see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll see what happens in scenario two. Playing with the latest errata and all that stuff. We'll see. Anyways, thank you all for watching. We'll be back tomorrow playing Jurassic World. Uh, the finale. Yeah. The, the final two adventures tomorrow we're hoping to play on stream. So join us for that one. Should be epic. Yes, I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, similar to this, a campaign game full of spoilers and all that kind of stuff. That's a legacy game though. Um, you can check out the playlist section if you want to watch all the episodes of that and catch up with us. You won't be able to though because we're playing tomorrow. Oh yeah, there's a lot. But if you want to see us play other story games, campaign games like this, uh, lighter ones, heavier ones, same complexity, we play many of them on the channel. Check the playlist section. Um, you'll find them there. And we'll also be playing, if you're looking for horror theme games on the channel, I've changed the whole main page, youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table, or click on my little name down below, and it'll bring you to our main YouTube page where I've put all the playlists on the front page are all games like Arkham Horror Games and horrifieds in this game and any horror theme game right now if you're if you're in that mood being in october around halloween time uh we will be playing mage the madness second edition in a few days we'll be playing uh, i'll be playing final girl we'll be playing arkham horror the living card game uh just to get in that horror theme mood so if you're looking for those kind of games you're in the right place also we'll be playing arkham horror the scarlet keys campaign soon on the channel i'm, I'm assuming um so yeah stay tuned more games like this coming up you're in the right place thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next one Bye bye, bye.